Good evening, brothers and sisters of the leaf. Coming to you live from Dirty Dog Strip Club and Polka Bar. It's the Tuesday Night Cigar Club Podcast. Tonight, our favorite group of tall can guzzlers avoid chicks with buffalo butts at all costs as they enjoy the hell out of the 1993 cult classic, The Stoned Age, while guzzling bottles and pints and then more bottles of crisp, refreshing Zima paired with the primitive and powerful Cro-Magnon Knuckle Dragger Cigar from Roma Craft. Holy shit, they're actually doing a Zima episode. I thought they were just joking around about this. Hear that, folks? That's the sound of our legitimacy as a highly regarded craft beer and cigar pairing podcast getting flushed violently down the toilet. What the hell do I know? I used to be the announcer for the Tony Danza show. Yeah, that was a real thing. Go ahead and look it up. Anyhow, just sit back, light them up, and enjoy the show. Well, I've had 24 hours to kind of process it, so I'm uh, feeling a little bit better, but I'm still bummed. Um, When the doctor texted us the news yesterday... I obviously went into shock. Who died this time? My heart plunged down in my gut, as I'm sure it did to uh, you guys. Uh, and it's like a total, complete sadness washed over me that I hadn't felt Who died? in a long, long time. Like, I need to tell you. Uh, but let me just try to get this out before I start getting too emotional uh, from the listener's benefit. Uh the show must go on, as they say. So here we are, and yet again, staring at the boot of remembrance. I uh, hate how much this thing has come out this year so far. Uh, only tonight, it's personal, to say the least. Tonight, we say goodbye to an old friend who honestly never let us down. An old friend who was always there to cheer us up when no one else was around. Uh, today, tonight, we pay our respects to Bacardi 151. Ah, oh, I see who we just learned was heartlessly discontinued sometime last year. Uh, Thanks for the fuzzy memories. Yak Boy, please beat the gong of grief 151 times to pay tribute to our fallen comrade. I like the gong of grief. Um, We we don't have a gong of grief. We've never had one. (sighs) Well, of course we don't. (laughs) Shit. I almost didn't want to be the one to have to deliver that news. Well, do we have a gong of guzzling? No. No gongs. Not a single gong. I think that's pretty much the gist of it. We we, we are gongless. We have a boot. We're gongless? Yeah. Well. Not dongless, gongless. Perhaps dongless. We do have a boot, as Yaks pointed out. <laughs> Fuck that noise. Fuck that noise. 151, we hardly knew ye. Well, actually, we knew yeah, ye we knew very, pretty well. very well. <laughs> More than we probably ever uh, should have. Welcome, everybody, to the Tuesday Night Cigar Club podcast episode, Tut, 54? Oh, it doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> Not after tonight, it won't. <laughs> Release me from my, uh, my back. Uh, 54, uh, 54. 54. Uh, our big Zima episode. Oh, God. We're going to have to find a way to do without uh, its... It's uh, Companion, Bacardi 151. Well. We'll, f- we'll figure out a way. Uh, uh, the doctor did bring us a, a Bacardi rum, uh, which we'll, we'll experiment with later. Uh, I'm going to pour the whole thing in here. <laughs> and, <laughs> man, that boot just keeps overflowing. Uh, got some. Uh, we, we are doing Zima tonight. Guys, are you going to do pint glasses? or? What do you What do you want to do? What do you think? I, it, it looks like uh, okay, it looks I, weird. I, it, it does. This is the first time I've ever seen Zima in a pint glass, and it just looks like freaks me out. Up. It, I'm going to try yeah. it. It's even clearer than 7-Up. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try it here. It is, after all, classified as a... Mineral spirit. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't clean paintbrushes with it. Yo, it'll it's melt. a refreshing it'll melt citrus your, beverage. It'll melt your paintbrushes. <laughs> A re- How is it? It's a beverage. A, a mineral spirit. Didn't it used to say malts? A malted beverage on the... Cont- I'm like, imagining that. No, I thought it did back in the day. Back in the day, didn't it? I don't see that Now anymore. it's a refreshing citrus beverage. Huh. Wow. 
Um, actually, we might, well, we might be wrong on the malted pork. It was. I, uh, I, I do kind of I feel I remember that too. Let's yeah. let's let's go ass backwards tonight. We usually we do the cigar introductions first. Welcome everybody. Uh, but we we've got a lot to do here. So uh, we've we're obviously doing Zima. If you've been following us on social media, we've been building up to our Zima episode. As soon as we found out they were bringing it back, which we still have our theories. They just found a warehouse of it and <laughs> jacked it up to ten bucks a <laughs> sixer and sold it to. Uh, I saw the price nostalgic on this. Shitheads nostalgic like nostalgic us. shitheads like I us. I saw the price on this, and I was like, you got to be out of your fucking mind. Yeah, I'm going to need to actually split up tonight's uh, <laughs> cost with somebody. Help me out here. Uh, Yak Boy, tell us a little bit about Zima. It's the a beverage. Rich history. I, I <laughs> pretty much... <laughs> it is a beverage. Okay. It's a beverage. Hold on. Let me... i got to change some notes. <laughs> no, no. You were expecting like uh, th- those previous Yak Boy introductions about some Australian br- Austrian brewery from the 16th century. It was founded by Hans Zima <laughs> in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, in where 1993. Did, where did the name Zima come from? Zima is actually uh, means winter in the Slavic languages. Interesting. Really? This yes, it does. It means co- or it can mean also like cold or this very summery cold. citrus beverage is. Did they pretty much just like so? What is it? It's cold. Okay, great. No, you are uh, you're correct. Uh, originally, it was labeled as Zima Clear Malt. I think so. Yeah, I believe I remember <laughs> that through the. <laughs> it was a, uh, introduced in ninety uh, three, and it was a <clears throat> it was a marketed as an alternative to beer, uh, which obviously back you know. In the eighties and whatnot, when the uh, wine coolers became yeah, you very much had popular. Seagrams, uh, Bartles and James, and Bartles and James. Uh uh-uh, uh, you had Boone, Rattlesnake, well, Boone's Farm and, and Rattlesnake. <laughs> East Texas <laughs> behind uh, the pine curtain. Yeah, yeah well, then we had Rattlesnake, <sighs> and it uh, did very well in ninety yeah. uh, four. It reached its peak and it's a great sold ninety four. Peak too yeah, soon. It peak too soon. It sold one point two million barrels, and that most was, of them to us three. That was just to <laughs> me and my buddies. <laughs> Um, oh man! Wow! Why did they stop making it? Well, cut on. because the amazing uh, uh, citrusy things they were using became too expensive. Uh, the locally organic sourced ingredients Nobody were. Nobody liked them. You're making that up, aren't you? It's it's just, I don't know what's <laughs> in it. Honestly, it just reminded me of that Simpsons episode about the rib witch. When Krusty's like, it really just makes the animal th- we made it from is quite extinct. <laughs> it really, it makes me really think like this is more like you know that from that movie, the stuff. There's just this bubbling clear liquid they're pumping it out of the ground, filling up the bottle. The cow, the pig, uh, smaller and think more legs. <laughs> it's actually clearer than water somehow. <laughs> Funny thing is, we don't even carbonate it. Where do the bubbles come from? Where does it come from? I can drink it, right? Well, we didn't say that. <laughs> Uh, it is beer, right? <laughs> yeah, it is. It's almost beer. Uh, what's the IBUs on this baby? Uh, <laughs> it is a zero. 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 That's good. <laughs> We're off to a good start. <laughs> the ABV is five percent. I was at, say I was t- I was when I've, I I have had some of this since it got reintroduced. I couldn't help myself. And man, I, I slammed down a six pack pretty easily, and I was like, man, you know, I remember this. Being a lot more potent back in '94, like, oh right, I was a teenager, I was a child, and I weighed 100 pounds less. <laughs> so many factors, uh, and I kept filling it, the other half of the glass with pure rum. <laughs> oh, and I also <laughs> filled half the the, the big 7-Eleven Big Gulp with 151. Yeah, um, I banged through a six or pretty quick myself recently. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh. I, I admit the first one, I really. It took me a while to get reacquainted with it because I don't drink anything like this anymore. But man, by the second and third, I was just. Uh, <laughs> and by that fourth and fifth, it was just. Well, I was out. I was out here in the corner of Hope all by myself, talking in the Dylan McKay voice. By the time I was on my it. third six pack, <laughs> still searching for the buzz. Uh, well, we've never done anything like this, so uh, this should be interesting. Uh, anything else on Zima you got for us? Dude, it sucks. I'll just take Oddly it easy enough, over it was there. only it was discontinued in 2008. Nobody liked it. Due but, to the rampant blindness it caused. <laughs> <laughs> but it had it has always been sold like in Japan. But it was discontinued here in 2008. And I was like, really? Because I didn't see it. We, we, I mean, like we stopped seeing it in this area in like the 90s. Yeah, late 90s. I didn't even yeah. kind of find it. So I don't know where it was being sold. Which I'm like, those lucky bastards Maybe had it Japan. this whole time. Remember all those kids that are born in Missouri with fish gills? Oh. <laughs> 
Oh, that, that explains it's Missouri's a lot. problem. <laughs> explains a lot. I hear Arby said a lot of court about that. Well, I will say this. It is hot, hot, hot outside here in Central Texas. And uh, it is important to stay Obviously, hydrated. what have we been on? Eight minutes and I'm already <laughs> completely down. This the, is... Uh, it, it's going down smooth. Um, it's a wine cooler. No. It's not a wine cooler. It's not a wine it cooler. is a refreshing citrus beverage. It's a refreshing citrus beverage, asshole. Uh, good job, Doctor. Doctor, good to have you back. Great to be back, fellas. Great to be back. I missed your last episode, but uh, we've been, uh, I think we've been ramping them up. We're back in the swing of things. and uh, I'm very uh, excited to be here. Uh, well, like some others, I'm very excited about the Zima. There you go. Uh, and Cody is more than he's letting on. He's a fan. I do love the Zima. Yeah, see? So many good memories All that right, I can't <laughs> remember anymore. <laughs> but I know they're hey, there. Hey, look, I don't often do this. Next episode, we can do Rattlesnake or whatever, <laughs> whatever the fuck you said. What was it? <laughs> the Rattlesnake Wine Cooler, man. It's a homemade, like a homemade, it's a homemade uh, wine cooler. It's got yeah. homemade written all over it. What you do is it's you a lot like that Cobra whiskey. <laughs> it's a wine cooler that's got an actual you know, rattlesnake in it. You throw a bunch of grapes and ice cubes into a Lufkin bathtub and just stomp <laughs> them into paste. Drink it down. <laughs> now you're talking my language. They're taking baths there now? <laughs> oh. How about that? Uh... <laughs> We'll we'll keep our eyes out for rattlesnake. You cut off my mic. <laughs> Turn my mic back on. Um, to go with tonight's uh, well, the, one, the main reason a doctor had to be here tonight was for the film, of course. Uh, we're pairing this '93 beer with a one of the best films of 1993. Uh, and to go with the theme of tonight's film, the Stone Age, we are going to be smoking the Knuckle Dragger by. The Cro Magnon, the Cro Magnon Knuckle Dragger by Roma Craft, headquartered out of Austin, Texas, right down the road. Uh, I obviously picked this for several reasons. Uh, main reason I went the, the name we're watching the Stone Age, and it's the Cro Magnon uh, Knuckle Dragger, but also with this with a, a sweet, uh, such a citric, <laughs> citrus uh, beverage as Zima. I wanted to just blast the hell out of it. You have to have something to with a, with pop a, it. With a powerhouse cigar. The cigar pairing guy didn't match these together. <laughs> <laughs> you no, know, I didn't check it for Zima. Uh, they're actually involved in some uh, litigious thing. I mean, you can't get into that. But uh, uh, So, yeah, there was that reason. And then we also hadn't have never really in 54 episodes showcased a shorter cigar. And this time of year when it's balls fucking hot out. Like your balls literally melt in your lap when you sit down outside. If you don't have an indoor place to smoke, it's a good thing to have a four-inch cigar to go outside. You're not outside for two hours puffing away on this thing, sweating your your melted nuts off. Uh, so it's a short cigar. It's it's you know a 45 minute smoke. Um, for or for Tud, 10 it's minutes uh, time. ten minutes. Uh, you won't get any of the subtle nuances or anything, but you'll. You'll get the ribbon for finishing. Oh, I found them. You'll get the ribbon for finishing first. I found your nuances. Drink your Zima. You'll find all sorts of nuances. <laughs> it's nuance heavy. Um, <laughs> so I have not had one of these in a while. Um, our buddy Derek Matthews, uh, the general sales manager for Black Label Trading Company, we were shooting a little film thing out at some property by him, and he actually mentioned this is his favorite Roma Craft stick. Yeah. Uh, which you don't hear its name thrown out there a lot with like the Neanderthal and the, yeah. the Wonderlust and some of the more yeah. big high profile um, Romacraft stuff so I thought that was interesting and I realized I kind of hadn't had one in a really long time Yeah. so uh, I'm, I'm excited about it um, boy they're smooth as oh, feel, the, feel it that texture on feel that it. wrapper <laughs> feel it uh, it's awesome let me tell you about that it's a Connecticut broadleaf wrapper uh, Cameroon binder which you don't see terribly often and uh, all Nicaraguan filler. It is four by fifty-two. It's a short little guy, uh, but man, it's just super oily and, and, and slick. It feels wonderful. Uh, it kind of feels like a velvet uh, something. What is that velvet? Something made out of velvet. It's uh, satin. Is that satin or velvet? No, it's velvet. That's velvet. I would go with velvet. It's velvet, right? Yeah. It's not silky smooth. I'm wearing velvet underpants. Squeeze it down there and then squeeze this. And see I will not. Another Zima. <laughs> another Zima. Get you another Zima. <laughs> when you're still saying no, it's Zima time. 
<laughs> when you're still making rational decisions, it's time for another Zima. Anybody need another Zima? I do. I actually need another Zima. I have a bad feeling. It was been, We've been talking for five minutes. I have already been through a bottle. You can just stop right there. <laughs> I have a bad feeling. I should mention, um, as, as you listeners will know, usually we'll, whether it's three or four of us, we'll get a case of that night's beer, and we almost always either finish it on the show or, or as, as the night goes on after the show. Uh, for tonight's special episode, we actually had to buy two cases of Zima just because it's it's so hot out and it's <laughs> and also yes, it yes, is yes, a limited yes. release. Hydration. Doctors say you need to stay hydrated. Proper That's hydration, yeah. This time of year, that is key. Doctor, he's a man of science. Do we need to drink a ton of Zima tonight? My God, Cade, the temperatures outside, the mercury is reaching the zenith. You've got to stay hydrated. Mercury at its zenith. Mm. They, when they, your mercury's at the zenith. Grab a Zima. Now you're getting in the spirit, Todd. I knew a Zima would turn you around. I still like my Bill Cosby esque. Uh, mm. Is she still saying no? Get her another Zima. Mm. He was 80s, though. That wasn't really a 90s. Mm-mm. And that really didn't sound anything like Bill Cosby. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> well, a couple more Zimas, it will. She still has the ability to walk on her two feet to the front door. And what she needs to do is give her another Zima. A couple more Zimas. Everything's going to be bad just fine. too. That, that was that Saturday was, Night Live. Uh, that was just, just <laughs> terrible. <Better yours. laughs> uh, very strong. Uh, very strong, as Tut would say. Hay and barnyard on the aroma. Ooh, but if you put your nose right up there against the foot of the cigar, it's very sweet. Mm. Spark, bad boy. Mm. So let's, uh, before we get into tonight's movie, let's go ahead and slice these. How do they do a four-inch wrapper? I mean, do they, obviously they don't make a seven-inch and then cut it off. Or do they? No, they roll a four-inch cigar. Okay. So what do they do with the excess? What excess? Is there excess wrapper? Well, I'm sure they've got no, top men rolling the cigar. It's no different than any other size. <laughs> Get this man a Zima. Are you saying they like roll an eight foot eight inch cigar and then just cut it in half? <laughs> what do they do with the other stuff, man? Well, what do they do with the stuff between rolling a Churchill and a Robusto? I don't know. You tell me. It, it, it could be anything. Let's see if you're still Skip's favorite after tonight. You're gonna be like. I can't believe I didn't know that. What <laughs> kind of cigar podcast are you guys? Well, technically, we're a film cigar and beer podcast. We have to well, spread our knowledge over three subjects. Even though uh, I saw a response on one of our on our threads, someone was going, Zima, how can you do the episode on Zima? I was like, even though I don't even like Zima, I can say because we're professionals. Yeah. It'd be unprofessional of us not to do an episode. Exactly. A lot of people out there talking about Zima. They're going to be looking for guidance. They will until they taste it. Ugh. Then all that memory floods back to them. What? All right, Mr. Expert, you're over there. Uh, why don't you give us your expert analysis of the Zima? What don't you like about it? Uh, it's way too sweet. And that's pretty much it. It's just sweet. It's not, not your father's root beer sweet. I'd put it a step above that. Quality-wise? Drinkability wise. Drinkability wise. I'm not gonna ditch. Well, I'm not gonna say that. I was about to say I'm not gonna ditch on it like uh, I did on not your father's root beer, but the night's early. Uh, it is. Get the manazima. This is real sweet. It's got a little tartness. It to is. It, uh, but what I found in my experiment, my pre-show uh, experiments, um, after that first one, that sweetness, especially combined, I smoked it with a Neanderthal by Roma. Yeah. Uh, that sweetness really, that cigar really helped kill that sweetness. Yeah. And it really became more of just a kind of a, a nice, mellow um, thirst quencher that, that just kind of got, I will say got that, out of the way of the cigar. And one thing that you are dead right about uh, when temperatures are this high, it is a refreshing drink. If you like that, just absolute sweetness coming in. I do. I do, boys. Uh, boy, some spice right in the nose. Uh, upon lighting, you guys getting that? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. 
I'm going to wait about a half an hour before I light up. Uh, really nice spice on the nose. Real thick, meaty um, smoke right on the, on the front. Earthy, uh, which is kind of Connecticut broadleaf, um, which you expect. Yak boy thoughts? I said, I, I definitely agree with you. A lot of spice. Not as strong as I thought it would be. Have you had this before? I have not. Um, I, I am getting a nicotine rush. Yeah. Uh, a lot, a real I, strong nicotine uh, presence early on. Um, uh, right now, full strength, full flavor. Yeah. Um, it's real earthy. Real earthy and strong. Doctor? Earthy and strong like yourself, Doc. Um, I would say very earthy and very strong, much like myself. Well, earthy. Yeah. Uh, mm, yeah, I just got into it. Definitely hits you with the good flavor right off the bat there. I have not had this before. I've had only the uh, the Neanderthal, yeah, cool. and it's been a while. And then the, uh, is it the Intemperance? Correct. Yes, that, that one. Uh, we actually did the Intemperance um, here on the show. It's our number two cigar of last year, I believe. <laughs> Uh, love that cigar, uh, the Brazilian, uh, the BA. Uh, they also do uh, Ecuadorian, Connecticut, the EC, uh, which is a, a really good lighter smoke. ECs are nice. The Ecuador is nice. Boy. This was actually my introduction to Roma Craft. Was the Knuckle the, Dragger. The Knuckle Dragger. Really? No, we smoked them way before this came out. I think this came out last year. No way. I thought this was a later in the game release from them. I th- not because uh, I thought this came out because uh, I have followed this up probably about six months after the Skull and Bones Vieja. Oh boy, that's good. Uh, what do I look into that? I, for some reason, I thought this was a a later on release out of the Chroma the uh, Chroma yeah, line. I, I never had a uh, the first Roma Cross cigar I had was a. Uh, when the I first met Skip and Mike, and Mike okay. handed me a Neanderthal and said, "Be uh, careful." <laughs> boy, I just got a, a really strong coffee, black coffee, um, coming behind that spice. Um, same earthiness, um, man. So far, so good. I'm come back to it. Um, if you guys want to jump in, yeah, it's point. just a beautiful cigar. I mean, smoke production is very, very nice. Just kind of lazily rolls off the cigar, comes out the back end. The the feel of this cigar is just exquisite. I mean, it is just absolutely velvety in your fingers. Well, I did keep uh, these stored in my good humidor. There you go. All right, let's give Skip the credit. <laughs> uh, it is a, just a, a really well, uh, feels good in your hand. Hey. Hey. Uh, I'm not as good at articulating flavors as you guys are, but it's definitely got strength in a good way to it mm-hmm. uh, I kind of picked up Cade you, if you hadn't said it I wouldn't have articulated it myself but just the kind of a dark coffee roast you kind of picked up there a little bit yep mm. all this in a good way um, uh, drawing very nicely yeah almost I almost wanted to know, I almost want to think that the Zima uh, accents that coffee note the lemon the, the, the citrus I think it does because all the times that I've smoked uh, knuckle draggers, I haven't gotten the co- I haven't gotten that much of a coffee presence. It's, it's it. a little bit I, there. I would think now, Zima. I, I would am. think Zima is not going to interfere in any cigar that's of a more stronger quality. I think you'd have to have a pretty pretty light wrapper, pretty pretty not weak strength, but very mild for it to interfere with it at all. Oh yeah, I think this was the right way to go. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Uh, Speaking of which. Got to stay hydrated, hey, folks. For now on, guys, just say Zimi. Okay, will you Zimi? Yeah. See you later. <laughs> oh boy, uh, yeah, you might uh, as well. Zimi we haven't too. we haven't seen the last <laughs> hey. of those. Hmm. We haven't seen the last of those. Ah. Uh. Well, everybody, I, again, thank you for joining you the Tuesday. Me later, Zeta. You're having a good time. Tuesday night cigar club Zodcast. Ah. Uh. Uh. What if we just call it the Z-Cast? You don't start laughing more at my jokes, you're not going to get more Zimas. I, I would just take the Zima back. 
Right, you're good for now. Yeah, that's what I. Your thought. story checks out. I say we go with Zcash. You can't lift that cooler by yourself. <laughs> no. You're bluffing. We smuggled a, had another case of it back into the doctor's lab in case everything went tits up here. Uh, hey, uh, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, if you're going to do some shopping oh, on Amazon, go. why don't you head over to the TuesdayNightCigarClub.com. Check the graphic in the top right corner. It says Amazon on it. Click that and then do your shopping from there. We get a little percentage of it and it helps us pay the bills. And God knows we got help to pay the bills. Ten bucks a six pack. Bet your ass when you help. <laughs> Look, I, I don't uh, need more Zima. Shop, shop Amazon on our website. Good man, Tut. Uh, and uh, like we said last time, ever since you started saying that at the beginning of the show, people are actually doing it. <laughs> I love uh, your radio DJ car salesman pitch that you do there. Thank you, Doctor. If you're on Amazon.com, <laughs> check out the Tuesday Night Cigar Club. Why, thank you, Doctor. Uh, can we be sponsored by, like, coming to you from the Zima Fast Take Hotline? <laughs> oh. It's Caden Cody in the morning. Andy from New Hampshire calling in on the Zima Hotline. <laughs> Andy says, see me later. Nationwide insurance is on your side. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> We're just going to need some sort of weird sound effects. <laughs> <laughs> Play that delightful flushing sound. <laughs> Listen, Smithers, indoor plumbing. The lack of it kills my mother. <laughs> uh, I am going to come back to the cigar a little more regularly since it is so, so short. short. Um, oh, that cold Zima. Wow. Well, I got The funny you, thing about this is is that even though it, it, you know, it's a four inches, it doesn't smoke like a four inch cigar. It actually t- smokes longer. So if you're blindfolded, you would guess this is a longer cigar? No, I'm just saying that for some reason... God, I, the I sexual these. innuendo here is just over the top. <laughs> so if you're blindfolded, you think there's more than four inches there? <laughs> you know, we film this podcast on top of a Chinese restaurant, and they have to have so many questions. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't understand what you're saying. It smokes like a longer cigar. It, it smokes longer. It doesn't it like... It smokes like a Churchill. But isn't that more ring gauge than length? If When I think of a short cigar, I usually think of like a... Uh, like a Macanudo, like the little yeah. skinny ones that come in a tin, like cigarillos. Yeah. That would make sense to me if, like, oh, that smokes like a regular. But, I mean, this is, it's short, but it's still a, a regular ring gauge. I sometimes just know a, what I know, Sometimes man. a cigar is just a cigar, Todd. I just know what I know, man. Um, it's, it's creating an ungodly amount of smoke in here. Uh, we haven't had this much smoke in. I thought the Tabernacle last episode smoked a lot. <laughs> Whew, this thing is just uh, end of the night. Just gonna be eyes crushing it. Not if you keep drinking Zima. Oh, that's gonna be tears in my eyes. Then the coffee bean taste. You may have something there with the citrus coming off of the the, the Zima. Because um, boy, it's really pronounced. Yeah. Um, that coffee taste. But I'm still really getting earth earthiness. That mineral. Uh, quality you get from that Nicar- that's the Esteli you're that's talking that Nicaraguan about, filler uh, there's nothing like it um, I first experienced it with the the Hoya de Nicaragua 1970 Grand Console uh, to this day I love that taste that mm-hmm. I only get that Nicaraguan yeah, tobacco um, yeah it's smoking beautiful boys you happy with it? I am very much breaking news TNCC likes Aroma Grab Cigar <laughs> uh, we should mention we uh coming at every cigar completely unbiased and we've uh, turned our nose up at several uh, cigars that people thought we would f- love and um, that's true looking at you all out kings yeah um, oh speaking of which uh, then we'll get in the mood real, real quick a uh, big piece of cigar news dropped today Did you yeah, see I it? saw that saw I posted that. it up on the on TNCC website uh, Matt Booth who got out of the business earlier this year he founded Room 101 our Namakubis yeah. he quit Shut down, shut the doors of Room 101, and today he's back. Quitter. He's got no. He's back. No, he quit quitting. <laughs> we don't like people who quit quitting. No, wait. Yeah, we do. <laughs> Our whole lives are about quit quitting. You know, I'm gonna make some so changes. So guys. he's back, but what's his? What? Uh, he's he's doing a collaboration with uh, Robert Caldwell and AJ Fernandez. They're releasing two two smokes uh, at. 
I see uh, IPCPR this next week, I think, is the big convention in Vegas. Wow, so that sit. was kind of kept under wraps yeah. there. Yeah. Um, so two lines, starting small, and see what happens. But, uh, man, I discovered him late. So whatever, what's happening with the 101 brand? Uh, that's that's he, owned, dead? he owned the label, uh, Davidoff. He made it and distributed it through Davidoff. Yeah. I believe it's dead. He says he, he has the option to bring it back anytime, but I don't. You know, I think he's said right now it just it is what it is. He's doing this new thing. Okay. But uh, we we discovered him late in the game. We love the Namakubi. Yeah. Uh, I got some of his Uncle Lee's, which I really liked. Yeah. And then I I started smoking some of the big paybacks. So I'm glad to have him back. Uh, maybe we'll get him on the show. He can he can tell us his whole. He seems all, like an interesting guy. Well, he started off. He's, he was a he's a military guy, and then he went into he, he makes jewelry. That's his bread and butter. He's a really yeah. well known jewelry designer. Um, so maybe we'll get him on the show. There's not too many people out there left I still want to talk to, but I, he was always on my list. So yeah, okay. Maybe we'll get him on here later this year. Will um, he compass some sweet, sick bracelets? I want a, one of those rings that covers all four fingers. <laughs> the Zima. <laughs> Zima. <laughs> Pretty much just brass knuckles. Then I'm going to have a <laughs> I'm have like two, Sorry. so when you put them together, it says Zima Zucks. Yeah. Would you use Z-U-X for Zucks? Absolutely. Or would you be a... Oh, Five it would be Z U X S or Z U X exclamation point. What about Z U X Z? Zucks. Zucks. You know, zip it up, Tut. How's that for a Z word? Go zuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, boys, there is a movie tonight, too. Um, I was hoping you'd forget. You can't not like this movie. For God's sake, man. If you don't like this movie, something is seriously fucking wrong with you. And you did not see this back in the day? I did not. I had never even heard of this until you said that we were going to do this. He was too busy drinking rattlesnakes. Yeah. Turns out the <laughs> pine curtain and the iron curtain have a lot of similarities. <laughs> yeah. Stuff just didn't get through. I had, I had never heard of it. Uh, actually started reading up a little bit because I mean you guys were just like oh this is better than Dazed and Confused man I, no, I never it's said like that. so much better and I was like if it's so much better how come you guys are the literally the only ones I know who have ever seen this and then our buddy Rev he commented on it I'm like alright well he's like oh you guys are going to be talking about the schnobster yeah so I was like alright well alright let's so I actually looked it up and yeah it's a cult classic and I was just like I, I don't understand. You went into it hating it, though. No, I actually was giving it. Oh, Giving man. it. I'm going to need... I'm glad we got two cases, because it's going to take that to get me to understand where Tut's coming from tonight. Or he could be pulling our legs. I bet he liked it. I think you liked it. You liked it. Uh, the Stone Age... Tune the- in and find out. <laughs> Did Tut like Stone Age? <laughs> Uh, we actually have writer director James Melconian on the Zima Fast Take Hotline. Welcome, James. <laughs> there is nothing fast take about the Zima Hotline. <laughs> I should mention all our guests drink Zima in the waiting area. <laughs> Sorry, James. Uh, it is written and directed 1993's The Stoned Age uh, by a guy named James Melconian. Uh, he actually only directed one other movie. Uh, the Jerky Boys movie. No, oh. <laughs> which if you're a, a prank phone call fan from the '90s, which me and my jerk ass buddies were, uh, <coughs> the movie was not that good. No, the movie was terrible. The Jerky Boys were really good. Uh, we used to pass the Jerky Boy cassette tapes around and listen to them in the cars together. I mean, they, they I were, actually they do were, remember the Jerky. They boys. were legendary. Uh, the movie, not so much. Um, and then he he kind of hasn't done much since then, which is a damn shame. Um, well, let's just get right to it. Uh, real quick. Uh, Oddly enough, I'm not going to hold Stone Age against him. You shouldn't. It's got a lot going for it, which we'll learn. Real quick, though, I, I got it because even Cody, who smokes slow, is blazing through this thing. I, I can't help it, all right? It's just main uh, main attributes you're liking right now. Anything that, that's not selling well with you? No. Like I said, strength-wise, you know, I figured it was going to be... Just you know, gangbusters, and it's actually it's mellowed out a lot. Yeah, it's very it's just smooth in, in its flavor. I mean, I still you know it's gotten a lot easier an inch in. <laughs> oh, come on, Doc, I, I'm setting you up right and left. <laughs> <laughs> just, but that's true about the inch point. It, it, this strength kind of just kind of mellowed out. Now is that the Zima or is that the cigar? I think it's a cigar. I think it's a cigar. 
because it it has some strength to it. I mean, it, this is a nice full flavored cigar. Uh, but a, it's not get, just, just it's not that. it's just not hitting you over the head with nicotine anymore. Uh, right, you get that. and that that really just <laughs> mellowed it out. The I like getting that that hint of the the spice on the retro hell. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's got a really nice retro hell. Yes, that I'm loving. Uh, just the and like I said that the. I don't, even, I don't know if I'm really saying it's it's like coffee anymore, but it's it's coffee-ish. I don't know how to, how to explain it. It's a combination of earth and <laughs> mineral. Yeah. Decaf? Yeah, it's decaf. <laughs> it's there decaf. We go. Decaf beans. <laughs> no, I like it. It's got it's got a ton of earth and mineral presence to it. Uh, nice full-bodied flavor coming off of it. Uh, construction's on point as always that you get with Roma Croft. Uh, like I said, the, it's probably my favorite filling cigar. Uh, I can put this in my hands all day. You just like the way it feels in your hands. Perfect size. Yeah. Seems about right. Uh, and Doc, you're still pleased over there? Absolutely. Yep. Okay. Um, anybody need a Zima for a start? And I love the fact that... <laughs> sure, why not? And I love the fact that, you know, it's going toe-to-toe yeah, with this sweet monstrosity of a you beverage. And, be racing tonight. and it's <laughs> absolutely holding its own. If there was only some way to just... It's so clear and refreshing. <laughs> Thing is, I hate Sprite. Stay hydrated, boys. You're drinking Sprite. I know. I hate 7-Up Sprite. I, don't, I never drink that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Okay, the Stone Age, 1993. We start out with some words in a medieval uh, script, text on the screen. In the age before very Beta Con- Very Conan-esque. Here we go. Uh, Once upon a time in a world called suburbia, there lived a noble breed of men. Men who spent their lives on a never-ending quest for honor, glory, and fine chicks. Pretty much sums up the movie, doesn't it? Yes. Uh, we cut to. We can stop there, actually. We cut to a leather motorcycle can boot we? stomping out a cigarette on the pavement. We pan up the boots. This movie loves to introduce well, characters oh, yeah, by with panning the, with up the panning up. Well, yeah. I just start out with uh, you forgot the uh, steel toed. The steel toed motorcycle boots. It actually we, just uh, has the steel toe on the outside. <laughs> like. It is just a, an exposed steel toe. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to put out a crew call. I'm going to need a jib operator who can <laughs> lift about five times his body weight because he's going to be pumping that fucker. I'm Every sure they maybe had it on some sort of lever system. Just, <laughs> just bring, it, bring in the rigs. <laughs> Every character is introduced with a slow introduction from their feet up their bodies. At one point, some of the girls, I thought it was going to be like that naked gun where it just keeps going and going and <laughs> like 10 feet tall legs. <laughs> Uh, Those well, are some nice legs. We cut to this uh, motorcycle boot stomping out a cigarette on the pavement. We pan up from the boots, the black jeans. He's got the black vest on that has Reaper stitched across the back. Uh, to reveal a long-haired badass, obviously. He's wearing all these badass clothes. Hitchhiking down the Pacific Coast Highway. Or, uh, as Dylan McKay would call it, the PCH. Am I right, Doc? PCH? That is correct, yes, the PCH. Uh, he's not having much luck hitchhiking until an old pickup driven by a stoner and dreadlocks flies by him. And when he yells out for the truck to stop, it slams on the brakes and throws it in reverse and skids back to, to pick him up. You better be glad you stopped, dipshit, he tells the, the stoner driver. Now move your ass. Let's go. So they're driving along. this real timid, uh, real you know skinny drivers driving. With dreadlocks. Clearly uncomfortable. Uh... This man, uh, this badass, is affectionately known as Crump's brother. Uh, that's all we know him as. And he's about to set our entire story in motion. Would you say he's a Cro-Magnon? Yes. Yes, he is. Doctor, I know you're not a doctor of anthropology, but would you say Crump's brother is indeed a Cro-Magnon? There are definitely some uh, characteristics of someone from a, perhaps a Stone Age. W- ooh, oh. and would you say that knuckle-dragging is one of those characteristics? No, I would not say that, Tuttle. Just kidding. Yes, there's. he was dragging knuckles. Okay. You forget the doctor has got some sardonic wit. He did do some amateur night stand-up back at Poughkeepsie State. Poughkeepsie State. Poughkeepsie State. I've heard <laughs> it both ways. Well, let's just say when I saw the sign for Dirty Dugs later on in the movie, <laughs> that did take me back. <laughs> Brought back some memories. <laughs> uh, well, uh, Crump's brother's about to set everything in motion. Uh, Crump's brother tells the dude... He's got to swing by his probation officer's place, but then he's meeting some chicks later that night. The guy's like, chicks, no shit? 
Anytime someone talks about chicks in this movie, everybody just goes crazy. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> you think in Southern... I love the way this guy delivers lines. In Southern California, there's no shortage of chicks. You oh. would think so. Yeah, that was, a good, that was sardonic. No shit. <laughs> it's like, chicks, no shit? Yeah, no shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, we then cut to that same stoner dude with the dreads uh, sitting around with some other losers drinking Ox 45 tall cans that night just... Do nothing. Just sit around Ox forty five. Why what couldn't we get any ox losers? Sitting in the back of pickup trucks, no women just, around. Just ox forty five. Stacks of cases of beer. I'm. I wonder what that's like. My. Uh, oh wait. I started out <laughs> this movie with the significant other, and her first comment was, "So the fat guy's wearing a no fat chick sweater." A uh, woman would notice that. Oh, I, I didn't even notice. Yeah, it, it's, <laughs> I didn't notice that. No. It's, not, it's not in my notes. Yeah, weird. <laughs> uh, these guys that uh, are hanging out here drinking all these Ox 45 tall cans uh, are affectionately known as the Guzzlers. Ah, I'll hmm. let you figure out why. Hmm. Not those Guzzlers you hung out with in college. Oh, oh, okay, sorry. Yeah, those... I didn't see anything like that in this movie. <laughs> no, no, no. You no. piqued my interest momentarily. No, no. I get it. They were drinking beer. Uh, well, he's this, the guy with the dreads is telling the, the group about these chicks. He says, there's two of them. This is what a big deal it is. It's like he's, he's spreading the word. There's two of them. They're from up north, and they're going to be uh, near that Frank, old Frankie Avalon place later that night. And Oh, just in case you don't know, chicks from up north, they like to have a good time. A good time? A good time. They like to party because they're from up north. Oh, no shit. More so than girls in the greater Los Angeles area. <laughs> yeah. It seems a little weird. <laughs> it seems weird. Like there would be no shortage of chicks <laughs> down the don't want to hang out with a bunch of these mon- deadbeat guzzlers. These, these Montana chicks like to party. <laughs> uh, well, none of these guys would dare fool around with Crump's brother's chicks, though. They're not going to worm these chicks. Uh, did you, were you guys familiar with that term before no. this week? Worming chicks? I do not remember. No, I, I, but I, I, is I, this I, a late 70s term? I, I mean, was because was of the movie... But I've never heard it outside the context of this movie. They use it a lot, a, a thousand times. Anytime you're trying to weasel in on another guy's girl, it's called worming. Not cock blocking. You're, no, you're a fucking worm. You're worming. You're a worm. You're worming his chicks. Uh, you're gonna hear me say that a lot tonight. Uh, worming. But they're not. They wouldn't dare worm Crump's brother's chicks. I and mean, this guy's a, a menace to society. Uh, as a matter of fact, he just got out of jail for beating the hell out of some Samoan dude. And uh, they can't believe he's even on the streets. That's how scary this guy is. You'd have to be a crazy hard-up bastard to worm Crump's brother's chicks, one of them says. But there's one squirrely-eyed little bastard there in the group named Tack. Oh, Tack. Who seems to have a plan that he's heard about these chicks. He, kinda, he is one hard-up dude. He slowly walks away from the rest of the gang with his uh, Ox 45, with just as Black Sabbath's paranoid starts playing. And he's got that look in his eye. He's like, he's got eye. a plan. He's up to something. And boom, the Stone Age on the screen, Black Sabbath paranoid plan, and that song's going to pulse us all the way through the, the opening credit sequence here. Um, um, I got to tell you, I, I got tingly. I haven't seen this movie in... Ten years it's been a very long time for me as if well. Not at more, least, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, it's always the risky run of watching something like we did with Pretty in Pink. I had a totally different memory of it than what I watched. Uh, for me, this was like an old, an old comfortable pair of blue jeans. Uh, yeah, the stuff that I laughed at so much a long time ago just came right back when I saw it again. Yeah, it, it really didn't uh, d- didn't disappoint. Um, uh, real quick, now that we're getting to the opening credits, I'm not going to come back for a while. Uh, everybody about halfway through their smoke? Yes. Earth, spice. Wind and fire. Spice oh, on the right. retro hail is still consistent, mm-hmm. but the strength has gone down, uh, not not considerably, but some yeah. uh, towards the middle of the stick. Uh, we're getting coffee bean, a really nice coffee bean, which may or may not be accented by the citrus in the in the Zima, and, uh, but mainly that, that thick, meaty earthiness, the strength, the nicotine, uh, it for a little cigar, it really makes its presence known. Agreed. Yeah, it's a dynamite. It's a dynamite smoke. It really is. Doctor, you made some Simpsons references earlier. Remember when the Yakuza was in town and there was that little tiny 
Yakuza guy yeah. outside of Hummers. And he's like, I know when I close the door, he's going to do something really cool. But Mars, the little guy, hasn't done anything yet. <laughs> and the minute he closes that door, you hear this huge fight. You're and like, wow! <laughs> yeah. This oh. cigar is kind of like that little uh, <laughs> the, the, the little Japanese guy. Uh, boy, it's a, it's a small package, but it's, uh, it's, it's, it's got some kick. Good analogy. Yeah, I thought you'd like it. Oh, it's delicious. Okay, we'll come back, and the Zima is still Zima to everybody? Yes. <laughs> no new uh, notes or no <laughs> it's, it's just Cigar really hasn't respect. brought anything out <laughs> other than be, it being still a clear, refreshing beverage. It is it's still a, a beverage. beverage. I'm getting a, a tiny hint of regret and remorse. Hmm. Uh, for Keep every, drinking. Everything I've done over the last 20 years. Those <laughs> subtle notes become very nice. Oh, that's going to be something to watch tonight. Who cries first? My money's on me. <laughs> well, how can you not? You're going to be full of Zima. It's got to come out somewhere. <laughs> Let's hope it's tears. Eventually, your body will begin to secrete the Zima in one form or another. Oh. That is a medical fact. <laughs> well, as Black Sabbath's paranoid uh, pulses along, we tag along with a sweet spray-painted station wagon uh, as these two long-haired dudes in it bang their heads, smoke cigarettes, which the passenger lights the driver's cigarettes for him. I like that. Keep that in mind. You can just like uh, that a cigarette, or is that some ragweed? Uh, cigarettes. Okay. Yeah, cigarettes. cigarettes. Yeah. Uh, this little station wagon is seriously sick. It's got skulls painted on the doors with snakes curling out of their mouths. Stickers like band stickers over all the windows, and then onto the piece de resistance. It's got the blue oyster cult symbol painted on the hood of the car. Uh, the dude riding shotgun, Joe. Ask the driver Hubs if he's got anything planned for tonight. Fuck yeah, I got a plan. I got a radically hellacious plan. First we get a shitload of tall cans. Then an eight ball, no. Quarter OZ. Fifth a jag just to take the edge off. And then we spark up the thick, verlacious gank ganja bud to get the chicks all horn dogged out. That's a plan. That Sound is a plan. <laughs> and and well, first, then Joe... Well, first you're going to get the 12 bounce and then you're going to get we, we said no more Cosby uh, tonight no. was that who you were doing yeah <laughs> <laughs> I gotta get back on the TV you see cause of the Pokemon and the uh, I think he was just about the pills I think uh, <laughs> well Joe's heard it all before man we're just gonna do what we always do we're gonna drive around like dumb fucks and then he'd end up at the stop and go eating Ronaldo burritos now that does something uh well, Hubs pounds Joe's uh, in the chest with his fist. Shut up, Joe fag. I'm not going to hit you every time. But he does hit him a lot. He, hits he him really so does. Damn much. He hits him. These guys hit each other a lot. Shut up, Joe fag. The, the, and we're getting to it, but the physical abuse of Tack was really amusing to me for some oh, reason. Oh, I, I can't help laughing every time <laughs> they punch that guy. Uh, but you know what? Joe's just same, sick of the same old, same old. Kind of like the Days Confused character who's like, you know, oh, we're going to go to Sonic. We're going to... You know, he, he's yearning for something more. He's Ronnie McDonald in uh, "Can't Buy Me Love." Senior yeah. year, We're gonna do the same Senior old shit. Year, every playing cards, cards with the tards. Cards with the tards. Uh, there's got to be more to life than driving around Torrance trying to get stoned and laid. He says, but Hubs can't believe this shit he's hearing. He says, "You know what, Joe? You haven't been the same since you got hit by that laser at the Blue Oyster Cult concert." And he orders Joe to go look in the back seat and take inventory of their party supplies. Amongst a sea of half-eaten burritos and crushed Ox 45 cans, uh, Joe, this brings back memories. Joe finds a bag of skank weed and a giant bottle of Smith's peppermint schnapps. The schnapster. Ding, ding. It is a joke about yay big. How many, <laughs> how many liters is, is that thing? I believe that was actually a full gallon. <laughs> yeah. Hey, it's a gallon of, it looks like uh, like radiator fluid. Uh, it's just or like really old mouthwash. A really old mouthwash. Uh, like well past its due date. This thing they probably had since their freshman year hanging around. Uh, they, they lovingly refer to it as the schnobster. And every time they look at it, they thump it with their finger ding, and it makes a ding, very... Ding! Oh, it's just phenomenal. Uh, well, ha- Hubs has seen everything he needs. Some ragweed, the schnobster. All we need now is some hot chicks. He's kind of right. <sighs> Uh, I thought the two actors are fucking great in this role. Uh, Michael Coplow plays Joe. He's best known probably for he had a small role in Point Break. Uh, 
Yep, he's one of the guys that Gary Busey comes up and clips his hair. Yeah. Uh, but well, he was for the slasher. Like 101 or what, dude? Yeah, Hash of the Slasher. Uh, do you guys remember he was also in another movie we did here on the podcast? Well, I don't remember this, you fine gentleman, then. Dumped you. Uh, that's right. He was one of the heavy metal cellar dwellers in The People Under the Stairs. Uh, Did not know he was in the movie himself. He just <laughs> walked into the house one afternoon. <laughs> he happened to be living in the cellar of the house they were filming in. Um, but yeah, he had, it had been a lot that you would know, but uh, I, I think he's perfect for the role. Hubs is played by a guy, Bradford Tatum. Uh, he's worked quite a bit, mainly in TV. Uh, over the years, uh, I guess he was in a couple episodes of the new Westworld series yes. on HBO. Um, but you know what? I thought they were both fairly natural in their parts. I the thought more, they were great in it. But more than anything, I, I bought them as buddies, buddies as best buds. Um, there's certain screenplay moments that really help you sell it because there's certain times you're like, no way would these two <laughs> keep getting in this car together weekend after weekend. But then there's little things the screenwriter gives us. And you're like, man, I, I buy these guys. And they, yeah. the acting-wise, they, they help sell it. Uh, tell, you don't feel the same way. I, don't dis- uh, I, I disagree. Uh, I thought the redhead was okay. Uh, Hobbs, I thought, was way too stiff. Hubs. Hubs, I thought, was way too stiff. Uh, delivery was stiff. It was one note. It's it was kind just- of a one-note stiff character. It didn't need to be this stiff, though, on the delivery. I can understand being one note because you're right. The writing in this movie was pretty one note, but still. I, no, I didn't say. It. I didn't say. I don't. I don't get. One I don't get the uh, stiff at all from. Oh, I hey, did. A- oh, it was like, <laughs> I'm going to yell my line. I'm going to hit Joe. I'm going to yell the line again, and I'm going to hit Joe. I was just I, like. I thought. I thought it was much. I did, more I, than I that. did not believe that these guys rode around all the time because if you're Joe, I mean, even. Fuck, man. Don't get, you think people would probably look car, at us man. like that, too? Like, man, these guys seem to enjoy things. This guy hates everything. There's no way they're going to hang out as much as they do. But you see On the us, outside, it looks crazy. But you see us laughing together. I mean, we laugh we at see each them, other. So we can't. see them several times laughing together. As later, 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 on on the, <laughs> later on in the movie. Fuck you, tut fag. Later on in the movie, there are a couple of times where I kind of think that they might like no, each no, no, other. No, no, I think, the, I think the story goes out of its no way to way. show them having fun together and sticking up for one another. I think it, those moments are what make it work. Oh, I agree. Yeah. You definitely see them. I mean... Like three times you see this. Well, it's one night. <laughs> How often do you want to see them? But uh, do we need context? We need to see like several weeks of their lives together. Like, well, I mean, I mean if, if you're this like is me, literally a day. You're, if you're like me and you're a professional and you know you have to watch this entire movie, then you're <laughs> going to stick around for those moments. But if you're not, and technically, it's not even a you're day bail when because it, when you don't believe that these two characters. Nobody's like bailing when, on when this thing they don't starts, believe the it's characters. It's already nighttime, and they finish. It's still nighttime. It's like it's four like a, hours. It's like a three-hour movie. I mean, I don't know how many lovable uh, hijinks you want these guys to get into. Uh, Does anybody want a uh, freshly sliced lime for their team? I did cut up some limes. <laughs> did you? I did. Seriously? Yeah. Like oh. an inordinate amount of limes. Okay. <laughs> you want to try it? See what it's like? This I think he's a, joking. This isn't a trick. He's not joking. I saw him load them up. I spent all afternoon slicing the lines. Well, I, I don't believe that. Yeah, I don't believe that either. Oh, wow. He really did. <laughs> I am... Eh? I'm impressed. To all you uh, watching on YouTube, <laughs> it's five limes, baby. <laughs> Dr. Lime? Well, you cannot have too much vitamins. I was going to say, as if it's not citrusy enough. Is that mine? Why not? Keep the scurvy away. I guess I should have brought like, some toothpicks or something. Well, oh, Tut, nothing's going to keep the scurvy away. <laughs> I'm right here all night. I'd have a lot of Oh, you meant the actual condition of scurvy. Uh, wow, it makes it even better. Does it? <laughs> oh, look at that. It fizzes. <laughs> smarting over the fact that I was called scurvy earlier today at a Wendy's. <laughs> Actually, I don't care for it with one. Uh, of co- oh, now you're the guy that's going to be negative about it. I'm just going to leave those there. Anybody wants them? Help yourself. Um, well, the first stop, uh, they, they call their, they refer to the station wagon as the blue torpedo. What is it, like a Volvo or a I think Subaru it is. Or I think it's a Volvo. An old Volvo station wagon. Mm-hmm. Which... As you're trying to think, like, hmm, cool vehicles. What am I going to drive around in? 
an old Volvo station. I got to admit, though, I almost got a Volvo station wagon for my first car. My uncle Brent and Aunt Patty had a yellow, old, like early '80s yeah. Volvo station wagon. They were selling right when I turned 16, and you know, as if I didn't have enough problems as a 16 year old. Uh, but I didn't get it. But if I did, the thought might occur to me to go some skulls and some some. You know. Yeah, but yours would have well, all been like Slayer, like dripping crucifixes. <laughs> yeah. Theirs were very cartoonish, like the skulls on the side with the snakes. Yeah, you know, you could call those Nazi gargoyles cartoonish, I guess. <laughs> no, I meant on the Blue Torpedo. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Slayer. <laughs> well, their first stop in the Blue Torpedo that night is Bob's Big One Hot Dog Stand, where they make nice with the Buffalo Chicks uh, to see where the action is that night. Uh, the Buffalo Chicks are these three uh, heavy set girls. And they go around the outside. And if you're wondering where you can find them on a Friday night, it's Bob's <laughs> Big One's Hot Dog Stand. Uh, They're out looking for a big one, one might say. What'd you say? Buffalo girls go around the outside? What does that mean? <sighs> you are in a... Uh, mm-hmm. Never mind. It's a song? Yes. Go ahead and... What's it, what song? Eminem. Oh, it's an Eminem song. Eminem. As the uh, New Zealanders would say. No. Nah. How do you know Eminem? Because Cody's I, well-rounded. I, kn- I know things. I listen. I got my ear to the pulse. Well, the fat chicks tell them between their bites of footlongs that there's some guzzlers, the guzzlers, with a case of tall cans out in some park somewhere. There's a kegger at Muldoon's parents' uh, place down in Palos Verdes. But Joe shoots down immediately. He doesn't want to party with any Palos Verdes queebies. I don't know what that means. Que- <laughs> it sounds great, though. Queebies. I I'm going to start calling you guys that. Why do we have to be like... Is this what you talk about when we're not around? <laughs> yes. Probably. <laughs> Son of a... Z- How are these guys friends? Appar- see? <laughs> Apparently Zima loosens Cade's lips a little bit. To, uh, something I thought you Queebies would remember. Uh, Cade fag. Uh, <laughs> Cade fag. <laughs> that was uh, a 90s term. That was a 90s term. Actually, this takes place in the early 80s. Or late, late 70s. 70s. No, it's supposed to be late 70s, yeah. but everything about it screams 90s. Oh, I disagree. I think they carry the. the time I thought, very the two, well. I thought no Joe way, and Hubs was complete, were like totally grunge. They were totally grunge. They didn't bring. They I didn't always, have the whole. No, I, I really, the, growing up watching it, I always thought it was I 80s. Got, heavy, I got 78, guys. 79. No, wait a minute. They, the whole plaid shirt worn yeah. around the waist thing, that was definitely 90s. Well. They give them these party options, or they say, you guys could stay and party with us, the Buffalo Chicks. As a matter of fact, their leader tells Joe we could play submarine, to which the guys slowly start walking backwards. <laughs> got Actually, thing. ladies, uh, we got a roll. Prior engagement. And she's like, oh, where are you guys going? Eh, just cruising. <laughs> so they say the it. movie probably would have been over for the dock at this point. I'd have stayed with the Buffalo Chicks and played <laughs> submarine. <laughs> Well, they get in the car and Joe's well, like... The, well, the funny thing was is that uh, they, she goes, submarine. I just kind of look back at my wife and I'm like, what is submarine? And she goes, I don't know. Maybe some 70s term? And then... And she get real sheepish? Like, well, I don't no, know. No, no, no. That's a great, that's a great call to... Because I thought the same thing. I'm like, what the fuck's a submarine? They cut to the guys in the car and Joe looks at Hubs H- and he's like, what the hell's a submarine? And Joe, uh, Hubs like, I don't know, man, and I don't want to know. <laughs> I thought that was pretty good. I thought that was pretty uh, good. Deal. Well, suddenly the good times come to a grinding halt as Joe pops in uh, his eight track cassette and the stereo as Blue Oyster Cult eight track cassette. And Hubs immediately, when he hears "Don't Fear the Reaper" come on, gets angry. He gets pissed very easily. Hubs, yeah, which doesn't really make any sense because the car is literally covered in Blue Oyster Cult stickers and paint. It's just this song. Just don't fear the Hubs is okay with BOC. He just doesn't like Reaper. It's a fucking pussy song. He tells Joe, but Joe doesn't understand. How can it be Blue Oyster Cult and a pussy song? To which uh, play Godzilla? Hubs educates him. Oh, that's a good song. Hubs educates him. Every band puts out at least one pussy song so they can find out who the faggots are. That seems legit. <laughs> seems logical, yeah. Did you guys think of Metallica's Nothing Else Matters? Pretty much. Was that their pussy song? Because <laughs> I passed that test. I never liked that song. Matter of fact, when I was driving down here, it came on. I'm like, oh, yeah, I remember this. This is cool. How can we be <laughs> friends? <laughs> Going to Kate's oh. house, he's got the cassette single. Nothing else matters like, over his mantle. Uh, but you know, they do say a lot of bands have that one song. Uh, Kiss, I was made for loving you, was like their disco song that all the real fans like. If you like that Kiss song, you're not a real member of the Kiss army and whatnot. 
Well, Joe decides to take a rare stand for his beloved... Uh, for now on, guys, when I say BOC, that's Blue Oyster Cult for all you non-Blue Oyster Cult fans. Doctor, hey, man. Doctor, I know what you know what I'm yeah. talking about. Uh, fuck you, he tells Hubs, uh, which promptly gets us... Sc- and, and hey, fuck any judgment on BOC at this table. Oh, God, you hate them, too? They only had one song. Godzilla! Burning for Burnin you? Burning for you? No, don't fear the reaper. Oh, my oh, God. Geez. Dude, Godzilla alone. Any Godzilla band that can alone write is like... A song about a giant nuclear lizard? Come on! <laughs> <laughs> they deserve props. Godzilla! I just did the doctor's singing voice there. I'm sorry, Doc. I won't do that again. That's okay. Well, Joe takes a stand and says, Fuck you to Hubs, which gets him immediately in one of Hubs' patented headlocks. <laughs> they're dri- the As they're driving, the, 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 the blue torpedoes swerving all, all across the, the road as he gets him in his headlock. Admit it's a pussy song. Say it's a pussy song. Finally, because he can't breathe, Joe, it's a pussy song. It's lets him go. Uh... He admits, Don't Fear the Reaper is indeed a pussy song, which we all know it isn't. Uh, and Joe... To get some pussy song. Now you're talking. Joe remedies the situation by putting on the uh, uh, a song that no one could ever call a pussy song, Cat Scratch Fever. Uh, say what you want about Ted Nugent's politics, that guy could write some... <laughs> and he does. That is that is not a pussy song, it is a pussy song. Like It's about pussy. Uh, which... Which obviously meets Hub's approval. He loves, uh, he loves this song, uh, which he is correct. It's a great song. Best Ted Nugent song ever. It's the only Ted Nugent song. Stranglehold. Stranglehold. Dude. <laughs> all right, that one was just to. You, see, you can see you and me driving around the blue torpedo. All right, that one was just to elicit Even that if response. You occasionally put me in a headlock. Uh. <laughs> After the show, we're going to be pushing buttons tonight. After the show, we're going to tie Tuttle up and make him listen to Stranglehold, the 80-minute version. Oh. Do you like guitar solos? We've got 20 of them for you. Oh, God. Uh, Or remember Tack, the squirrely-looking guy who, when he got the information about Crump's brother's chicks, escaped from the rest of the guzzlers? Well, he's now on the side of the road hitchhiking. He's got this can of Ox 45. and He's always has a fresh can of the Ox. Don't know where those cans are coming from. He never has more than one, but he's always got a fresh one. Uh, he's not having any luck. Kind of uh, like Yaks back in the 90s. Yeah, he always had a fresh beer. <laughs> it's magical. I mean, <laughs> he always did have a Well, then, once, once, we, once we became friends with him, though, we found out his hiding places. Did you Did you find all my there places? compartments in Not the, all of them. There's he divulged, he divulged some of them. I don't think he ever gave all of them away. I found all of them. <laughs> I had to wait till he passed out, but I found them all. <laughs> well, Hubs and Joe... Like even right now, I built in little... <laughs> <laughs> Hubs and Joe see Tack, uh, the Tackmeister, hitchhiking. You fuck. Look at, hey, look at Tack, that fucking pud. Uh, Hawk a loogie on him, Hubs uh, instructs Joe. So Joe, as they drive by, leans out and just spits this huge glob of <laughs> mucus right on Tack's face. Joe, does see, that's a sign of buddies. Joe thinks that's a good idea. He's like, yeah, <laughs> Yeah, it's not like he's not tortured. Like, come on, man, don't make me do it. No, he's all. <laughs> oh, man, good idea. it's t- sweet, We're having, sweet lovable Tack. I can't do it to him. Oh, man, wait, wait, slow down. <laughs> uh, uh, real quick oh well let me finish this real quick as they keep driving by Tack yells out hey man I got chicks which My causes way. hubs to slam on the brakes <laughs> back up because again chicks are so damn rare in SoCal yeah, yeah. Well, well apparently well, for the guzzlers they are <laughs> uh, okay. well he tells the guys about the chicks from up north he swears they're fine as hell no buffalo butts and they're ready to party but he was smart he refuses to divulge the chicks location uh, they try to brag to bribe him with the bag of skank weed. They even try to give him the schnobster. Ding! Uh, come on, man. That shit makes me hork. Uh, he's not falling for any of it. Remember the uh, line? Just no hush. Wonder, it'll get six fat chicks all fucked up William Holden style. <laughs> it really just makes me wonder how long this bottle of schnobster's been around. Because, like, everybody knows about it. He just t- thinks about it for a second. He's like, Hubs, ah, yeah, shit That is one of the best-selling lines I've ever heard of Hubs. Come on, man. This get a six fat chicks all horned out that William Holden style. I guess that's a Hollywood reference. They no, all fucked up. Who's William? William yeah, all fucked up. Who's William, William Holden? It's an actor from the fifties, fifties, sixties, seventies, forties. And I'm assuming he liked to get fucked up. Uh, yes, William Holden. Uh, Sunset it, Boulevard. Yes, yeah, Sunset Boulevard. Correct. Stalag Seventeen. Um, in one of my all-time favorite movies, uh, The Wild Bunch. And, oh, of course, uh, of course. Uh, supposedly, uh, in the early '80s, he was drinking alone. 
uh, no problem there, but uh, he slipped and fell and hit his head. And uh, because he was by himself, that's the only reason I mention that, um, he actually bled to death. He was in his early 60s, and it was, I guess, the, the medical report afterward was that had somebody found him or been there with him, yeah. he would have had a bad cut, but he'd have been okay. But because he was alone, he, he just bled out. Well, that's why, wow. I, that's why I wanted you guys to do the podcast with me. If I was out here by myself, who knows what would happen. <laughs> but that's kind of then, that's kind of a crass, uh, William, fucked up William Holden style. That's kind of. Well, see, I, I still get that this movie is 78 or 79, would, so he has a reputation for being a huge partner, be, but he hasn't died That'd yet. be us, like us saying, getting fucked up Robert Downey Jr. style. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, back when he knew how to have a fun time. <laughs> uh, well, he's not, uh, Tax not settling for any of this. He wants a ride. He's not going to tell these guys any information. Uh, so they give him a lift. As they're driving down to Torrance Beach to hook up with these fine chicks down by the old Frankie Avalon place, keep that in mind, Hubs demands Tack hand over some gas money. Information without transforma- transfer- transportation, transportation equals dick. Makes sense. Uh, and when Tack refuses, Hubs instructs Joe to get the money from him. Before he can do anything, though, Tack punches Joe. These guys just beat the shit out of each other, which causes H- Hubs to reach back, punch Tack <laughs> in the face. Don't you hit my brother Joe, man. And I love how it's all slow motion, too, and just the, it really looks like he hits him. Like he's Yeah, they're, they're really good punches, but he's, don't fuck with my buddy Joe, man. That's a cool little friend moment, sticking up for his buddy. Uh, and I think this is one of those little moments where it's, I think Joe likes having a... I, a, I felt it was heartfelt. I did, I did, too. I liked it. I did, too. We need to understand why Joe puts up with so much of Maybe some bullshit. of the more cynical people never had a buddy stand up and punch somebody in the face for him. It's okay. Have another Zima. Try to, if somebody fucks with you, I'll punch him in the face. I think we could all Thank you, it. doctor. <laughs> there, there it is. There are the Zima tears. The Zima tears. Oh, there's an optical illusion. <laughs> it's so clear. Is the bottle full or empty? <laughs> I got three full bottles. Oh, Seriously, no. I was looking over there and I was like, is he, I can't tell. Yeah, but you can tell. Is he two thirds of the way through on all these? It's hard to tell. I thought it he does was, look like two thirds of the I way thought through. He was all skipping out on us. It's like, you pussy. Um, so, anyway, they're cruising down. Um, where, where am I? Oh, Hubs had just punched Tack in the face. Cody, would you like um, a lime with that? I think I will. I knew those limes would be a big hit. It's going to be a long voyage. I don't want to develop scurvy. <laughs> Well, Tack uh, coughs up the $6 in gas money when they pull into the gas station. Hell, we know it's the 70s. Hubs uses five of it for gas <laughs> and a dollar to buy a pack of Marlboro Reds. Yeah. I was like, what day is this where <laughs> one could buy? Is this 1947? The good old days, right? Um, yeah, if it was 1947, they would have just been giving them away for free. <laughs> and guess who's jockeying yeah, the... you've got a gallon of gas. Here's two packs of cigarettes. <laughs> guess who's jockeying the register at the convenience store? Buffalo Bill. Crump. Crump. Crump's brother's brother. Oh, wait. Never mind. Buffalo Bill. We get to him later. Buffalo Bill. Buffalo Bill. Yeah, when the... At the liquor store? Yeah. That's not Buffalo Bill. Oh, it's not Buffalo Bill? No. No, that's Uh, that's a very other... It's it's a very very well-known actor. Uh, Who's done many, many wonderful things. One of those was Buffalo Bill. No. 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 That's Ted Levine. Who Someone. played Buffalo Bill? He did. Ted Levine Ted did. Not, Levine did. He, Levine he's not in this movie. movie. Uh, he was in Heat. He's one of the oh cops yeah. in Heat. He wasn't in, he this, wasn't movie. in this movie. No. Okay. Anyway. But delirium is one of the things that can happen if you do not stay properly hydrated. Oh. Doctor, we're going to be drinking an inordinate amount of uh, this fluid tonight. What other than uh, if we don't sweat it out or... What are, what, are, what are some physical ramifications we could be facing? No, it's a natural diuretic, Mr. Kate. I'm glad you asked that question. Uh, penis or pores? It's finding a way out. <laughs> penis or pores? Penis right. or pores? It's finding a way out. So far, mine's choosing pores. Dong or ducts? However you want to say it. <laughs> Dong or ducts? <laughs> uh, well, uh, Crump's younger brother uh, is working the register. He tells Joe and Hubs about the chick's his big brother has lined up for him down by the old Frankie Avalon place that night, which Joe and Hubs play cool, as if oh, they as if yeah. they haven't heard about this. Oh, news to me, man! And before Joe can shit his tattered jeans at the thought of uh, pissing off Crump's brother by worming his chicks, uh, Hubs calls an audible. 
He tells Little Crump that the homecoming queen from a few years ago, Desiree Gibson, is stripping down at Dirty Doug's for amateur night down PCH. Man, my brother digs that chick, Crump says. Methinks Hubs knew that. Finally, something in this movie I can relate to. You once danced at Dirty Dugs? No, just the homecoming chick dancing at Dirty Dugs. Was her name also Desiree? Sure. <laughs> Could you had anything. You had a, you had a high school sweetheart who went into stripping. Uh, I did not. She wasn't my high school sweetheart. But she went to your high school, and she uh huh yeah. She was a popular gal, and she ended up. It's a it's a it's an honest part of the economy. Hmm, well said. Huh. Go with that. Uh, well, Hubs tells Crump, you know, I can get you and your brother in uh, to Dirty Dugs. And Little Crump buys it. Hook, line, and sinker. Thanks, man. I owe you one. Hey, man, it's cool. So now he's got the Crumps going all the way down Pacific Coast Highway out of the way so he can worm the chicks. I like the way this guy thinks. As they walk back to the car, Joe's having a moral crisis. Uh, he doesn't want to worm Crump's brother's chicks. He doesn't even feel right about worming these chicks from Tack. Uh, who's out there waiting in the car? Uh, have you seen Tack? But that? there's there's no talking hubs out of this. We're gonna screw them doggy style and shit in their parents' beds. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love hubs. Was your wife still watching with you at this point? Yes. That's your problem. I think that's yes. that's why you're not. <laughs> Were you drinking? No. That's problem number yeah, two. Strike two. <laughs> Uh, you oh, so you're saying that you have to be drunk to appreciate this movie? No, I'm just drinking. Just drinking. Drinking. Big difference. Little. And without the watchful eyes of any females around. <laughs> you can't laugh at that line. I We're going to screw them doggy style and shit in their parents' beds. If you're over there like, <laughs> and your wife's sitting there looking you like, what the hell did I marry? <laughs> uh, Jason, you might want to check on the quiche you started in the oven. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sorry, babe. Uh, <laughs> I just this podcast yeah. is animals. I don't know why they. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think we're getting off the, the couch. Uh, going, fuck uh, yeah! Uh, we're I think we're getting to the root of the problem here. Um. Anyway, uh, it's really bothering Joe. He doesn't want to worm anybody's chicks. Uh. Well, they take off. They uh they send Tack. Uh, hey Tack, I'm if I'm gonna drive all the way down the highway. I'm gonna need clean windows. So he sends Tack to go get the window cleaner, and they take off in the blue torpedo. This is the first time I've ever seen the window cleaner like a mile <laughs> away from where the cars get up. What's well, L.A.? People steal that. Shit. Okay, All right. but he runs after him and he grabs onto the this passenger is one of side the funniest, window. Funniest bits of violence. You fucking worms! Stop the car and let me in. Hubs just does the straight arm. Hubs, <laughs> Hubs reaches across. Right Joe. turn, Hubs. <laughs> oh, shit, and they make the great those great punching sounds. The down feathers from his vest. Dude, he flies, flies <laughs> off. He's wearing like a Marty McFly down yeah. uh, life preserver vest. It just feathers everywhere as he rolls and rolls. And then every time we leave Tack, he's always doing the same thing. Fuck you, you worms. With the miracle cannon. And then he also has, a, has an ox cannon <laughs> in his hand. Uh, real quick, tell us a little bit. I love this guy playing uh, Tack. He actually, out of everyone in this, has gone on a to huge do... huge career. Yeah, yeah. He was uh, under the name Clifton Collins in the movie. I believe his real name is Clifton Gonzalez. And uh, he uh, has been in a bunch of stuff. Early on, he played a lot of like Latina gangbangers and like all the early like colors and those kind of movies. He was the main villain in one of the. Uh, oh God, I can't believe I'm gonna get the Jason Statham movies where he's dying oh, uh, at the heart of. Oh, uh, crank. Crank. crank, crank, yeah. yeah. Which, he was if great you haven't in seen that. those, those are just absolutely fun. Yeah, he was great in that. He's great in that. He's done a ton of stuff. I, I can't even think of everything. If you look, he's got a. A huge resume going all the way back then. He was in the Rules of Attraction movie, the the one based on the Brady Snell's novel. Uh, full resume on IMDb. Um, he really, really, and uh, in, in looks drastically different yeah. now. Like you wouldn't even recognize him. He doesn't even look Hispanic in this. No, uh, no. no. I remember him uh, primarily. What struck me is he, uh, mo- the movie that I like the most is uh, he did recently was the Pacific Rim. Yeah. So. Okay, and I think he's also in that Westworld show. Yes. He's in the Westworld show, so is uh, Tatum. Yeah, they're both. I think, yeah, uh, they're both him. But I think he's got a, bit, a little bit. He does. Role. Uh, I, I saw had to look him, him up because for some reason I thought he was Boner. Boner from Charles in Charge. Oh, I thought I was like Tut. What have you? <laughs> no. Maybe we all haven't seen this movie. No, wasn't Boner oh, from Charles in Charge? No, Boner was Growing Pains. Growing Pains. All right. 
Okay. Um, Again, was that a TV show or some <laughs> late night movie you watched? But he's really good, and he plays tack perfectly. By I the like way, that. I'm about to. Oh yeah, to uh, let's get back that. to the cigar. I've actually been talking a lot. I've I've been neglecting mine, boys. Uh, Doc, you're about last. Still going good. Last third. Still going good. Everyone's the last third. Tut, you're almost done. Uh, I'll start with you, Tut. Uh, final thoughts. Uh, final thoughts. It was once it tamed down off that light. It was pretty consistent throughout the entire smoke. Not a lot of transition, but just I love the note that it was providing, and so it, it was a dynamite cigar. The fullness of it never let up. Uh, it was just a good Lajero earthy. I cigar. felt like the spice has kicked up in the last third. It has for me. Yeah. I mean, I'm getting that that nostril tingle that went away in the middle in the middle section. Um, that's coming back. Um, the coffee has died down. To I'm not getting. Uh, any coffee in the final third. I'm just getting that really strong earthiness. Just getting um, a, a small little bit, just very faint in the background of the coffee. Mainly the earthiness, the mineral. Mm-hmm. We are talking about Doc? Yeah, no, definitely. Still got that all the way through. Still going um, strong, too. Yeah, it's not a, an overly complex cigar, but, but I mean, at four inches, you're not going to go on a roller coaster ride of, of, of flavors. You don't have to. Uh, I, I really like it a lot. Yeah. Um, I'm glad I hadn't had one in a while because it's, it's kind of, um, it's speaking to me interestingly. Um, and it's, and the Zima's not a bad pairing partner with it. It really isn't. I mean, it doesn't conflict in any way, I don't think. Next time we get invited to a pairing party down at Skips, we'll have to bring some Zimas. And, uh, <laughs> I'm sure he'll appreciate that. Yeah. Um, no, it's just uh, it's it's a solid smoke. It's delicious. You guys want to guess? Uh, I'm sure you know. Yeah, I was uh, about to say. Price, I'm out. price point? Well, I have no idea. Uh, what? Uh, been about an hour since we lit up, probably. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. A little over. Probably gonna say being Roma Craft seven seven fifty. Seven seven fifty. That's pretty mean, much what I'd say because they're they're real competitive, you know. Cut. Well, you also got to think that this is a four inch cigar, so right around the seven bucks. Uh, I picked these up from Famous Smoke Shop, our favorite online retailer. I uh, got a five pack for thirty one ninety nine, which comes to about six right, a hair under six fifty a piece. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah. So there you go. Yep. Can't beat that. Money well spent. Yeah. Not too um, So yeah, thumbs up. Thumbs up. Anybody Seven fifty four an hour, or six fifty four an hour. That's good, especially in the hot, hot sun. Guarantee you can't get that kind of bargain at Dirty Dugs. Not anymore. It's gonna cost you a lot more uh, for an hour there. I speak from experience, dudes. Uh, okay, well, good. Uh, I, I, I really wanted a cigar that would kick the Zima's ass, and this, this did it. Um, it held its own. I'm kind of curious as to what the follow-ups are going to do. Yeah, let's see. Uh, what you try? You're going for another Roma. Uh, yeah, temperance. intemperance. Okay. Is that a box press? Yes, it is. I don't know if I've ever had that one. No. Yep. What's that called? Box press. Just the box press? <laughs> Where'd you get it? Uh, I got it at Havana House. Havana House. Uh, right, 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 right. North? north? Yes. No, it's North Austin. North Austin. Yes. You're saying it's from up north? It's Ford Radical Cigar? So it likes to party? <laughs> it likes to party. Uh, as you guys light up... You know what I mean, right? As you guys light up your subsequent uh, cigars, let us know how that's going with the Zima. Huh? Will do. All right. Well, to get back to this uh, film, we soon find the Blue Torpedo. Somehow, when it comes to intemperance, I don't think that they were thinking about Zima. I think it's safe to Elliot say... Elliot Ness smashing Zima bottles. <laughs> Not because it's against the law. He just wants to smash Zima bottles. <laughs> Uh, I just think of the Untouchables. Me chasing a baby carriage as it stroller as it bounces, but it's filled with Zimas. <laughs> no, they're bouncing I'm out. At the last <laughs> second, <laughs> <my> <laughs> <leg up soon>. <laughs> <laughs> Doctors catching the bottles as they come down. <laughs> That's the movie I want to see. The Zuntouchables. <laughs> Zuntouchables. No, the Unhirables. <laughs> <laughs> the Unwatchables. Uh. Well, <laughs> speaking of losers, uh, we find the Blue Torpedo parking outside the former home of Frankie Avalon. 
Uh, it's got a little it's sign. It's got a sign. This is. With a little cartoon Frankie Avalon <laughs> I was about to ask you, how do you know it's the former home? Uh, Frankie Avalon, of course, is. From the Beach Blanket Bingo. All Beach those Blanket movies. Bingo. Uh, Net Funicello, Net Funicello movies. Yes. Surf, surfing movies. Uh, uh, he, he certainly ruled the silver screen for quite yes. some time there. Back Doo wop singer from back in the day. Yeah. Grease. His silken voice. Beauty He's school really dropout. He was just so high pitched. Was he in Greece? Yes, he was. Beauty school dropout. I don't trust him for anything. Yeah. Buffalo Bill. <laughs> uh, he was beauty school dropout. Boner Greece. from Growing Pain. Yeah. I think Frankie Avalon was boner from Growing Pain. <laughs> he was. <laughs> I still think boner from Growing Pains is something else to ask <laughs> hidden away somewhere. How did they get away on an on a eighties sitcom on on a, na- on a boner? major network having a character named Boner? I think it was more a reference to being a bonehead. An idiot. Right. A moron. A rude. And I'm surprised that Mr. Goody Two Shoes, Kirk Cameron, went along with that. Uh, well, that was before. That was yeah. before. Yeah. That's back when he still acknowledged that boners exist. Pretty much. Outside of the act of procreating. Pretty much. You should get that guy on the show. Yeah, I'm sure he'd love it. Kurt? Zima? <laughs> Can we get you Zima, Kurt? Guys, you promised that you wouldn't do did this. Did you ever stick it to Tracy Gold back in the day, <laughs> huh, Kirk? Hey, we could do some of those Left Behind movies. Or we couldn't, and just say that we did. That would all be good, too. Kirk would be like, for you guys, it's like looking in a... Wait, which one? The <laughs> Kirk Cameron Left Behind? Looking or in the a futuristic... Ni- uh, huh? The Kirk Cameron Left Behind or the Nicolas Cage Left Behind? They're all part of the same series. No, it was the same movie. Well, maybe Kirk Cameron... He, Kirk Cameron a did a lot of those movies. Yeah. But Nicolas Cage remade the first one. Where they were left behind the first time. Correct. Left behind again. <laughs> it's like the Taken movies. How many times are you going to take this girl? <laughs> At this point, I really want to be left behind. Could y'all just just leave me? They took my hamster. Taken five. This is getting fucking ridiculous. Uh, he goes outside and sees the pizza coupons where his mailbox are taken. <laughs> uh, he calls I've the guy. Very <laughs> specific skill. I was going to go to Pizza Inn. I've got a very <laughs> special set of skills that will allow me to retrieve my coupon. When Seagal pulls up, I got spares. <laughs> Hop in. Hop in. I'm going to the pizza place anyway. Uh, well, they uh, they park outside the Frankie Avalon house. Hubs wisely grabs the bottle of Schnapster. Hey man, can't go in empty-handed. Can't show up empty-handed. It's wise reasoning. Uh, and they make their way to the house across the street that has a female silhouette up in the bedroom window kind of gyrating behind the curtains. Of course, they're trying to figure out which could it be. Oh, wait. Oh, Obviously, it's, it's the one with that girl well, dressing herself that female, seductively. That uh, female silhouette belongs to the blonde-haired temptress Lainey, mm. who answers the front door right as Montrose's rock candy starts to play. Mm. I had forgot that Sammy Hagar led that band. That's Sammy Hagar's first band, Montrose. Uh, but they play this song wow. every time a hot chick is introduced, it's pretty good, much. Good, uh, it's good history there, buddy. Uh, well, uh, it sets the mood perfectly. As this is the Stone Age, we start at her cowboy boots. Pan up. <laughs> pan up her long, long legs to these tiny little jean cutoff shorts. She's wearing like a belly t-shirt with a skull on it. She's a cute girl. Yeah. She's good looking. She is really good looking. 90s hair, but it's all right. She reminded me of the chick from the uh, Billy Idol Rock the Cradle of Love video. At least the Silverstone. No. 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 Uh, uh, everyone, you'll hear everyone. Can you uh, see me now? I can see me all night long, buddy. Everyone in the movie describes her as she looks just like the chick on the Virgin Killers album. Did any of you guys actually Google the Virgin Killers album? No. There's an... IMDB tidbit about that. It's a Scorpions album from that time period called Virgin Killers. Scorpions a- from the 80s? Yeah, the, the Scorpions. And I actually regretted Googling it the minute I did. <laughs> the, the Virgin Killers album has a very, very young looking girl, like way young, and it looks like she's kind of naked, and then it's like broken glass. Like you're looking at her through a window, and the broken glass kind of centers on her crotch. And I'm like, am I getting? Am I? Do I need a lawyer? I immediately, like, <laughs> I didn't need to see that. Like, was that an actual? You said you looked something up about it. On IMDb, there's a quote about it being uh, that there was some that that's kind of an inaccurate quote, either because that album comes out later, later. than when the movie's supposed oh, to be. Oh, okay. 
Uh, well, one, so she, I, I know better than to Google virgin killers on the doctor's well, computer. Well, one, That's, she does not look... That is a sure way to not be making any house calls anymore. Well, one, she does not look at all like the girl on the virgin killers album. But two, I couldn't believe that they actually made it this cover art for an album. Yax is, is look, are you looking it up. Actually, the funny thing is, is if you type that in, it literally comes up for Stone Age. Oh, really? It, but just, just Google Virgin uh, Scorpions Virgin Killers. And I'm just going to stand over here. <laughs> um, but she, she is. She's, am I, I going to go to jail for this? Quite I, possible. Do I need to talk to my lawyer? Do I need to talk to my lawyer? I a lot of this stuff back in the day. I was trying to find some 70s power rock on the way down here. And so Jethro Tull's Aqualung comes on. So the first line, sitting on a park bench, eyeing little girls with bad intent. Yeah, you are. That's, that's pretty the much line. going to send you to <laughs> Show them. That's the album cover. Yeah, you... Oh, God! Oh, uh, how do you... Don't oh, look at me. my phone. Give me that. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm sorry. Not look are, we on, are we now on a watch list? <laughs> Don't you talk to my lawyer? I think you do. Uh, well, it's a weird reference, and we'll leave it at that. Uh, it's weird something. Anyway, she's she's cute. No, I'm ashamed. And she looks of age, which is the important <laughs> thing. Yes. Uh, she sure does. Does um, anyone else hear sirens? Well, she's skeptical of these two dorks, to say the least. She won't let him in before they pass us. You know, she's got some questions and for And if him. she's a virgin, it was killed a long time ago. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you got any blow? Which, is that a 70s term? I thought that was like a oh, late yeah. 80s. Blow's always been around. Is it? They say they have cocaine Hubs would be from about 77 to 84. Okay. All right. So she's like, you got any blow? Hubs is like, no. I, thought, I, 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 I know that strictly for research purposes. You got any crank? No. You got any lewds? No. Basically, the same set of questions the doctor asks us when he shows up to record his podcast every week. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I mean, these are just simple folk. They come with weed and... Well, she asks, what kind of party is it if we don't have any drugs? And Hubs is like, hey, relax, babe. We got alcohol. He pulls out the schnapster. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. Oh, that's cool. But you know what? I haven't drank that since seventh grade. It makes me hork. <laughs> well, what's it... Oh, uh, for those of you not watching YouTube, Hut, 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 Tut just held up a Zima bottle. You're comparing Zima to the Schnobster? <sighs> Good old Zima. <laughs> <laughs> I do think we should start calling him Hut for the rest of the evening. <laughs> I will. Ding. Uh, Let's see if it does that. <laughs> there Almost. It is. <laughs> Well, what's going to get you hot, baby? What's good enough for you? She's like, well, you got 151? That shit makes me go wild. Oh, we can go procure some of that. So uh, Joe and Hubs immediately jump back in the blue torpedo and go to get some 151. The same shit we should be drinking tonight. Fuck you, Mark Bacardi the Third. <laughs> I don't know if that's who owns Bacardi, but it sounds like a dick name, right? He does. Well, obviously... I mean, it's a popular... That's what they did all the flaming drinks with. Well, apparently there was a lawsuit. What? That is what I was initially told when I tried to uh, procure some of it myself. Was yesterday. it that Great White concert? I'm kind of curious I don't this. know the what it was. Concert. Apparently someone... About, you know, they were trying to do the little flaming drinks or whatever. It was flaming great shots and Oh, you spill it on yourself, it catches fire, and then you're like, someone should have told me it would burn me. I don't know. Wait a minute. Exhibit were, A, video from throwing. the bar with a guy in flames. <laughs> Bacardi's like, you know, we'll stop making it. It's <laughs> Wait a minute. You were trying to, to cause a flame, and now you are suing because it caused a flame. As I told Yax, it would be like if you went to the gas station Fuck and coated you yourself in gasoline and then decided to sue Exxon. Oh, God, I uh, hate lawyers. At some lawyers. point, you have to take personal responsibility here. Yeah, now we can't have fun things. Someone <laughs> should stop me from doing stupid things. At some point, That's you've got to take like... personal responsibility <laughs> for your actions. <laughs> Indeed. Um, but yeah, it just kind of sucks. I mean, that's something we've been drinking since... And I always say, you know, hey, you, well, get, see, one, I was about you get one life, play at your own risk. I was I was about to crank on it because, you know, well, obviously well the demographics and the stats came back and said that not enough people were drinking 151. But if it was because of freaking lawsuits, that's that's bad. That's stupid. Well, I'm sure, you know, they were probably looking at their sales and going, hey, you know, after 97, our sales really just stopped. I don't know why. Oh, wait, we weren't drinking anymore because we coun't get a hold of any Zima. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, I should, yeah, it's true. Maybe when the Zima sales stopped, the 151 just stock plummeted as well. Um, I should, you know, I should mention uh, as teenagers working at the movie theater, uh, we would drink 151 ad nauseum. Uh, we'd get the big theater cups or after hours some uh, the big super big gulps from 7 Eleven. Kate and I were fans of the super big gulp where it would end up leaking through at the bottom like, a, Den- like a ceiling with water damage. As Dennis Miller once said, it was the only drink you could buy that had its own undertow. It's like 72 gallons of Coke. You fill it up halfway, then you dump a half bottle of 151 in there, and you're set for the night. Well, I didn't know that y'all were referencing Bacardi 151. I thought y'all were talking about Mad Dog. No, Mad Dog was a what? Different number. 2020? 2020. Oh. Okay. That's what Buffalo Bill drank. Oh, okay. <laughs> Do you guys think if we went to where Tut grew up, everything would just be backwards? Like, it's like, it's like the it's underworld. like Bizarro Land, land and the, the Super Prince. Prince. Ronald McDonald's wearing the Burger King crown. Like, yeah. nothing makes sense. <laughs> I'm not going there, by the way. I don't, I don't know about you guys. I'm not going there. Uh, but yeah, uh, so we do that, and then occasionally, uh, and I think I may have mentioned this on an earlier episode, but that's what I was really looking forward to tonight. I would, for special occasions, I would get out the mat vat, which was a, a much larger Tupperware dish than, than this, and uh, you put in a six-pack of Zima, half a bottle of 151, stir it with your hand, because you want to get that saltiness very sanitary uh, yeah. of your thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the 151 should technically kill anything. <laughs> anything. The jism and everything else. And then I would just fi- I would find a seat at the party amongst my fellow guzzlers, and I would just drink from this mat vat all night. And I stopped when I almost killed that small Asian girl. Well, <laughs> but uh, that, was, that was partly her fault. No. Uh, she knew the risks. But over the years, we would occasionally get a bottle just to revisit. You know, uh, we couldn't quite handle it like we used to. Uh, God, we drank the piss out of that stuff. But uh, anyway, it was very disappointing that we couldn't get a hold of some. But here in a little bit, we do have some Bacardi, just regular uh, rum. I'm gonna make cocktails. See, see what we got. Do you need? Are you Zima? Maybe. Zima. Maybe. Maybe. Um. It's almost like we have an endless supply of this stuff. <laughs> yeah. Well, we uh, see the blue torpedo and then pull up to Liquor World. And no, I'm not referring to Tut's desk drawer at work. <laughs> <laughs> it's, an actual, it's an actual liquor store. Uh, as they walk in, the big Samoan who got his ass kicked uh, by out. Crump's brother is hobbling out. He's all bandaged up. I didn't realize that was a Samoan. Oh, yeah. They Just say like- it. They say it's a Samoan that... He looked like just some regular white guy. He had his head completely covered in bandages. You couldn't yeah. see his Walking face. with like two canes. He was all, he was just. He had a Hawaiian shirt on. <laughs> oh, on. oh, oh, oh. Uh, but does that deter the guys who are about to worm Crump's brothers? No. 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 They're on a mission. They're on a mission. Uh, they march right in to acquire their 151. Uh, behind the counter is the one and only Tut, not Buffalo Bill. Buffalo Bill. Taylor Negron. I do like this guy. Uh, well, he's great. He played one of my favorite action hero villains in The Last Boy Scout. He was oh, Milo. Yeah, Milo. Yeah. Yeah. Just once, I'd like to hear you scream. Play some rap music. Play some rap music. You think you're so fucking you cool, think you're don't so you? so fucking cool, don't you? Also, you think one you're of, so fucking cool. One of my favorites, he played the mailman in Better Off Dead with yes, John did. Cusack. Yes, he did. He uh, delivers the pizza to Sean Penn in Fast Times at Ridgemont yes, High he did. in the classroom. Yes, yes he yeah. did. Uh, he, he was a stand-up comedian. He also had a lot of these little great roles. Uh, sadly, died of liver cancer uh, not too long ago. Hmm. But let's not let's not <laughs> talk about that tonight. <laughs> uh, I don't think they actually figured out what happened to him. Yeah, uh, asbestos inhalation. Uh. Um, so he's behind the counter. He's got disco music playing, disco inferno. He is <laughs> dancing. dancing his ass he is off. having a party in there. Uh, he thumps on the on the speakers. And tells Joe and Hubs that they're going to party with the foxes tonight. They need to shake it. Put some insanity on your baked potato, baby. I mean, he's got these, like, one little zinger after another. Uh, and you just got a boogie, man. Joe, who really wants to buy this bottle of booze underage, starts doing a little disco dance. He's just trying to make him happy. It's kind of like when we used to go into convenience stores to buy booze. Like, we just want to try to kiss ass to the kiss ass whoever was working there, you know? Oh, like, yeah. Just yeah. there, your disco. best man. Whatever you yes. say, man. Uh, uh, Hubs, though, can't. It's like, what the fuck you doing, Joe? Like, he hates disco. Anytime disco's on, he, Hubs flicks on. 
You like disco? It has its moment. Look, everybody not, likes disco. I'm not anti-disco. I was going to Everybody judge you. loves it. They don't want to admit it. I like but kisses. Like I was. It. I like they kisses. Like I was made for loving you. Okay. Yeah. I like disco and fire. That's a pretty good song. It is. It I really like is. disco stew. <laughs> disco stew. Disco uh. stew. Got hooked on the white stuff back in the seventies. <laughs> uh, well, he's about to sell Joe the bottle one fifty one until Officer Dean rolls in. The local like, police officer. I like Officer Dean. <sighs> He starts immediately patting down. Uh, oh, and what, as soon as he walks no, 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 in, and then he goes, "Hey!" And all of a sudden, Hobbs just instantly, before anything, just puts his hands behind. Yeah, they, they're well acquainted with the cops, <laughs> and immediately Taylor Negron's like, "I'll need to see your ID, please." Like his whole demeanor Party's changes. Over now. Uh, so he pats down Hobbs. They're very familiar with each other. You can't just hassle us because we have long hair, man. And he starts patting him down. To which uh, Officer Dean, you boys must think I'm a real butthead. You think I didn't want to taste alcohol when I was your age? They used to call me Dixie Cup Dean. They've heard this a million fuck. You can tell they've heard it a million times. They know he's going to let him go. I actually like this because it reminds me of, by law, I have to tell you. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of like that guy. Uh, growing up in a small town in Central Texas, we had this moment happen... Not with the same cop, not like this. No, we didn't but have an numerous officer times. We didn't have an officer Dean, but we did have very... Relaxed back in those days. It was far more Cops relaxed. Who would literally you cut pour, us cut us breaks? Pour it out, no MIP. Uh, that, was about, that was about it. Pour it out, but they would let you. They'd let you go as long oh, as you, you as long lovable as you scamps. Yeah, I mean it was it was very. I don't think that exists today. I no. think well, no. one you're going to get sued, but if the kid gets in a wreck, you're going to get sued. Exactly. Uh, there's just no. There's cameras on everybody and everything. Uh, but man, it was just such a uh, that that time will never happen again, and it kind of sucks. I mean, it just it it always kind of throws me back to the, you know, are we any safer today? You know, I, I just don't think that we are. I cops come down on you so damn hard now, which probably rightfully so. But at the same time, like I said, we grew up in a time where the cops would let you slide on that, right or wrong. Uh, well, we we had many encounters. Um, while we were underage, and they were almost all positive. And luckily, in that well, you know, no, go ahead. But the time that we were, you know, that age of coming close to eighteen, the laws were changing. A lot of places were sw- still. They had just, you know, yeah. some of the states had just switched over to to change their drinking laws. So some of that was still there. So you know, not. But a few years ago. You, 18 year olds could drink. Yeah, it was only a couple of years before. So, for maybe most of those cops, they probably for they themselves. It, well, it was 86 when they changed well, it. But Louisiana but was still 18. Louisiana was still 18 when we yeah. were 18. Yeah. yeah, you could go there up until like I think 95. Yeah, or 96. yeah. Was, when we were in college, it changed, I believe. So, and, and so, like for a lot of those cops, they themselves probably were like, you know, this is kind of stupid because I was doing that. Yeah. I was drinking when I was 18. I think this is bullshit. Well, I mean, I remember, you know... True, that's a good point. Working that's up at the point. movie theater, we'd, we'd always be having a good time, watching movies late at night, minding mind our own business. And, and I'd say, you know, once a month, there'd be some cops show up, just randomly see a lot of cars in the movie theater late at night. Yeah. Where's the boot? They'd pull up and basically say, Where, where's the boot? Where's the hooch? First thing. And the worst thing you could do is lie. Yeah. I'd always. I do remember that. So you took out the one visible bottle. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. no, exactly. Nobody was, uh, in, in, at least any in instances where, where I was present, nobody was shit ass drunk already. True. Like it wasn't a situation where they had some teenager stumbling around drunk. Somebody might have had a beer in their hand, but. Sure. I can even remember one occasion where the, the cop actually said, uh, uh, Has anybody started drinking yet? And we had a shitload of stuff, but nobody had started, so he just. Wrote down everybody's name and had us pour it out. Yeah. Uh, I, so in retrospect, as angry as you are, they took your your booze away for your Saturday night. You look at it and you're like, you know, it could have been so much worse. Yeah. Well, the worst part was actually 151 because it had that metal grate, that real like that made it so damn slow. He would make you pour it out. It took like 20 minutes to pour the bottle. <laughs> he would make you pour it out. You were like, <laughs> and we'd ask. I remember one time we asked him, like, can we poke a hole like in this <laughs> to speed it up? No, you, like, you asked him if you could just break it. You're like, can I just break this damn thing? I work here. I've got a broom. I can just sweep it up. He's like, nope. 30 minutes later, glug, glug. almost there. I have, a, uh, I have a friend who's a cop, and I'm not going to say where, but uh, he still kind of holds a little bit to that code. Like, as long as they're not fucked up, he'll do the whole pour it out. 
But while he's pouring it out, he's lecturing to him. You know how lucky you are, right? I mean, I could I could totally bust you right now. Of course, what now, he didn't you know see was after he left, Kane and I donning scuba gear and going down to the sewer. <laughs> Well, see, we used to always kind of like, kind of like Cody said, you would have the visible get throw away bottle for when the cops showed up. You're pouring Correct. it down the sink. You'd, the sink you'd already detached to go back into another <laughs> bottle. And if you, and we if had an engineering wizard. As and a if friend, you were uh, smart, you might actually have a little small throwaway bottle as well, just a little bitty small one. To when he goes, is that all? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Well, and then you're good for behind the ki- behind the concession stand in the movie theater. If you open the ice chest, there was a much like this table, a sea of Zima bottles just hidden under the ice. Uh, <laughs> like they're so idea. clear, There's you couldn't see them. Passageways <laughs> going from the theater across the street. We'll get you, Zima Baron. <laughs> no, you won't. <laughs> well, I broke up the party at the theater, but now all the kids are hanging out in front of the Walgreens. <laughs> Uh, it's been closed for hours. But anyway, I like Officer Dean, and I, uh, I like this this throwback to a simpler yeah. time where you could cut a couple kids loose. Um, as long as they weren't too fucked up and being, and being in danger to themselves. Correct. Well, back in the Blue Torpedo, uh, Joe is understandably bummed out he didn't get to buy the 151. Uh, when from out in his jean pocket, Hubs pulls out another bottle of 151 he swiped from the store. TNCC does not condone shoplifting. We do condone denim jackets with deep pockets. Oh. <laughs> Those denim jackets. It's as if there's some sort of tesseract in it. <laughs> allowing uh, you to just store it's, it's a dimen- vast amount. I, I, I think, again, the memory gets a little hazy after uh, this many podcasts, but I think we maybe have told the story, but if not, real quick, uh, Cody and I, we used to go to land parties where they'd have a lot of beer and we weren't necessarily invited <laughs> or Wanted. Well, in this we instance, we weren't wanted there. I had just broken up with the girl I'd been going out with. It well, more to the point, she broke up with me. Rather, you know, pulling the whole bitch thing like we're done. Uh, but and then it's one of those things where she hadn't really broken up with me, but she got. But she made the mistake but, of letting us fi- find out where she'd be that night. Well, then she said, you know, well, I'm just gonna go. Well, I'm gonna go hang out with some friends out at this land party. Hey, where's that at? Land Man. party. And then we're like, you know what? Well, you know, Kate and I, being the uh, alcohol sleuth that we were, <laughs> we were alcohol sleuths. We are uh, like Scooby Doo. We were the drunk Simon and Simon. Bro, go throw me another Zima the, snack. Somewhere, <laughs> somewhere in this town, there's booze. Bring forth the staff of Raw. Light forth the light. It will shoot the laser out to show us. He picked me up. I had my little Sherlock Holmes hat and pipe. Let's do it. And we Bye, literally, George Cody. we drove around looking. I mean, there's a lot of country out in Central Texas. <laughs> and uh, we, but here's to our credit, and of course, we don't condone this as we down <laughs> many drinks while also driving. Maybe those hey, cops it, it's Texas. You need, you need some road beers, oh. and sure shit. After we're sitting there dri- driving down this country road, bitching like this is taking fucking forever. This is bullshit. It's a land, tossing. It's a land party, and their only clue we had was, it's on a piece of land. <laughs> we're tossing <laughs> Texas. <laughs> we're tossing cans out the window with this person driving behind us. God, this fucking dick is riding our ass. We pull up to the stop sign. We hook a left. Oh, and then the cop decides he'll go right. <laughs> oh shit. They're literally tossing cans at him. And we're Sim- like, oh, no, I remember oh, when we're I was like, looking holy for a crap, party. That was crazy. I cannot believe we didn't get pulled over. Give hey, me hand me another beer. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! That was a close. Hey, what? Is that a fire off in the distance? Immediately, once the cop left, we see this bonfire out in this land. <laughs> so we cruise up, and she sees a Cody. A land party. A land party. She sees Cody. Cody, I didn't think I'd see you here. It's like the Seinfeld. Did you say Cody? I didn't think I'd see you here. Cody, I didn't think I'd see you here. And of course, her her new beau comes up. Hey guys, come on out. We got we got coolers full of beer. College, hey, college guy, right? College guy. Yeah, they had college. He's so guy. happy that they had a styrofoam cooler full of beer. Holy shit! We were like, really? Not for we got long. more in our truck right now. <laughs> but they didn't have a styrofoam cooler full of beer for long. No. We start shoveling beers into our jean jackets with these huge interior pocket systems. They just, I mean, if you easily remember eight, those, it's, easily, like a, it's like a tanky on field that you throw the beer into just, another <laughs> dimension. I mean, the and there, is and after we each are holding like 12 beers on each side, it still magically closes and it looks like we have nothing. And we go back to the car, unload into our cooler. <laughs> Star Labs is going, there's a tanky on disturbance in <laughs> Central Texas. Our uh, metahuman we alerts left like, are going we, off like crazy. I mean, it was full of beer. <laughs> 
for this little styrofoam cooler. But afterwards, it had two beers in it. <laughs> And we're like, well, since we're not wanted here, you know what? You guys have a great night. I like how you two dipshits go back for round two. That's awesome. <laughs> you just couldn't go while the getting was good. Like, now nah, we're going to go back get some more. We knew we were tempting fate, but, I mean. You know. Well. Like Cody said, what did you say? You only live once. Play it. What, did you, what was your quote earlier? You only get one life. Play at your own risk. And if you're asking why the doc wasn't present at the soiree, I was at the Big Bite Hot Dog Place with the Buffalo Chicks. <laughs> <laughs> Big Bob's? Big Bob's Dogs? Um, yeah, it was a great night. Oh. I don't I, I don't imagine, because all I know is like, the next time I saw her, she was twice as pissed at me. <laughs> I think they figured out what we did. Of course yeah. they did. But they Five did. minutes after y'all left, they are probably like, those two assholes took all of your and left. <laughs> and to be honest, I pissed on their hot dog buns. <laughs> I couldn't help myself. You pissed in the cooler. I did that for you. I appreciate it. Uh, well, as soon as he sees that 151 bottle that One word for stole, you guys. Heroes. They don't wear capes. I'm, I'm not going to argue with that. Uh, Joe's face lights up, and Hub says, Joe, you can go off and spank your monkey with your greasy grandpappy, but I'm getting laid. Dude, they're back in business, baby. They're hugging each other. It's party time. You guys ever spank your monkeys with your greasy grandpas? No. Must be a California thing. No. Sounds like a California thing. Something maybe that goes along with the. the maybe thing. that's what a palace bird is queeby is. <laughs> <laughs> Guy who spanks it with his greasy grandpa happy. I have to ask Keith A. Howe, our announcer. He lives out in California. What the, what the hell? What, what's going on with that? Oh, yeah, man. Those guys are all over the place. You don't want to hang out with them. Oh, whoa, whoa. whoa. Hey, you, you get invited out to uh, lunch with a palace bird as queeby and his grandpa. Don't go. Don't, do not go. <laughs> do we. Next time you go oh, out there, near, you know, make, damn near spit Zemo make sure he, he points him out. Told you. Is that one, one over there? That's, him. That's him. That's that guy. That's the PVQ. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, right. The PVQ. Yes. <laughs> well, meanwhile, across town, Tack has arrived at the Hanky residence, uh, where he's trying to convince a real dweeb named Norman Hanky, or as Tack snot rag. calls him Snotrag. Hanky, Snotrag. Uh, Do you admire Tack's perseverance? He's already been knocked off that moving car. <laughs> And tore up his vest. He already called he's, Hanky on the phone and said, Come on, man. I need a ride. He's like, I'm watching Dukes of Hazard. I don't like you. Leave me alone. I just, <laughs> just want to go to sleep. He just goes straight to the guy's house. I mean, Hub and Joe have been driving all over the place, but Tax on foot. He, he has literally traversed like 30 miles today. <laughs> he is he a is... man on a mission. Well, you know why he's been able to do that? Because he stayed hydrated with Ox 45. Uh, speaking of which, you may need another one. Real quick. Uh, Hanky isn't going to, it's not Rag's not going to give him the ride until his mom shows up. I know you know who she is. <laughs> she was in something else that we had. Was it Frogtown? She's popped up in something else yes, we did. Yes, I think so. Uh, but his mom, this is a cute little suburban, chunky mom, shows up. No, you need to go socialize, Norman. Have fun, you two. Don't eat too many hot dogs. <laughs> the fuck does that mean? It's another California thing, I guess. Well, maybe maybe she was used to hang out with the same the spot. With the, with the, the Palos Verde Queebies? Or with no, the Buffalo with the Girls. Yeah, no, oh, the Buffalo Girls. Girl. Bob, Bob's Girl. Big Buns, or yeah. whatever that place was. A lot of hot big dogs ones. over there. Bob's Big Ones. Uh, well, Snot Rag reluctantly says fine, and he, for some reason, has this giant he's muscle got, car. He has, he has like a sweet ass. Dodge. Yeah, I thought it was like a Camaro or something. It yeah, it's was, like a Super Sport. I was like a was Dodge beautiful. Charger or something. And he fires it up, and they're 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 heading to the Frankie Avalon. I was place. like, of course, this guy has this car. Yeah. So as Snot Rag, as Snot Rag and Tack make their way to uh, get their stake their claim in with the hot chicks. So not only does he have a cool muscle car, he lets Tack drive. Well, I think Tack just probably. Made I don't, him I don't think Tack asked. Okay. Tack doesn't have much tact. tact. Uh, uh, I should mention to our listeners now: we are moving on primarily to our second cigars, and we are introducing uh, the Bacardi Gold Rum into our Zima. We're gonna. I, I started with just a, a, a splash. splash. Well, a TNCC splash. <laughs> Get a good 20 count. Uh, we'll see how that plays compared to the old 151 days, which I'll be honest, I don't even remember how that tasted. It's been 20 years. Huh. Uh, It'll all come flooding <laughs> back. You know, they say if you do the same thing in the same order, it, it, all of a sudden, new those memories you've forgotten. Muscle memory, Kim. Oh, God, I remember now. I hate you guys. Oh. Um. Tut some rum. My, no, my undying you. hatred. It all. It, it's all right there. It's much sweeter than one. Uh, one fifty one was pure gasoline. 
Okay. Um, I like it. You're adding more sweetness to the Zima? No, no, no. Well, yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> well, it's not. It's, no, it's not. A, it's not no, it's an a overly sweet rum. Yeah. Not overly sweet. Right. Rum. It's no Captain it's Morgan. It's not Malibu. <laughs> yeah. uh, it, it gives it a different dynamic. I'm missing the smell of suntan oil. What hmm. do you think? I like it. It's not what I remember, but I like it. Maybe that's because I've added more limes. And well, I I, I may have overdone it with the limes. Uh, will, will the option to have rum introduced into your Zima be at the pub, or will you just guys serve Zima straight up only? We don't. We don't have Zima. Good is, man. Is there a reason why you want to have Zima? They because have class. it's limited release, oh. and not on tap. I'm assuming. And if they had it on tap, that would be completely different. Okay. To get a keg of Zima. Um. Actually, I let me know if you do that because I just want to take a picture of the tap wall with the Zima <laughs> on there. Do you guys uh, utilize the bendy straw at the pub? I think not. I think you only no, have the straight it's straws. Straight, which is probably because you don't serve children. Pretty much. That has always been against the law, from what I understand. <laughs> oh, your knowledge of TABC just I know razor lot, sharp. I know about a lot of stuff, Tut. Um. Well, Hubs go. They're back now at the party house, at Laney's house, and he knocks on the door for the second time. And once again, Montrose's hard candy starts up. Only this time, we don't see the cowboy boots. It's a kind of a ugly, bottom. ugly pair of non-painted toenails and some really plain sandals. Some bell-bottom jeans, not form-fitting. Makes its way up to a flannel. Loose, baggy shirt, and then a very plain looking girl who is not Laney. And it, he and Joe kind of look at each other. Yeah, the music does go. <laughs> She's like, What the fuck are you guys? Uh, the homo, what you say? The, the homo sponge bath is two doors down. And they're like, No, it's cool. Uh, the other girl said we should go get some 151. And she's like, Oh, Laney, these two idiots are here for you. Turns out it's um, not Lainey, it's her much more sarcastic and plain-looking best friend, Jill. Good old Jill. Unlike Hubs and Joe, I could never see these two girls hanging out. No. no. Why are they friends? Uh, yeah. They must be like cousins. Uh, well, she's clearly not in the mood to party uh, as Hubs pulls out the 151, but Lainey lets him in. She's going stir-crazy. She needs a fix of booze, drugs, something. So she lets him in. Sex, drugs, and rock and roll. We cut now as T-Rex's Bang a Gong, one of my favorite songs of all time, starts playing. Hubs has a half-empty bottle of Sunny D orange juice that he's pouring the 151 in. Doctor almost talked me into doing that for the show tonight. I he's thought like, maybe if we... What if we just get some Sunny D, giant Sunny D bottles <laughs> and drink straight well, We there. already have a refreshing citrus beverage and, yeah. some, and some limes. The Sunny D may have been too much. Uh, well, they all start chugging, except for Jill, the, the nerd, obviously. She sits across the room reading a book, because, you know, she's different than them. Bitch. <sighs> Intellectual and all that junk. Up North Queeby. <laughs> Up North Queeby. Uh, well, they start comparing concert stories. Laney's stories are all obviously very different as she ends up backstage blowing everybody. Uh, but, you know, Joe gets in his Blue Oyster Cult laser beam uh, story. And uh, he says it was like something out of 2001, A Space Odyssey. And Hubs is reading the room. He can tell the girls are losing interest fast. I love this line. Yeah, it was relacious. Lit up his head like a fucking Christmas tree. But enough about you, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> as the girls go off to the restroom, Hubs explains to Joe, You're blowing it, man. You're blowing it with these chicks. Besides, it's obvious Laney has the hots for me. Of course. In the bathroom, Laney's trying to talk herself into having the hots for Hubs. You know, he kind of looks like Richie Blackmore from Deep Purple. Which isn't really... If you look up Richie Blackmore in his heyday, he wasn't that good looking. He was kind of a creepy looking guy. Uh, she asks Jill, Hey, so what do you think of Joe? <laughs> Jill just laughs, uh, calling him a total whacker. Uh, she doesn't get why Laney wants to spend their last night in L.A. with these total losers. They're probably out in their kitchen pissing in the ice cube trays. Come on, Jill. Give them a little credit, Laney says. <laughs> They're not that lame. They're not that lame. 
cut to the kitchen where Hubs and Joe are giggling <laughs> like schoolgirls as they piss in the ice trays. <laughs> that I can honestly say I never did. <laughs> no, but, but I did seeing laugh. that, I really after wanted to. that, I really wanted to. It's one of my all-time favorite scenes, though. I think we laughed out loud the first time we saw it. Because they're all, what are you doing, dude? <laughs> I did, yeah. I, I, I laughed at it. Remember Tut's wedding shower? <laughs> Damn you, Zima True Serum. <laughs> Yeah, then piss in. Can I borrow somebody's lighter? Thank you, Doctor. Um, I thank Tut, says. You see, this is one of those scenes that Tut said doesn't exist, where these guys are having fun together. No, this is like... One Granted, of- their wings are touching. <laughs> Nothing says friendship like wings you either touching. La- you either laugh or things get weird fast. <laughs> Sometimes uh, a little from column A, a little from column B. <laughs> We've been there, Doc. Yeah. No, there's yeah. about three three or four scenes where the, the actual relationship plays out. Uh, but, man, you you know these guys do this at every single house party they go to. <laughs> um, on the flip side of the coin, uh, Lanny and Jill, like I said, they never have these moments together. They're no. complete opposites. No, yeah, they never yeah. have that. I should mention, uh, Jill, the nerdy one, uh, is didn't really go on to do much. But she is the daughter of Grace Slick of Jefferson Airplane. Okay. Yeah. And uh, Paul Cantor of and, Jefferson Airplane. And looks a lot like... She has a, she yeah. kind of looks like Grace Slick a little Her bit. Her dad was Paul Cantor from the band as well. So the guitar player? Yep. Is that? One that look, kind of looked like Shaggy from Scooby-Doo. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, the doorbell rings. Enter the tack. He's made it. Uh, he shows up with Hanky. Cracks open a new Ox 45 tall as he takes a seat, helps himself in. Again, he has no cooler. He, you never see him with a, any kind of carrying sack. You never see him even with a warm sixer, but he's always got he's one He's always can. got one to crack open. He's always cracking open a new beer. Now, here is where I stopped because they have shown this fucking Ox 45 all over the place. I, I mean, it's like it's almost like product placement. It's in every damn scene. And it's always positioned to where you can see the label. And I was wondering, I was like, I do not remember an Ox 45. They wanted to use Colt 45, but the Colt 45 people said no because they did not want their product used to glamorize underage drinking. So they made up a beer called Ox 45. Well, they they went all out. Because I had, think I tried to find some Ox. They had a lot of, of these. Fucking, they had a lot of these fucking beers made. It, they they really did. I couldn't tell because after I looked it up, I started trying to see whether it was just like a wrapper around a like an Ox uh, yeah. Colt forty five. I couldn't tell it. I couldn't tell whether it was an actual printed bottle or not. Uh, to add to his Pretty appeal, can. the minute Tack plops down and Jill's dad's easy boy and cracks open the Ox forty five, bring on the bitches! Oh god. Uh, what a charmer, huh? Uh, and to add to that thought, when he sees Lainey, uh, he's polite enough to tell her just the sight of her is enough to make him scorch his shorts. <laughs> That's always romantic. Ladies yeah. always love that one. Well, this causes <laughs> Hubs to punch Tack in the face a couple times. That's one of the best <laughs> ones, too. When he gets First, he gets him in the headlock. He's like, Tack, you'll never fucking learn. And you see the slow motion just face punch. <laughs> Punches him in the face, drags him to the front door. As he's leaving, Tack uh, mentions something about the rich boy party in Palos Verdes, the Quibis. Uh And Lainey hears it, and she's all about it. She wants to get out and party. That really rubs Hubs the wrong way. He does not. He's got a good thing going here. He doesn't want to leave. You don't want competition. You don't want to upset the ratio. Well, everybody piles into the blue torpedo and Snot Rag's muscle car, and they head over to the Palos Verdes. I think they leave the torpedo. They all get into to Snot Rag's Oh, do they all get into yeah. Snot Rag's yeah. car? I uh, if I say PV for now, and you guys know I'm talking about Palos Verdes, sure. Uh, they go over to the PV. I'll have to ask uh, Keith A. Howe if that's vernacular used in California. But if I was in California, I was like, "Hey, you want to head down the PV?" That actually is a real place. It's a beach community. They mentioned Torrance. I knew Torrance, uh, but Palos Verdes is like a a, a, a beach community. It's well, all kind of south of the greater LA Hollywood area. Well, just just How close s- to San Diego. No, it's still part of it's still part of the L.A. scene, but it's kind of like the suburbs, kind of okay. like to the south of it along the beach. Real quick, it's kind of a side note, and I should have mentioned it probably before. There's so much just cruising around in this movie, and I really think that's a lost art today. Now with cell phones, you always know where everybody's at. With social media, Facebook, you know what they're doing. 
that that thing of just getting in a car and going to find you your two f- wouldn't have to spend all night looking for that land party today. F- no, yeah, it'd be yeah, on really. Facebook. No, we would know on Twitter in a heartbeat. Somebody would have been like Facebook living the whole thing. Correct. We would have known exactly. And they also, um, when they watched the video, would have seen us <laughs> <laughs> in the background. <laughs> we would have. Oh, we would you Facebook live. <laughs> You know, today's kids would have put it like a photo of themselves. Here's me stealing beers at the party. Yeah, you know? we'd be Facebooking live at like here it is our jean jackets. <laughs> uh, but no, but you know, there's something. Be- a lot of my best memories from high school were just jumping in the car and like trying to find something. Yeah, someone. Oh, cruising was a cruising was a lifestyle. For and us Days of Confused did it very well. Um, but I think this movie does too. Uh, I just think it's a it's something that sucks that that kids won't really ever get to experience again just getting in a car and just trying to find your friends or trying to find something to do i remember having like art like trying to find somebody oh yeah 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 eventually my senior year, i got a pager that helped a little bit uh but still you had to find a pay phone <laughs> no yeah we had to be a little more resourceful back in those days um uh, but yeah it was just i miss it i love jumping in the truck and just like going and just looking looking for something to do and all of a sudden, you'd come across Mincy somewhere. Or I'd bump into Cody somewhere and be like, oh, shit. Where you guys? I mean, that's how you yeah. did it. That's the only way yeah. you had. Hey, to- pull over. Pull over. Pull over. There's, huh? there's, yeah. That'll never exist again. Just driving down the street. Hey, spit on that guy. <laughs> <laughs> it's Kate. Actually, that's how we met. I was rocking in the middle of the street. <laughs> hey, that's a guy from science class. Spit on him. <laughs> Luckily, Cody was driving by himself, and he was really drunk. He was talking to himself. Spit on him. Oh, wait. Can you cack? There's nobody over there. Uh, but yeah, I just a thought I had. Uh, Days and Confused, I think, captures a little bit better because the whole movie is a cruise. Yeah, yeah. The whole movie is just their fleet of cars yeah. constantly circling the town. Uh, I thought that the, like when we were in high school, I mean, did Temple have a scene, a drag scene? Like a legit, because we had like an actual circuit. You went up like Timberland, the main drag, went up around Sonic, back down Timberland. Around the mall, back up Timberland, and just did this one pattern, no, and really. everybody was just like right. It was there. really more blind searching. You knew you had places like like Lions Park would be one potentially. If you're a little more ambitious, maybe Belt and Lake. Places but, where people yeah. would work. Like okay. you know, Cody worked at a burger place with some other of our friends. They might Cinema. be there. I, I don't. I don't know how many times I just cruise up there. You could always like, find us up at the there. movie theater. See, it was weird because like with us, you would have that one main drag, and that's where you would start out until you heard about the party from the Buffalo Girls over at uh, <laughs> Big Bite. And then someone you tells go. me there was a lot of Buffalo Girls at Tut's hometown. That is inaccurate. They were all wonderful people. I'm not questioning their character. Just their giant buffalo butts. <laughs> anyway, just a random thought, but I, 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 I do miss that. I have no clues what kids do today. Uh, the preppy party they arrive at is hosted... I know this guy. ...by the Palos Verdes Queebies. Que- uh, disco music is playing. Play that funky music white boy is blaring through the stereos. Uh, which immediately sets hubs off. Fucking disco. Uh, and it turns out the host, Muldoon, with his massive upper body strength, isn't going to let them in. He lets the chicks in, and then he shoves hubs. And <laughs> hubs is like, man, we're not going to drink your booze, man. We just want to hang out and party. We just want to party, man. I didn't buy a bunch of beer for you fucking burnouts to come in here. All right, you got one. Who is it? Jake Busey. It son is, of Gary Busey. It is Jake Busey, son of... Is this his first movie? It's got to be. Let's see... Yeah, I, th- I mean, it's got to be before Starship Troopers. Yeah, because yeah, I thought, that's, I that's thought Starship was before the first that. One. He might have appeared in a couple other things. Uh, it's a very quick role, but, he, but he, he comes the, across very slimy. Yeah. Isn't that movie yeah. The Frighteners with Michael J. Fox that yeah, might have been was. between the two? Yeah, it might have been right around this. This would have been when he was just getting like cameo stuff. Um, well, he like I said, he lets the girls in, but then he slams the the door on the guys. Uh, well, Hubs and Tack start fighting amongst themselves. If it weren't for you, Tack would be in a titty fest right now. No, and he, poor Hanky, he smacks him in the chest, too. If it weren't for you in this fag, me and Joe be having a titty fest right now. <laughs> poor Hanky. That's a 90s term, people. Uh, yeah, when we say fag and queer, that's the, how they talk. Uh, We're just quoting from the movie. Just quoting from the movie. <laughs> um, until eventually, Hubs and Joe sneak into the backyard. The guzzlers have already removed some planks from the fence. And they're back there huddled around a keg. I was wondering where the keg came from. 
Uh, Obviously, if you're throwing a party, you're not going to leave your keg in the back. Well, there was a, there was a lot of kegs there, but they, I think they gave the guzzlers a keg as like a sacrifice Just to keep them out. You there. stay over here, <laughs> and you can have this keg. Hubs takes one sip of the beer and spits it out. What is this horse piss? Low and brow. Uh, no, Saint Helen's Malt Ale, Rich Boy Beer. <laughs> uh, it says here it's a refreshing citrus beverage. <laughs> horse piss. Horse piss. <laughs> Uh, well, Hub seems kind of content. You know what? I'm just going to hang with the guzzlers. we got a, something other than Ox 45 to drink. But uh, Joe, man, he's not giving up. He wants something different tonight. So he kind of wanders over the house where he looks in a bedroom window, and he sees Lainey slapping the shit out of Muldoon, who's already trying to work his magic on her. Busey style. Busey style. Uh, and he comes in and rescues her, and he promises, hey, you know what? I got some... Was it called Mambo weed? Lumbo. Lumbo. Lumbo? Yeah. I got some Lumbo weed back at the back at the house if you want to back in the Blue Torpedo if you want to Oh, that's right. They do take the muscle car cuz the the Lumbo weed's back in the Blue Torpedo. She's like, "Yeah, why don't you say something sooner?" He's like, "Well, I don't have enough to share, so just you and me, babe." She's like, "Cool." So he Joe makes a move and he takes Laney. So Laney is the filthy opportunistic cock whore. <laughs> or that's really who she is. I that's what her. Did you watch the end credits? It actually said that. <laughs> so she's credited. <laughs> uh, real quick, what'd you guys uh, light up? So Joe and Lainey have headed back from the party. Good time. Uh, what are you guys lighting for your uh, tut? You're doing the intemperance. The intemperance. How's it going with the Zima? It's going great. Uh, it doesn't have the fullness of the uh, knuckle dragger, but it's still just a rich, rich cigar. So it competes very nice with the Zima. I have lit up a Room 101 Payback. Big sucker. 6x60. Would you uh, say that's the big payback? Oh, this is the big payback. Uh, it's a big cigar. It's a Connecticut cigar, which is the opposite side of the spectrum from the Knuckle Dragger. Um, much better pairing with the stronger cigar. Um, I see you're lit up. Uh, Undercrown. Yes. Shade second. Uh, do you agree that the darker cigar worked better with the Zima? I do. Or is that plan okay with you? It's still okay, but I mean, I guess in compared to the like the sweetness from the Zima, that's probably a little bit more overpowering. No, well, the Connecticut's they have that kind of grassiness. They have that kind of um, that unique Connecticut taste, and I I don't know if it's my cup full of lemon limes or the I I will say this uh, real quick. Before I talk about the drink, Doctor, what are you smoking? Hoyo de Monterey. Which Hoyo is de a, Monterey. It's been around forever. It's good. Uh, almost. Not, I mean, still kind of dark shade. Uh, how's that going with the Zima? Good. And, and, of course, I put a, maybe a shot of rum in there, too. So. Okay. I think we all put about... Lighter. You put about a shot in there? Yeah. Lighter. Uh, there you go. Uh, yeah, you know, Zima. Um, I like the rum in the. It, it certainly doesn't have the 151 uh, oomph. We, we also only put a little bit in. Yeah, I'm going to put a little bit more next time and see what that does. For science. Right, for science. That's what this is all about. Anybody else? Uh, everybody good? Good for now. Um, okay. Uh, well, for me, definitely the Knuckle Dragger was the better of the cigars. Uh, the rum does yeah, that. Yeah, once you go to a lighter cigar, it allows more of the refreshing citrus taste in. The, but the rum does add a nice element to it. Uh, I'm curious what more rum will do. Hand me that rum. Rum and cigars is a pretty good combination. Eh, you throw in Zima, how can you go wrong? <laughs> I won't go that far. No, let's see. Um, what are you spraying me with? Rum, so no one will believe your story. <laughs> uh, well, back at the... Uh, well, they're barely down the street, I should say, uh, Laney and Joe, when Officer Dean shows up and breaks up the party. <laughs> uh, see a cop cars swarm in, and uh, Hubs realizes what Joe's done, and he's pissed. He's like, let's get back there. i got to kick Joe's ass. His worm, <laughs> His worming ass. Now, not only has he wormed from Crump's brother and Tack, he's worming from Joe. Or from Hubs. That's why you need to Let's have go these. down the... Tack had planned to worm from Crump's brother. Right. The two guys, Joe and Hubs, find out about it. They they're, worm. they're worming what Tack was going to worm. But then they met younger Crump and wormed off of him. Yeah. That's a side worm. And, and now they're both going to worm off of each other. And now Joe's made the bold move to worm off his best friend. You just you need to have these rules set up before you go out. You call it. Yeah. 
Well, Hubs did call it, and Joe, Joe's Joe's going for it. I think it's a dick move. It is a dick move. Oh, no honor among seventeen-year-olds, eh? <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> Far-fetched. Back at the Frankie Avalon place, uh, Laney seduces Joe by telling him if they sneak into the neighbor's hot tub to smoke the ganj, he can see her in the new bikini that Jill's dad bought her. And what a bikini it is. This uh, is not a 70s bikini. We do the slow pan up her legs <laughs> to the bikini. Does somebody else... Have anything you want to say about the bikini? <laughs> I believe it's a biological condition known as camel toe. <laughs> I didn't want to say it. It's one of the and camel toe it is. It it's is a camel it foot. It's one of the most glaring examples of camel toe I've ever seen. About. Outside of the band, the camel toes. <laughs> is that a real band? <laughs> it was a movie band from. Uh, uh, Laney was not on the Virgin Series album <laughs> cover. <laughs> no. Uh, other than that, she looked great in that thing. She did. As yes. Joe looks up he's at her, and real. as he's looking at her knockers, he's like, Whoa, are those real puka shells? Saves himself there. Um, he's drooling like a like a 17 year uh, old. Slow adult. Uh, or 17 year old, that's better. Uh, we also then do a slow pan up of Joe as he gets undressed <laughs> for the hot tub, <laughs> revealing his white pasty legs and a very worn, faded pair of Ox 45 boxer shorts. I was about this. To, this is where I looked it up because when they said when I they saw went the all the way bowl, with this, I was this. like, "Frack, man! This logo is everywhere, and I've never heard of this." We got to get that for the show. Some box forty fives, yeah, or just some bo- those boxer box shorts. boxers. Um, so uh, just as Joe loads the skank weed into a he crushes beer a, cans crushes it, an ox for, ox forty five can and makes. A I little, mean, I've, I've never seen a this beer can pipe. Yeah, they didn't do that in the pine curtain. Huh? It's a rattlesnake can. Uh, all of a sudden, he's about to light up with her when he gets in a headlock from Hubs, drags him out of the hot tub. You fucking worm. You're blowing it, man. She's not even naked yet. He's not even mad that he got wormed. He's mad that Joe hasn't got her naked yet. And this is, and really mad. And this is actually where one of the, the relationship actually does prove out. I... I let me when show I'm, you how it's done. Exactly. I'm, so Joe's like, she's not like that, man. You got to take it slow. Hubs jumps in the hot tub, immediately grabs her head, shoves it underwater to her his crotch, to which she comes up, of course, laughing. Laughing. You jerk. <laughs> he starts laughing. That is what she's looking for. Hubs. Hubs knows. Hubs knows. Uh, she loves it. Sorry, Joe queer. <laughs> Just keeps rubbing his face. It's a nice term. Uh, well, instead of staying there like some albino cuckold, Joe starts throwing the patio furniture into the pool. He's Acting got, like a ape. He's got to do something. Just starts throwing stuff uh, into the pool. Cock blocking uh, Hub. The game continues. At this point, maybe he's had one too many Ox 45s and he, he, hit, that, <laughs> maybe. he hit that skank when he threw the Ox 45 can. Uh, but you know what? Hubs can't help but get into the party. He starts grabbing tiki statues. They grab a huge table together and throw it in the pool. Uh, just like that, they're best friends again. You worm me, I worm you. Hey, let's have fun. This is what this, I'm talking the, about. This is where the relationship actually Yeah, works. and they're laughing yeah. together. Yeah. Uh, and Lainey's finally loosening up and kind of enjoying these guys. Like, oh, you know what? They're loose, not. She's loosened up already. They're not Richie Blackmore, <laughs> but they're, they're having fun, and she's I getting mean, into it. When you've had that much Ox 45 and some skank weed through it, an Ox 45 it, can. I it mean, beats sitting around reading books with Jill. True. Very true. Uh, well, when the giant bearded homeowner runs outside with a baseball bat, you fucking punks, uh, Joe pushes his ass in the pool. Anybody else think for a second it was maybe Captain Lou Albano? <laughs> it did. <didn't, laughs> it really did. It was. <laughs> But Joe gives Hair it. was a little bit too polished. Hey, did yeah. you see Joe had come up with the, the, his little catchphrase? Bonsai, motherfucker. Doesn't <laughs> it a fool? Uh, and they all race back, half-dressed, uh, back to Jill's house, laughing their asses off. Yeah, he didn't realize that it's the same girls from across the street. Uh, well, they're visiting. No, it's okay. not like they're permanent residents over there. Uh, well, Joe stares hypnotized at Lainey's ass as she makes her way up, up the stairs. So nobody's looking. He slowly makes his way up after as she starts to change. He sneaks up behind her in the bedroom. She's about to take her top off. She sees Joe, and she starts tying it back up. 
Uh, he tries to come on to her very awkwardly, but she's not having. Like, well, he's trying to he's trying to imitate his butt. Yeah, he's trying to imitate hubs. And she's come like, on, let's go for it. She's <laughs> like, what are, you, what are you talking about? Go for what? You know, baby, it. She's like, no, I don't. Uh, I don't want anything to do with you. He's like, come on, baby. Well, a few more little uh, moves by Joe. She's got him in a headlock, hub style. Don't ever touch me again, you queer or whatever. <laughs> and she punches him too. So all of a sudden, she throws him down the ground, and she's got her foot on him to exert dominance. We see Hubs come in, looking down at his buddy, laughing. <laughs> she kicked your ass, man. Way to go, Joe. That's not cool. You have to rub it in like that. Uh, uh, no, he, she, he's supportive. Because she's a little pervert. He wouldn't keep his hands off me. He's all, all right, all right Joe. Joe. That's true. Jill just looks down in disgust. But if you look, there was a subtle thing there where she kind of looked disappointed that Joe was up there trying to put moves. Because her and Joe had kind of been... I don't know. It was very subtle. And by subtle, I mean it probably didn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> uh, back. Yeah, because I totally, I, I totally missed that. You, yeah, yeah I, I could have imagined that. Uh, back at Muldoon's house party, Officer Dean is draining all the Ox 45 tall cans like we talked about earlier <laughs> as he gives a speech to the, gu- gu- the guzzlers. I know what it was like. So, by the way, if we ever start a Tuesday Night Scar Club softball team, we've got to be called the guzzlers. <laughs> well, I think the fact I, uh, that we'll be playing by Chief Wiggum's rules, <laughs> that everyone who reaches first base chugs a beer... Everyone who crosses home plate chugs a beer. We know how to play softball. All odd numbers <laughs> innings will start off with everyone chugging a beer, and the fourth inning is the beer inning. We know hey, how to, we know how to play softball. <laughs> <laughs> is there a podcast line. league we can get in on? I'm sure there like is. Like we're going to play softball. Oh, we could last one inning. Oh, yeah, right. It's the ump who tells him that. All right, each, each person yeah. who reaches first base will chug a beer. <laughs> everyone who crosses home plate will chug a beer. We know how to play softball. All odd numbered innings will start off with every player chugging a beer, and the fourth <laughs> inning is the beer inning. Hey! <laughs> We need to play softball. Uh, Dick, uh, Officer Dean, you guys must think I'm a real butthead. You think when I was your age I didn't want to drink a bunch of beers and piss in somebody's pool? Hell, they used to call me Quick Dick Dean. <laughs> and you hear one of the guzzlers go more like Limp Dick Dean. <laughs> you hear a lot of mumbling by the guzzlers. Uh, well, the deaner cuts them loose, as always. You ever notice when he says that he gets that far away that look far in his away. eyes? Yeah. Like yeah. The, yeah. Hell, they used to call me Hell. Quick Dick Dean. It's they the Uncle Rico me. from Napoleon Dynamite. It's all about the past. It's all about <sighs> the, the glory days. I remember those days. Uh, well, the Diener cuts him loose, and Tack rallies the Guzzler army to follow him to Jill's house and win these chicks over with the, their plethora of no fat chick sweatshirts and an endless sea all of. All we need is some Ox 45, 45. and that chick is ours. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> They, but they're going to have to procure some more oxes because Officer Dean took all their beers. Well, apparently they and can because they, they have never, an endless endless sea. They never run out. Uh, meanwhile, far down PCH at Dirty Doug Strip Club, uh oh, it turns out the bar is no longer a strip club. It's under new management. It's a polka bar. And we know that because we see a polka player fly <laughs> out the front door dead by Crump's brother. Uh, poor bastard with later hose and holding just <laughs> a battered <crumpled> accordion. <laughs> I'm so excited. Look. They've started a poker bar. I've got a new career. Well, and then was, all you see is cue the pan up from the shoes. <laughs> what was the bad guy? <laughs> exactly. It was a pan up, actually. From the accordion to the shoes to the dead poker player. What was the what was the bad guy's name in uh, Highlander? The Kurgan? The Kurgan. Does does the crump kinda remind you of the Kurgan? Crump's brother does kind of remind me of the Kurgan. I never saw him. You Asshole. have not seen the Kur- oh. I mean, Kurgan. The doctor awesome, knows what I'm talking about. No. Dude, Get out. Dude, Chris- Both of you. Christopher Lambert's voice. I just can't do it. But the Kurgan. Is he deaf? Clancy Brown. Is Christopher Lambert deaf? No. Why does he talk like that? Because he's foreign. Oh, he's Dutch? He's Swedish. A Swedish. Same thing. Uh, <laughs> I like it. I like your derogatory attitude towards people from the Netherlands. Oh, it's Dutch. <laughs> what? I got wooden shoes. I'm Dutch. <laughs> what are you? I'm Dutch. I forget you. Uh, well, anyway, uh, he's kicking ass right and left in this polka bar, and he is pissed. He can't believe he came here to see Desiree Gibson strip, and now he's on the hunt. He's been wormed. He looks at Young Crump. Who told, you, who told us to come here? Targets on their backs. Back at Jill's house, Laney and Hubs are finally screwing. Uh, despite Jill threatening Joe 
I'm going to get my neighbors to come kick all you out. Uh, he takes her threat seriously enough where he goes up to the bedroom and interrupts. So first, first inter- I like this move from Joe. He's been in this role before. She's like, you guys need to get the hell out of here. He's like, he's got his ox. He's like, we just need to ride this out. Just got to ride it out. <laughs> <laughs> That you guys would always well, there's say. There's a little moment there where they there's a little moment where they kind of share a little bit and they get a little bit. Well, throughout this closer. thing, Jill and and Joe as the the outcasts are kind of slowly something's happening, but it's very slow and like if you blink you'll miss it. The number twos are yeah. slowly coming together. Um, but he goes upstairs and uh, interrupts the the hump session, which by the way is set beautifully to another hit Blue Oyster Cult song, "Burning for You," which is an awesome song. I'm burning, I'm burning, I'm burning for you. Nothing. Don't Never fear heard that the reaper. <sighs> uh, well, he just Don't stands there watching the them hump for a while. Because this is the first time he's seen her boobs. Which first time we've seen her boobs. Could mesmerize a person for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's a nice. good boob scene. Yeah, they're it's, nice. It's, it's, it's quality. Uh, In the director's cut, he lowers his ox 45 boxers <laughs> and starts spanking it. Well, here's the cool thing. Uh, hubs. <laughs> she's riding. She's or No, she's going down on hubs. He looks over to the door and sees Joe stand there, and instead of saying, fuck, man, get out of here, just the thumbs up. All right. <laughs> I can't read Huzz. Everything I think he's going to zig, he zags. Uh, but that's got to sting a bit, right? He knows Joe wants to be where he is, and he just gives him that <laughs> thumbs up. Uh, no, you support your buddy, man. That's what he's thinking. That that's That like, is his mindset. Like, hey, you're, you're happy for me, right? No, the only reason Joe's up there is because she threatened to kick him out. Correct. Well, when Lainey... He was uh, prepared to ride it out. <laughs> when Lainey and her, her huge knockers see the peeping Tom, she grinds things to a halt. She stops. Uh, he pleads with Hubs uh, to leave before Jill does something drastic down there. But Hub t- <laughs> Hubs tells him, you know what, man? You had your chance with Lainey. You blew it. You're a victim of circumstance. And now you got to do the right thing and jump on the Jill grenade. <laughs> if, if the situations were reversed, I'd do the same thing, man. He would not do the same he thing. He would not. That's bullshit. He would not jump. He would never settle for the situations being reversed. We had honor amongst ourselves. Sometimes I get the idea that the, on the con- Sometimes you jumped on the I get the, the idea that the situation isn't often reversed. Ever. But, but Ever. The, yeah. In his mind, I think Hubs feels like he would. Maybe one night, maybe one night, Joe got the best of the buffalo chicks <laughs> behind the hot dog stand, and like he don't was, knock that, don't knock that. And he was like this to Hubs, and I was like, "All right, but you owe me one. <laughs> you owe me one." Do you uh, see how I didn't make a play on your buffalo chick? <laughs> well, to help calm the situation downstairs, Hubs tosses Joe the big bottle of Schnapster. Hey, man, this will cool things down downstairs. <laughs> they do not give it the day. Uh, we're past that now, but as Joe walks downstairs, he sees he sees Jill, Jill, he sees Jill speed walking out the door, and he runs and chases her. She's running out to the beach, which is right across the street. As she enters the beach, did you guys see the no guzzler sign? No, uh-uh. the beach sign was like high tide, and then there was a no guzzlers <laughs> sign. It was like a silhouette of a dude drinking an ox forty five. Ah, gotta get that sign for the corner. No. Uh, Speaking of the Guzzlers, uh, they're across town breaking into the liquor warehouse. Speaking of the Guzzlers, uh, <laughs> there's one more. I think I, think I can find one in here. Uh, they're breaking into the liquor warehouse. They uh, send Snot Rag in through a upstairs window, yeah. and when he, you hear him crashing and banging around inside. For, when, for when a he, bunch of just, you know... Morons. They are most <laughs> proficient in obtaining... Endless supplies of Ox 45. I envy them. I mean, it's the one thing they're good He's at. like sliding down like Tom Cruise, you know, just ready to get it. I almost want to think that they profile this beer so much as kind of like a fuck you to Colt 45. Like, look at how much your logo That's a could great have been. Point. Like, man, you would have had so many. We would have drank Colt 45 after watching this movie. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I drank it anyway, but, <laughs> but I still would have drank more of it. It would have just been like, hey, you know what? What would help me right now with this movie? Cold 45. Cold 45. At Billy least... D, Billy D style. At least three cases of it. Well, Snot Rag finally came. Thankfully, they didn't because I could have seen us where we're doing an Cold episode 45 of Cold 45. Episode. Oh, we should have aired it. Oh, that would have been great. 
But well, then again, this would only be here for a limited time. That's true. That's true. We, it was the right call. Well, Snot Rag comes out the door finally carrying a, a giant pallet of cans. And they look at him like he's crazy. I'm like, the fuck, man? Those aren't talls. They send him back in. The clock's ticking, man. They've broken and entering. The cops are on their way. Gotta get tall. Yeah, get talls, man. It's kind of like steel reserve. You're not going to waste your can. 12 ounces won't do when they're 12, 16s around. 12 ounce steel. <laughs> nobody's going to. You can't get 24 ounces. Out of your goddamn mind. <laughs> We're on the same page, dog. Because obviously, Ox 45, it tastes good whether it's cold or hot. <laughs> there is no difference in flavor. <laughs> it couldn't have been refrigerated in there? Probably not. I mean. I think with the guzzlers, the idea is it gets you fucked up. That's what they're all yeah, about. Yeah, I don't think the guzzlers are that particular. Except they don't like St. Hel- well, no, they drank St. Helens. Yeah, they did. It was different. Uh, H- Hubs didn't. He spit it out. Horse piss. Back on the beach, uh, Jill kicks Joe square in the nards as hard as she can. Because she can't believe that once again she's stuck with one of Laney's lame-ass rejects. And she actually calls him that. Thank you. I guess. Uh, stinging words. Poor Joe. Uh, Joe asks, you know what? What did Hubs do that was so brilliant? He deserves to get laid, not me. And uh, Jill explains, well, you know, Laney's always gone for the dangerous type, whereas you're more the hazardous type. Right as she says that, he trips backwards and gets encased in like a big pile of seaweed. It's like all in his hair. And, uh, they sit and talk for a while as Joe chugs from the schnap- schnapster jug. Uh, they're both losers in their own way, uh, we learn. Uh, you know, Jill claims, look, I don't want a bunch of burnouts trying to pork her, Laney style, but you can sense there's a real deep insecurity with her and Laney. She she does want attention. She does want guys to try to. And I say Joe her. is Joe's not a loser. He's making the most of the situation. He know he the he he did. It did pass with Laney. That ain't happening. But he's out there with the schnobster. He's making the most of this Friday night. He's trying, and you know what? They're getting to know each other a little bit, and she's warming up to him a little bit. Um, you know what? You're no Laney, but I'm still going after you. So, you know something. You're a pretty smart chick. You look like that chick on the cover of the Librarian Killers album. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Boner Killers album. I think they're more alike than either one of them care to admit. Um, but she gets up to go back to the house. And uh, he gets up. He drank that whole fucking bottle of Schnobster. And as he gets up, he sees the giant blue oyster cold eyeball up in the sky watching it. I want to know more about this concert. It's, <laughs> it's magical powers. Hey, why don't you get Blue Oyster Cold to play at the pub? Are they even alive anymore? Do you like Blue Oyster Cold? We got their bassist. Alive's a relative term. Do you guys like Blue Oyster Cold? We got their keyboard player. Well, we then see the marching line of guzzlers led by Tack, the guzzler army. As they chant... Alcohol. Come on. The more and more Alcohol. I see the okay, that's their mating. Their the mating. More, the more and more I see the guzzlers, the more I'm like, man, I really know these guys. It's like I feel I know. Where do I know them from? Oh right. You're looking in a mirror. <laughs> <laughs> well, we never wore no fat chick sweatshirts. You're not right. gonna get you're not, never you're not gonna those. get the buffalo chicks with that sweatshirt. That's no, mine said please, fat chicks. <laughs> fat chicks please. Fat chicks please. <laughs> Uh, but they literally are approaching Jill's house, just monotonous tone. Alcohol. They're bringing the their their they <laughs> they're offering they're offering to the fine chicks. Uh, it's a unique uh, method of attracting the ladies. Personally, I dig it. Look uh, at the guzzlers as they're approaching <laughs> the mating nest of the fine chicks. They sway in unison. <laughs> uh, their dance is a, it attracts them. <laughs> the guzzlers mating dance. Uh, well, so Jill and Joe see them from across the street, and they decide to head them off at the front door. Uh, the gang immediately starts insulting Jill right off, calling her an oinker, a fat ass. Uh, she doesn't look anything like the chick on the Virgin Killers album, says Tack. Uh, Joe half ass stands up for her. Come on, Tack. I mean, she's not terrible. I wouldn't kick. I wouldn't kick. <laughs> I wouldn't, kick her, I wouldn't kick her out of bed. To which Lanny's like. Yeah. And he tries like hey, I mean she's pretty fine. She's pretty fine. I mean, I'm gonna kick her out of bed. She goes Jill's inside. Like, you fuck her. She goes inside and locks the door and leaves Joe out there to fend for himself. That does not go well. They immediately grab his ass 
drag him down to the ground. Tack gets on top of him. But they're drunk, so Joe's able to defend himself pretty easily. Well, Tack says, looks like you don't have your butt buddy hubs to protect you anymore. But Joe actually frees himself from the two guzzlers holding him. Double fist punches Tack in the balls. Overtakes him and gets on top of him. What the fuck is your malfunction anyway, Tack? You used to be cool, man. You're the worm, Joe. I gotta get laid just like any other dude. You used to be an okay dude, Tack. What the fuck happened to you, man? The music suddenly changes to this. Now, all of a sudden, it is the Saturday afternoon it's a, it's school a, it's special. It's after school special. The soft piano music starts playing. Their the feelings are pouring out of them like Zima. And now, <laughs> and now, Tack, now Tack reveals a little bit about himself. Fine chicks don't even want to talk to me. They all think I'm gross. You think any fine chicks are going to want to talk to a crater face? Your face will clear up one of these days, man, <laughs> Joe says. What am I supposed to do? Wait till I'm 30 to get laid? <laughs> well, Joe, Joe reasons. Maybe you can find a chick with an acne problem, too. <laughs> then you guys got have the something music in common. In the background, like, fuck that. I don't want a chick with zits. I want a fine-ass chick. Then you guys love something in common. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> fuck that noise. Uh, I want fine chicks. To which Joe realizes he's not getting through to him. Clocks tack one more time. Runs past the guzzlers. Jill, open the door. She opens the door for him. As he's running in, one of the guzzlers launches a Joe Montana football pass of an Ox 45 can. Just Gosh, right in the side of his head. A full unopened one. Unopened can. Hits him in the back of the head. Which works out good because he realizes he's once he's inside, oh, I got a beer. <laughs> Cracks that open. <laughs> hey, for a guy that hated this movie, you sure are enjoying Lemons? it a lot. I enjoy y'all's. Lemons perspective into lemonade. of this horrible ass movie. Joe was an opportunist. He turns lemons into Ox 45. He didn't want to go down there and chug the schnobster, but he did it. He got hit in the back of the head with a can of Ox 45. May as well pop this thing, blow the fizz off, and drink it. Well, now, Once again, is the Ox 45 cold? It is a mystery. <laughs> but yet, they drink it happily. Ah, uh, dude, the sweaty guzzler has been walking like two miles from a liquor warehouse with that, those brown boxes. Yeah. Do you need rum or are you going straight? I'm going straight. Well, now it's a full-blown siege movie as the guzzlers surround the entire house <laughs> like zombies. You gotta come out eventually, worm. A bruised and beaten down Which Joe. Which really doesn't make much sense. They they just showed their their you know Mission Impossible skills of getting it. Now they can't break into a house. Well, and they also couldn't, <laughs> they, 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 they could, could get beer out of a warehouse with with obviously security alarm. They could kick Joe's ass. He, he clearly like no. Over- first of all, there's like ten of them, but only two of them get Joe on the ground because the others are all drunk. He's e- easily able to knock them. <laughs> well, off. they're they're not going to waste it because they just opened a can of Ox Forty Five. That's that's. A I would have to set it down or possibly spill it. That's- that is a key. <laughs> you get, doctor, very good point. You're a man of science. These guys are so blitzed at this point, they can't do anything. They've been drinking Ox Forty Five since like for two days straight. When you first see them with their oxes, it's in daylight. When the when the dreadlock guy tells them about the foreign radical chick, they've been drinking. Ox yes, but if you notice in that scene, there is literally like eight stacked cases of Ox Forty Five. <laughs> what, what did these guys do? While everybody else was out, you know, hey man, we got to find some fine chicks. These dudes are drinking eight cases of sweet talk hands. Plus, I like your idea that if they're sitting there like, Joe's a worm, let's kick his ass. Nah, I just opened a can of Ox 45. <laughs> I, I, can't, I can't. have to put it down. I'd have to go over there. I so, I feel like I should, I would just walk up and like, dude, man, what's going on? Dude, this bullshit, man. Hey, you got, you know, we got like talk hands. Oh, yeah, we got lots of talk hands. <laughs> um... So, you wouldn't throw me out of bed, Jill says, as Joe's sitting there drinking his, his warm Ox 45. Am I supposed to be flattered by that? Jill teases him. She's not she's not busting his ball. She's just kind of having some fun with him uh, as he plops down the couch. Uh, we can tell she's warming up to him for some reason, just a little bit. I think at that point... And she I- says at that point, you know what? You can stay here till those losers leave. She's, Hey, man, it beats reading that book. He just took a Knox forty five. I just wanted to know what that for. book was. What is makes it so good? It was uh, probably what Dylan McKay had to keep under the seat of his car. Uh, Some poetry by Bukowski. I Catcher in the Rye. Yeah, it was something. Oh, lame. lame. No, it was something that. That's an IMDb too. It's something else. It's not Catcher in the Rye. Cummings in, in this 
I'm going to have to look it up because it was something else. Uh, I'll know it when I hear it. I think if I had been hit in the head with a beer can, she's like, is that supposed to impress me? I would have been like, you know what? At this point, I really don't give a fuck. <laughs> I'm really... I, I'm drinking a warm Ox 45. I'm bleeding. They, they just hit me in the back of my fucking head. I'm, I'm ble- done. I'm bleeding I'm profusely. Done. But my she's, best friend's upstairs face-fucking your friend. I don't really don't care right I'm now. I'm done. But she just stayed at the hot dog stand with the buffalo chip. <laughs> Uh, Lean, uh, Jill also warns Joe it's probably not a good idea to mix the Ox 45 on top of all that schnapster he drank. But he assures he plays it cool. I can handle it. Can Beer handle before it. liquor. Never get sicker. They, but he's been drinking schnapster beer. Like, I don't know what the race. I don't know what the uh, schnapster before beer. I'm also wondering, like, once again, how old is the bottle of schnapster? <laughs> Uh, well, they- I've pulled it forth. <laughs> Here, drink from it. <laughs> they can't help but laugh as they listen to Laney and Hub screaming out in ecstasy upstairs. They're still going at it. Hell, Jill even agrees to smoke some of Joe's skank weed, and he admits to her it is skank, skank weed. weed. This isn't mumbo weed or whatever. This is yeah, I like weed. that. He tried. He tried to tell. Yeah, my little brother sold me some mumbo. Eh, he tried to tell Janie. He tried to tell Lane. Janie. Laney. Laney. He tried to tell Laney it was lumbo. And then she's like, this is skankweed. He's, he still get high on it. And then he, when it, with Jill, he's like, got yeah. some lumbo. Nah, actually, nah. it's ragweed. <laughs> well, it turns out they have a few other things in common. One, they're both going to be seniors. What? In what? I know Law it's school? A, I know it's a different time. <laughs> I know it's a different time. But we're supposed to believe these guys are 17 years old? Yes. Don't get hung up on that inaccuracy. Hubs is point. clearly in his 30s. Joe is clearly early 20s. Where are you? Uh, no, actually, if you look them up, Tatum was born in 65, so he'd be about 27 or 28. <laughs> and uh, Coppola was born in, like, 69, so he's about 23 or 24. Suspend your sense of disbelief well, at this point in the movie. It's not only that they have in common, but they also, Jill likes to party a little bit more than she let on. She's more about just reading books. She likes to smoke a little weed and have some fun. Uh, but before things get more intimate between the two of them, she gets up. I gotta take a dump. <laughs> That's attractive. That makes you want to hit it. <laughs> she says that to our listeners. I, I didn't. I'm not paraphrasing. She actually tells them, "I gotta take a dump." This is like Zombievers. Uh, chicks She's, only say this when guys write their lines. Perhaps. And suddenly, uh, surprise, surprise! Joe has to hork. It all Everything comes. begins to go wonky. <laughs> We've all been there. Oh, You're fine one minute, and then like, no. oh, <laughs> shit. The TNCC table gets side like, But what I love about this is now it becomes like, oh, God, I got to go anywhere, somewhere. I got to throw up. He can, he manages to hold it for this Dude, the commando action figure seconds. starts talking to me. Don't Good. do it. No. Michael Dukakis <laughs> morphs into Pamela Anderson. Don't do it. Get to the pasture. <laughs> uh, well, dude, he goes... The bathroom. He, he he can't go in the bathroom because she's dumping. He goes into the kitchen sink and the the guzzlers are pressed up against the window. Which I don't understand why. I don't understand still why he can't just hork in the bathroom. But the finally, bathroom. he's like he can't hold it anymore. So he lifts up the cushion on Jill's dad's lazy boy's uh, recliner and just I don't know what he ate. Pea soup. Did they get something at Big Bob's hot dog stand? It's just green. That's that schnapster. <laughs> it is the schnapster. <laughs> It turns into green. a a thick <laughs> porridge material. It was porridgey. It was porridgey. Uh, but man, he just unloads a gallon of schnapster puke on, in the and then just puts the cushion back down on top of it. I've got it. No schnapster before beer. Never fear. But if it's seven years old, you'll puke up mold. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> hey, here's why Joe rocks though. What I, what I he like? He pukes it all up. Grabs that warm Ox 45. Wipes his deal. Swishes it around. Swishes it around. Mouth. He's good to go. It's he, rally time. He, what what I love job. is he good swishes job, his mouth, but he doesn't spit it out. No. Just chugs it back. Can't Joe, get rid of the Ox 45. Joe's down to party, and he can he can roll <laughs> with the variables. He's it's back. rally time. He's back in business, baby. Joe's not that kind of guy. Like, you know, you're all cruising along, and there's four of you, and you're like, let's eat a Jack in the Box. And he's like, nah, I don't eat there. Joe, Joe rolls with the punches. Well, next thing we know, he's lying back down on the couch, and suddenly a very radiant Jill is laying down next to him. 
for the first time in the movie, it looks like she's got makeup on. Like she looks very different. And yes. He said a lot to drink. <laughs> well, this is she's a, getting hotter. Well, this is uh, this is, this is, this is, this is it's getting close to closing time. Joe's <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> Oh, it's I think close to closing time. I got two theories here. I think she either said she had to take a dump as an excuse to go put some makeup on, which granted is a horrible excuse if you want to turn on a dude. How do I sneak away to put some makeup on? Uh, you know what? I gotta go take a dump. <laughs> That's not gonna work. Or she actually did take a dump, and while she was dumping, she was like, "It's the end of the night. It's closing time." I smoked that skank weed. I'm kind of horny. I should probably put a little bit of makeup on. I think that's probably the more realistic. I like my theory. She just got prettier to Joe. <laughs> yeah, but we're seeing her, though. It's not through Joe's eyes. She looked prettier to me. Are they assuming that at the 75-minute mark of this movie, we are seeing the movie if we would through Joe's eyes? <laughs> <laughs> that's true. I had had an enormous amount of schnapps when I got to this point in the movie. Uh, either way, uh, way to go, Joe, huh? Uh, as they chill out listening to Don't Fear the Reaper... Hubs isn't there to call out the pussy song. And they both love the song, by the way. She's a big uh, Don't Fear the Reaper fan. She asks him about that now legendary BOC concert and that Eye in the Sky. What the fuck was that all about anyway, man? He can't articulate it well, but he tells her that when the laser beam hit him, it was proof that there's more to life, or at least some higher power watching him at work. Or something like that. I don't know. Like I said, I was pretty drunk at this point. Uh, Jill calls him, you know what, you're a fucking weirdo. But at least you got something going on on the stairs, unlike those other dicks you hang out with. But before they can go any further, speaking of dicks, Jill smells the puke running out the sides of the Lazy Boy chair, which spoils the mood, obviously. And then Hubs leans over the railing and demands that Joe get upstairs. Well, Hubs, being the best friend that he is has told Lainey it was Joe's birthday so she'd give him a (laughs) blowjob. And guess what? That didn't work. So he told her that Joe's dad used to beat him and he's all messed up inside. And so she's agreed to give him a pity, BJ. That's friendship. And I thought PBJ stood for something else. (laughs) (laughs) I didn't think about that. Uh, That's friendship. That's sweet. Uh, Hubs looks over the railing down and he sees that Jill still has her top on. You're blowing Classic it, Classic Hubs. He gets all pit, like really violently pissed again. What the fuck is this shit, Joe? She still has her top on. What the fuck? Like he's going to look to punch Joe when he sees her, still has her clothes on. You're fucking blowing it, man. And with that, he shoves Joe in the bedroom with the sleeping Laney. And now we have my favorite scene in the entire movie. Uh, and... Honestly, one of my favorite scenes in any movie ever made. Joe flashes back to the monumental BOC concert where the band is up on stage, stock footage of BOC playing, uh, and well into the instrumental 20-minute second half of the song. Uh, Don't Fear the Reaper. Suddenly, the green laser beam hits Joe square in the face. His eyes go cross like Andrew McCarthy with a fly on his nose. Like that, that He goes full-blown. McCarthy. But it, honestly, it is. It's just the green laser. <laughs> they focused it. That guy pointed at him. He's right. They targeted him. Uh, <laughs> he's transported then to a baseball field where he see, broad daylight, where he sees an older version of himself sitting at a table, slowly drinking an Ox 45 and eating a burrito. Old weak Joe at the table drops the can on the table and just starts spilling out. Young Joe then looks over and sees an even older, more wrinkled version of himself lying in a hospital bed, still on the baseball field. He's hooked up to an IV bag of Ox 45. <laughs> Which is all from the final sequence of 2001. If you're not getting this by now, listeners, it is spoofing 2001, the end of 2001, A Space Odyssey. This is scene by scene what happens to Jesus age the astronaut. Dance and becomes the star baby. It's so brilliant, and it's so funny. I forgot how funny the scene was. It truly was. It, uh, it, it made me think on a deep, <laughs> deep level. Well, as, as the Ox 45 spills forth, <laughs> life flowing from you. As, Don't let it go. Drink the Ox 45. <laughs> well, as, as Strauss is uh, Sprock Zara, Zarathustra. Don't let the, the life the escape from you. Yes. Sp- you say it correctly. Thus spake Zarathustra. Strauss Zarathustra. is that. The 2001 theme music yes. everybody knows. As it starts playing... 
we find ourselves in outer space as the giant BOC eyeball looks at a baby version of Joe in this in this in this floating bubble womb. He's got a baby diaper on. He's got baby. He's got a baby diaper on, a bonnet, and he's drinking from a bottle with a nipple with Ox Forty Five on it. Because the Ox Forty Five is life. I'm telling you. Drink the Ox 45. I honestly can't accurately describe the profoundness in the scene. Uh, I actually prefer this to Kubrick. Sounds Ku- like we have a dissenter. I actually prefer this to Kubrick's original version. <laughs> I think this is more brilliant. I love this scene. This, I was laughing the whole you gotta time. You got to understand, this was right around the time when I started getting into more heady, arty films. So I'd just kind of seen 2001. And the fact that this dude was spoofing it so fucking brilliantly with the Ox 45, the cheesy wrinkled makeup. Come on, dude, you didn't like that? I thought it was okay. What a fag. Oh, it was, it was Fag tut. <laughs> Hit him, Mitzi. It was just a spoof. You never man. learn, will you, tut? Bam, <laughs> tut queer. <laughs> it was just a spoof. I mean... <sighs> People would say what we do are just spoofs. I really, really wanted some. I'm not going to say that what we do is Kubrick. I don't think we can play this with with copyright. (laughs) With copyright things. Sorry. Everybody knows that you could sing it though. But good timing though. There's no lyrics. Dun 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 dun. I think that that was a short and slip through. The Rick Rick Flair Flair thing. It is the Ric Flair thing. Correct. Yeah. And Charlotte Da-na. Flair thing. And Charlotte Flair. Can and we get some feather boas in here, please? Da-na. Quickly. But, oh, but Joe is the star baby, and it is... I'm sorry, dude. It is brilliant. Well, I'm glad you liked it. I think we all liked it. I think you're the only one that didn't like it. At this, I didn't like say I, said, I didn't I, like I, it. I just thought when it was, I, when I saw this, average I was at like, best. All of a sudden, my thirst for, for Ox 45 was just unquenchable. Run. Now I do you like I, I do like the anything. analogy that Ox Forty Five is life. Yes, drink it. It at all points Ox in the scene was spilling out. That had this life. That had this. That had to sting the Colt Forty Five guys. This a two thousand one thing. Like he's I drinking. Mean, this could have been us. Like I'm saying, I, I think that just that was just the, the director just saying, "All right, you know what? We're gonna put this fucking Ox Forty Five in every scene possible." Man, the only thing that would, I would be greater have is better if, yet. I know, that's what made me think of it. I was like, I can see Kate just pissed off. You know what? I want to write a 2001... Screw you, Steel Reserve. I want to write a 2001 segment where Ox 45 is life. You won't let me... you have to drink you won't life. let me. You won't let me show you Steel Reserve? <laughs> I'll, show you, I'll show you what's up. What the fuck are they thinking? It's Colt 45! Exactly. It's not like it's Dom Perignon. I think there's, I think there's also another thing here, Tut. When you're a low-budget movie like this, if you're going to invest that much money... In those fake cans and that you yeah. want you want to show it off, yeah. But either way, they made Ox Forty Five a character in this movie, yeah. yeah. And it, it works, really would. and it, it really works is. really really well. That's uh, the one thing that I, you know I definitely tried I mean, not to hold against the movie was the budget. It was obvious this was a low budget film, correct? Uh, but you know that that they, doesn't mean they, this bad. They over they they super shot they shot over their budget in some scenes, and this was one of them. Yeah. Look, yeah. When my Ox Forty Five briefs get here tomorrow, <laughs> those type suckers are not coming <laughs> off. I, I will say this. Uh, Budget-wise, yes, there's some scenes where limited locations, limited acting talent. But for the most part, I thought they made them most of their budget. I thought they, I re- think, I I think think they so. really did well. I, I think so, too. Um, and for you, Well, I think they did the best that they could. And with the resources available at the time. <laughs> uh, I will say this. If a lot of our listeners don't go back and watch... Uh, the films because we tell you the film. Why do you need to watch it? We've we've told you the story. YouTube, I'm sure it's on YouTube. Just the 2001 spoof. It is so worth it. If you know 2001 and you want to see it parodied, kudos to this guy for for, yeah. for going for it. Are you familiar with 2001? Tom? I am definitely familiar. Did you with get? Did you get the reference? Get I, got the, I got the reference. Right, I, Doc, I was thinking the same thing. Like he didn't get it. He didn't get it. I right. got the reference. He thought right. Buffalo Bill should have been involved. <laughs> all right, all right. Hey, brothers in steel. 
Brothers in Steel. I love I love Spielberg's no, 2007. Uh, awesome. Well, this fl- I still rock the death gas. I know this uh, flashback, which uh, by the way, Hobbs looks like the death gas on deal a little bit. Uh, this flashback is uh, what Joe needs to Just push him into doing the right thing. By the way, death gas did a lot better. He's always being watched by that big eye in the sky. So instead of waking up Lainey for the pity head that she promised the uh, hubs he, she would give him, he puts a blanket over her naked body instead. Because he's full of feelings. No, he's like what you guys no, call... He's full of schnapps to ragweed and Oxford. Yes, but he's what you guys called me earlier. Mixed together hero. makes he's a hero. feelings. He's a hero. Dude, she is so fine, and she's laying there naked. I've he, been there. He does the right thing. He puts a blanket over her. Good job, Joe. Good job, Joe. Good job, Ted. Uh, it, but I really, and, I really think the little devil and angel should appear on his shoulder. Do it. Oh, do it. Fuck, her, <laughs> fuck her brains out. Suck her titties. I want hubs on one shoulder. Do it, Joe fag. And on the other shoulder, it's Hanky's mom. Don't eat too many hot dogs. <laughs> he's like, what the fuck is Don't this? Don't touch that girl, you little poopy noodle. <laughs> what the fuck is going on here? I don't even know who this person is. <laughs> <laughs> he never met her. That's why it's so confusing. <laughs> Again, cut. The doc ain't mm. even there. I'm still back at the hot dog stand with the buffalo chicks. <laughs> yeah. No, it's a, that's, a, that's a good call. You could stay there with the buffalo chicks. That one on the far right wasn't that terrible. <laughs> I actually want the one who wants to know about the submarine. She knows something going on. Man. I'm just saying that there's an experience there. You're going to get oil and vinegar involved. Don't we always? I, want, I think we, seriously, we really want it. There's a question mark at the end of this movie. What is a submarine? <laughs> well, we here's, need to write well, here's to the, the director. He Please does tell us what a submarine he is. He does the right thing. He doesn't whip out his little albino wiener and try to get some head. He puts the blanket on her, and what good deed in this world goes unpunished? He goes downstairs to get back with Jill. Hobbs is down on top of her, getting it on with her, and he's like, dude, perfect. I give up. Well, what's funny is that she looks him in the eye and is like, huh? First of all, he's like, what the fuck, man? Hobbs, or Hubs, goes down. As he's watching, Hubs starts undoing her pants. She looks up at Joe and is like, What's up? And now he's really like, I don't I give up. Fuck it. There's not enough Ox 45s in the world to make me understand women. And then what does he do? Sits down next to them, politely. And? <laughs> he's not abandoning Hubs. his buddy. No, Hubs. Dude, get off her, man. She ain't like that. Hubs is like, uh, she came on to me, bro. I'm going to need 50 more Ox 45s <laughs> to try to figure out this crazy shit. No, 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 no. None of the cold stuff. Bring me the hot. No. <laughs> at this point, I'm bubbling over with animosity. <laughs> this was, this was Tut style back in the day. I can, I can. Women are strange creatures, aren't they? I can relate to Joe at this one. Tell because. Us. Similar story? Yeah. Life. You were into a girl. You went slow when she wanted to go fast and she screwed your best friend. Not best I'm, friend. I'm thinking no. Tut found himself in a situation <laughs> where the Ox 45 spills over. No, no. Life. Were you in a situation away. where you were like, we just got to ride the wave out. We just got to ride the wave, man. You were just running ride the wave. No, no. Well, I've definitely been in that position, too. But just to the point where you're just like, nah, that figures. But like Joe, I would Did just. Did Travis sit, Tritt screw your girlfriend? I would just <laughs> sit down on the stage and just pop another Ox 45. Ride this out. U-L-B-L-E. Sometimes, Todd, that's all you got to do, man. <laughs> hey, you're just riding it out. Riding it out, man. I like it. I like it, too. It's a thin line between, you know what, buddies? Step aside and let your buddy have, have his moment. There's but a- you got to have rules before you go out. I've been in situations with these fuckers where there were no rules laid out. Okay, so... Guys okay. almost went home in body bags. <laughs> <laughs> obviously, obviously, this is a humorous uh, bent. Uh, considering we go back to high school, maybe it was circumstance or whatever. I didn't know she was your sister. <laughs> That's not what I was going to say. We can delve into that later. I was going to say that... Say it. Say it. <laughs> say it. The dog right. has a family. <laughs> Really? He has a sister? He has a sister? 
I only said that to set you up yeah. for the. He has I, a family. I tried to be pointed, Tut. No, no, no. Go, go on, Doug. All of us that were friends back then, whether it was circumstance or not, there was never any sort of competition for the same girls. Granted, that's because I was over with the Buffalo chicks, and you guys weren't <laughs> interested. But you know that. There was never any that that never. We, I don't, we, I don't know if it was the way that events turned out, but there was never. Uh, we knew Arby's was your turf. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna drink my Zima and rum and leave it be. Uh, actually, there there were some some there were some tense moments between friends. I should point out to all of our lady listeners, the doc, much as it may surprise you to know this, was not what you would call a ladies' man during his high school days. What? That happened later in life, Tut. Later oh, okay. in life. Yes, right. not in my high school days. I'm really just more surprised that the doctor has family. I <laughs> thought he sprang forth from the waves as a gift from Poseidon. I only had... Oh, that's, that is true, my that's friend. That's high praise. That is true. That's high praise, doc. The god of the sea. I had uh, a, uh, one day I will go back to the I stadium. only had one friend that I had to compete against. I thought you were going to go, I only had one friend. I was like, Jesus, Tut. No, no, no. Right. Hey, you got us now. Once I, again, the main ingredient in all booze is water. <laughs> back to the sea. <laughs> from the sea we have come and from the sea we will go back to. Uh, well, yeah, with, without getting into details, uh, th- there there were worm moments in our, in our travels. Yeah, it's growing up. Was. Who doesn't have that? Yeah, it's part of going I was asking, really. It wasn't a rhetorical question. Who doesn't have that? Our worm moments ended in Yak Boy buying a knife at a convenience store and declaring uh, a blood trial. A it, yeehaw. It, it was... It, Listen, if they had played the Shatner music, it would have been all I over. just meant between dun, the three dun, dun, of us. Dun, dun, oh, no, 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 Of course not. We would never do that. Considering we were, we were Joe Hubs type buddies. Well, this is the reason we're still friends. We would never, ever, ever, ever step on any any toes, any wieners. The minute anybody shows a sign of interest, you're 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 out. You're out. You're out. That's the right way to. That's the way. That is the right way to do things. There were those other snails that didn't see things that way. This movie. But that's how you could judge who your friends were. Well, guess what? Those guys aren't friends anymore. Exactly. Exactly. Um, Crom laughs at your friends. Crom laughs at your <laughs> Crom laughs at your four Crom friends. laughs at your worming friends. Um, Crom laughs at your four worms. But but dude, it was certainly it was certainly an element that was there. There are some dudes that will just break every code in the book to get their carrot wet. And uh, I I, the, I and no friend like the fr- it didn't matter whether whether you knew them or they're friends with somebody. It didn't matter when it was when pussy was that 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 trumped everything else. And they burn bridges that will never be rebuilt. Sadly, I... I have uh, to cry now. <laughs> after, <laughs> af- after college, uh, hanging out with people I didn't go to high school with for, for a little while there, when I was... Uh, uh, well, still live in the same area, but uh, I saw the same behavior from... You know, I, I think... Not to ramble, but we'll all excuse to some extent things that guys will do when they're 17, 18. I, I saw... 36. Well, I saw a lot of the same behavior between college-educated guys in their late 20s pushing 30 that were still the same way. It was it was game on. Okay. Uh, yeah, you can be my friend, but once women enter the picture, all bets are off. And yeah. not, not being that way myself, I had a hard time coping with that. Well, uh, I know, did have some instances with that without wanting to recount it that occurred. Uh, well, sure. Uh, you know what? It, 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 God, I hate this term, but I'm going to use it because it, it is something that you hear about, the bro code. Uh, that's something certainly we would never call it. No. Uh, we just call it being a man, being a yeah. friend. Or more importantly, being a friend. Being a friend. Um, uh, I think one of the reasons why... You know, well, I'm going to include Tutnus because, you know, he's been in here for a, a good stretch now. But, you know, especially us going back to high school, um, you know, there, there was never any. Uh, dude, the minute somebody showed an interest in a girl, you just just back away and, and you would never think about worming anybody's chips. Yeah. Which is, I think, kind of why I like this movie because it was such a, a foreign concept. These, these friends worming chicks from one another. Like, I, I didn't know that. 
So I wonder if Melkonian was a I'd, child of the 70s and, and these kind of terms made more sense to him. Maybe. He's, yeah, I think he's older. I think he's 56 now, so he's, he's that, way older that than would us. put him right in a graduate of high school in the late 70s. Yeah, he's, he's, I think it was a freer time. Chicks were freer. You know, it's pre-AIDS. You could you could yeah. have a lot of fun. Uh, but uh, but yeah, you never you never warm somebody's chicks, ever ever. Damn you, AIDS! Damn you, AIDS! If it weren't for AIDS, I'd be warming all your chicks. <laughs> Especially well, you two. So so does true colors. After <laughs> exactly. trying to talk about Zima is the truth. Back serum. then you backed oh. up. Now it only We're takes twenty AIDS. years to find out the truth. <laughs> of course not. Nobody's warming anybody's chicks here, but you know what? I, I I think it's I think it's interesting. And without going into details, there was one incident where we, one of us got wormed big time. And if he wants to speak up on it, that's okay. But I really appreciate the way that he responded to it, which was buying a knife and saying "fuck <laughs> you." Nobody's warming my chicks. I'll kill your fucking ass. And I was like, that's the anti Joe. That's like, that's the crump. That's the Rambo. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck the world. <laughs> Fuck the worm. I'm going to win this time. Uh, but you know what? Then your friends step up and be like, "Dude, come on, man. Any chick that's gonna get wormed that easily ain't worth being upset about." And they, I love movies like this that show those little moments between friends. This one, not so much. Days and Confused did it better. They showed friends talking to each other and like calming each other down, and like, hey, man. They did it really well. We're like, context. We're in high school. Yeah. Take a step back. It's going to be okay. What you think is huge now ain't going to be huge after yeah. that Aerosmith concert. <laughs> Days and Confused did that very well. And Days and Confused, I, I know you said, we said, me and Yaks, like, this is so much better than Days and It's not better. It's it's a different take on the same story. The cover of Stoned Age across it the has top a quote. says... Better than dazed and confused. Yeah, but Matt, do you know Matt that you can, you can you can pay it? I mean, <laughs> his basement. Like, like I, have no, I have well, no it context. Says dot dot dot. Better than dazed and confused. Dot dot dot. In other words, once again, they thought it was going to be better than dazed and confused, but, no, but instead it was a giant dog that's turd. The, that's the actual quote. They thought it was better. Find they somebody, dot you dot dot. Find somebody they to pay him to make any kind of quote like that. Correct. But the fact is, we've been wormed, and it was messy. It wasn't. Oh yeah. It yeah, wasn't yeah, because yeah. because my theory, the friendship wasn't there. Like Joe and Hubs worming each other back and forth. You smell a rat, and you smell a, a guy who's just out for himself. Yeah. And if you're gonna put pussy ahead of friendship, well, then there really is no I, friendship. I so I so go back to that one line. With Joe, just gotta ride it out. Like I mean, he, he knows the rules. He, he's not. He's not. Yeah, he's upset that he's not up there with Laney, but he, he's not bitter. He's not pissed. He's not gonna fight with Hubs about it. He just understands this is the way the game is played, and you know, what's one roll thing with it? What's one thing to ride out after you gotten beat out by a buddy, and you're like, all right, I'm backing off. You have you get you won this. It's another thing to ride it out when the girl that you were scamming on. Suddenly, that fucker is down there porking her. Fuck you, Travis Tritt. Fuck you, Travis. <laughs> no, 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 I'm joking. <laughs> you Pushing spell daisies by midnight. You spell skank S K A N K. All right, well, you know we we've all had experiences with bad friends. I think that's what it comes down to: bad friends. Bad friends. Agreed. They call it, they they think they know the word friend, but in fact they do not. I got I got a stack of those. I got a stack of bad friends. They're horrible. They don't know what being a friend means. Why are you looking at me when you say that? <laughs> Doc, I was not addressing him, sorry. He was looking at kid. kid. Well, all this right all this me. between <laughs> right in front of you. between Hubs screwing Jill and he wasn't screwing her. He was almost about to screw her. Uh Joe like what the fuck? I left her, I thought I'd do the right thing with Lainey, and then I come down and she's like all into. The, but again, it was that look. His head from, is spinning. It was that look from Jill that was like, uh, uh. Dude, that look she gives him is what would 
There's not enough Ox 45 tall cans <laughs> in the world to get me to sleep. Yeah, good there are. Night. They're outside with the guzzlers. You <laughs> just Actually, walk outside yeah. and join up with those dudes. Yeah. Well, we're about mm. to... Th- those, those, those cans are about to be free range because here's what's going to happen. All this is cut short by a ruckus outside as finally Crump's brother has arrived to claim his chicks. And he tosses all the guzzlers to the side and begins kicking down the door. The front door of the house. Like, literally kicking it down. Like, his steel-toed boot is going through the door. The noble hubs wants to bail. Dude, fuck these chicks. Let's go. He got his dick wet. He doesn't care. Doctor style. But Joe... I wish. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know it's true. But Joe insists yeah, they stay and true. protect the chicks. <laughs> The boys grab fireplace pokers and shovels from the fireplace to beat off uh, br- uh, Crump's brother as he comes in. Who else thinks that this is nuts, though? The whole idea, the premise of the film that Crump saw the chicks first, when he sticks his head through that door like Jack Nicholson in The Shining, <laughs> he's he's so berserk. Where's my fucking my chicks, man? He's going crazy. And Jill's like, I've never seen this guy before. Doesn't matter. He saw you. He saw you. <laughs> that's like horror movie. That's like, Mambo that's like style. no, it's like it follows. Yeah. It found you. <laughs> but dude, are, am I the only one that went him to stick his head to the door? Like, here's Crump's brother. Here's Crump's brother. <laughs> exactly. Like, <laughs> smack with the fucking shovel. Swack. Well, that's pretty much what Joe does. But anyway, all work and no ox. Forty five. Make Crump's brother go something something. <laughs> well, he swears he's gonna kill their worm and asses, and he grabs Hubs through the door in a headlock and is choking him. To which Joe comes in with the shovel and smacks him in the head and sends him flying back through the door. Good thing Joe was a good aim. Uh, Hubs lights. They they retreat back to the kitchen to get some air before it all. Well, hell, I like the fact that the tearing loose. the door down literally just <laughs> ripping no, it dude, apart. He'll be in here any second now, and they go in and Let they light up cigarettes. Let me light up, light up, up that cigarette. That was cool intense. Let's cover. take a five minute break while he finishes there's breaking been, down. There's this been one fifty one door forty five schnapster and skank wheat. That's as far as they can run. You got to admit though, as a cigarette smoker. Your yeah, first no, no, no. I immediately knew exactly <laughs> dude, what they did. Dude, your immediate thought is like, all right, the guy's breaking that door. He's about to snap my neck. <laughs> <laughs> I completely understood. I was like, I'm not going to be a stand it. I am not going to be a. You got to go out there. You got to light that cigarette, and you got to go run ballot out there with the smoke and flame. Now, <laughs> like, I am ready. I am, I am not, centered and focused. I am and I'm not gonna beat the shit out of this dude. I am not going to be a paraplegic. Who has a cigarette craving? I'm smoking now. <laughs> he even says he's like, "Oh man, Crump's brother's gonna go our ass." Like, now nah, we kind of had it coming though, didn't we? Well, no. He <laughs> says, "Hey," he says, "Hey, if we're gonna die, at least it was worth it." And he points up to the upstairs where Lainey was. <laughs> Meanwhile, Joe's like, "Fuck Joe, you!" No, no. Joe's like, mm, "Yeah, that was great." <laughs> Hubs immediately knows, "You fucking fag! You didn't even fuck her." <laughs> punches, punches Joe. I had to kick your ass myself before Crump gets in here. He's like, well, man, the timing wasn't right. Well, yeah, she was sleeping. <laughs> I'm not Bill Cosby. Uh, Hubs knows instantly uh, Joe didn't go for it. He's super pissed. Before he can beat Joe's ass himself, they hear a loud commotion outside. But do you see Jill at this point? No, no. Jill's She's, like looking at him going... Oh, no, yeah, no, Jill... What? Jill does give a look towards Joe like, oh, What? You, you didn't? You didn't slap your limp albino <laughs> dick in Lainey's mouth. <laughs> Slow <laughs> clap. <laughs> even though I was about to let your buddy Hubs date rape me into the couch. <laughs> I have I have misjudged you. Dude, the slow clap police at this point are like, I don't know what a slow clap is anymore. <laughs> This is the most awkward situation ever. <laughs> well, uh, before uh, Hubs can beat Joe's ass, because he's pissed that he didn't get a blowjob. Yeah, he's asleep. resigned to it, though. He's smoking a cigarette. Ah, I should kick yeah. your ass myself, but i got to smoke a small bro red first. They run out because they hear the commotion. They run out to the front window, and they, see Jill's, reds right now they see Jill's elderly dad kicking everybody's ass. It is just a... Just a Dude, like, what's his name from Air- Airplane just comes in there? Just <laughs> it is! Oh, he it's, Robert, it's Robert Stack. <laughs> you Airplane. literally see him just smack dudes' heads Dude, together. Well, first of all, he punches uh, Crump's brother, who's the big badass. Bum. He drops like a sack of rocks. He 
kicks a bunch of other oh. guzzlers in the balls. I just and then he, them. then he grabs Tack and Hanky, headbutts them together, and drops them to the stage. And it's all, they're, they're so stoned at Ox 45, they're kind of like waiting in like an assembly line. <laughs> yeah, they're just, they're just so kicking like, their ass kit. Here we go. He's <laughs> just one at a time, just pounding But dude, ass. Jill, the race force, don't resist or you'll Jesus, spill the Ox 45. <laughs> but dude, Jill, Joe, and, and. Take your beating. Jill, Joe, and Hubs are watching inside, and they're jumping for joy like, holy shit, Jill's dad saved our asses. Isn't hub- it's some old dude, and he's kicking ass. It's an old guy, and he's kicking ass. <laughs> well, Dad barges in the house then and puts the chain lock on the door. On the door that that'll break it down. That'll help. The door that's yeah, just like half of it. You can crawl out of it quite easily. <laughs> and he demands to know, what are you guys doing with my daughter? Hey, man, Hub says, these are our chicks. <laughs> <laughs> Jill swears they didn't do anything, just as uh, Laney saunters down the stairs wearing only Hub's flannel shirt. Josie's an opportunity. Yeah, man. She didn't even blow me. <laughs> that does not go over well with what? Jill's dad. He grabs Joe and just starts beating the shit out of him. Hubs runs upstairs, jumps out a window, Texas Chainsaw Massacre style. <laughs> he didn't even look like two-story window. He, no, just, he just jumps. Plate glass, glass window. Hey, doesn't matter. Hey, but we got to adopt this. Whenever they do something crazy, they do that. <laughs> I always wondered what they were next saying. Time, next 20 time. feet to the concrete, doesn't matter. Oh! Next time we're at the pub and not as like, Kate, it's time to close out your tab. <laughs> <laughs> dude, he jumps out a two-story window, lands on a hood of a car, bounces off. Totally dude, fine, no scrape. Joe is not that lucky. Lights up another cigarette. Dude, Jill's, <laughs> Jill's dad... Gets, Tackles his ass. No, and gets him in another... Dude, these guys love headlocks. Gets him another headlock. Well, uh, hold on. You're going to learn. Oh, oh, this is what he says to uh, when he's got uh, Joe in the headlock. You're going to learn not to mess with another guy's girl. Dude, this guy's in his... Really weird. This is this disturbing. He's in his 60s. So you, I don't know. Like, Remember he it, bought that puka shell He pulls the Virgin for Killers him. album out of his jacket. <laughs> <laughs> Put this on the turntable. Put this on. It's my favorite record. Uh well, he drags it Joe downstairs in a headlock, throws him in a chair with the other girls, and calls the police. Um, uh, despite Jill's pleading with him, please, Dad, chill out, just don't do this. But no, he doesn't listen. Dad needs to make a drink. He's fired up. He needs a drink. Bourbon and ice. This is my one problem with this movie. Jill's dad get goes to the kitchen to make a scotch and ice. What a scotch and ice? Joe could have ran out the front door right then. He sits there. He sits there like a stool pigeon. He's noble. He could have gone again. Schnapster, Ox Forty Five, <laughs> Ragweed. His brain hey. is not working hey, correctly. Doc, it's, that's what we would be doing, Joe. Right now, his his doctor. What is Joe's brain doing at this point? You know what? I'm going to quote another doctor that you're going to understand. Dr. Hoffman. Joe's muscles will be totally useless to him right now. It's a Halloween 4 reference for you guys that don't. It, it's true. He can't go but anyway. He's, he's also, state troopers the he's also he's, thinking, you know what? If I try to run. He drank 36 on 45. He's at the Schnapster and Skankwe. Joe couldn't possibly form a medical theory to run. The whole the time I'm like, he leaves the go to the kitchen to make a drink. Joe, the door is there. Run. The Guzman and Trump's brother have all the shit kicked out of you. You're home free. Could he have run? This man just went through 36 <laughs> guzzlers like nobody's business. <laughs> like so much wet cardboard. Get out of my way, losers. <laughs> he did tear apart the guzzlers. They were their worst army ever. So what's, what's Joe going to do? Run down the street? This man is apparently the Terminator. He could have just kept running at a no, steady pace. That, that thought doesn't even occur to Joe. Like, I could run for it right now. It's like, I've had 18 Ox 45s. Dude, I've been drinking Ox 45s for 48 hours. I've been drinking There's skank no weed. There's going to escape this man. I smoked oh, skank weed out of an Ox 45 can. I think I had some of that St. Helens Mald Ale at the Muldoon's place. <laughs> I, I'm toast. The only reason I turned down that BJ is because my dick like, couldn't get hard. He's like Javier Bardem in No Country for Old Men. He's just going to be coming for him. You can't escape me. That might be a good call on his part. 
Maybe he wasn't a hero putting that blanket over Lanny. He <laughs> couldn't get his dick hard. He's been point, drinking for two days. The, the point of thing of putting the shirt over was, uh, I just can't get it off. <laughs> It'd be funny if they showed him trying. Like he's like sitting, he's like, God damn, Alex, what are you Like Dirt Diggler, like, Dirt come, Diggler. On, yeah. come on, come on, come on. All right. Well, once the cops are called, Dad makes himself a stiff drink. Remember the boys pissing in the ice tray? You already see the yellow cubes. Does anybody it, like how Dad has a little half pint in his jacket? <laughs> yeah, no. Like, he well, I love, well, I love the fact that he's tweet. like wearing like this college sweater, <laughs> like. I actually looked him up on IMDb to see if that was a throwback. Like, was he in Animal House or like, what is that C? The C? No, just not, something. Not, it was just he was at his college bar, uh, reunion or whatever. But dude, I think that is a very valid point. Joe's toast. He can't do anything. But when he comes back with that glass of ice, we forgot about it. They pissed in that ice tray. He's but drinking, Joe knows. He's drinking scotch and piss. You see it in his face. He yeah. knows. No, 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 no. Joe holds it together there. But when the dad sits down in the Lazy Boy and the puke squirts out Makes over the sides of the kid. <laughs> Dude, even Joe's like, ah, that was me. I did that. <laughs> I got the feeling like Joe and Hubs have pissed in 40 <laughs> ice trays since the first time it came to fruition. Like he's sitting there, like hey, finally, man, dude. Finally, every we time got we it. go to somebody's house, <laughs> it's pissing their ice trays. <laughs> I've been pissing in ice trays for five years, and finally we got somebody to drink it. <laughs> Hubs, it was your grandmother's funeral. He's there, all giggling, <laughs> pissing in the ice trays. <laughs> uh, you drink, you drink uh, piss cubes. Well, Dad scolds the girls for giving it up to these long-haired hoodlums. Jill. I can see you doing it. You're not as pretty as the other girls. That's his daughter. Wow. But Lainey, you could have had it all. You could have had me. Guess what? My my superb physique. (laughs) Guess what? You saw me crush those guzzlers out. Actually, you know what? If I was Lainey, I'd be like, he is pretty badass. He kicked like 20 dudes' asses. He just kicked Crump's brother's Brother's ass. ass. (laughs) Do you know whose brother that was? Crump's. That dude's putting Samoans and tractions up and down the PCH, and fucking your dad took him out. Do you know who my brother is? Well, you're Crump's brother, so I assume you're Crump's. Actually, then I would brag about it. You don't have a name. Don't have a name. Your name is Crump's brother. I assume your brother's Crump. Well, Joe's had enough. Uh, what about that bikini you bought, Lenny, so you could sit by the pool sporting wood, he says. I love the phrase. He was sport up wood. there, wood. state and truth. Dude, the girls are loving it. Seeing the dad in the hot seat and Joe, yeah. Joe standing up for himself. Dude, the He's dad. The got dude, that face, man. Dude, you just freezing on dude, it. Dude, the dad stammers. Uh, those are real puka shells. That's the only reason I bought it for. Right, yeah. The right. only guy who gives a damn about puka shells is him. <laughs> <laughs> You, you puka shell I was real close to wearing my puka shell necklace tonight. You make me sick. <laughs> <laughs> you You'll never learn, will you, Tut? <laughs> you tub of crap. <laughs> Wait a second. Are puka shells not cool? But no. Oh, no, no yeah, not. I hate them. No. They're horrible. No, I hate them. They're, they're awesome. But, dude, I love that line of his. I only bought that because of the puka shells. <laughs> I want more of these puka shells. I'm sorry. We're so We're all out of puka shells. Everybody wanted it for their swimsuits. So Dad goes on the defensive, blaming heavy metal music for all this nonsense. But Joe isn't having it. He grabs a random... Curse you, Blue dude, Oyster Cult. Dude, Joe your is... heavy metal music. Joe is having his moan. He grabs a random Ox 45. They're just laying around everywhere. Because, I mean, I, it would have been better if he just held on his hand and flew <laughs> into it. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that would have been much better. But just no, it's like Luke's lightsaber. Luke, Luke, Luke's 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 hand Let me tell you something. <laughs> Look, man, go ahead. Can send re- me to. Can we redo that scene where it's his father in the background? <laughs> Joe's hanging upside down. He reaches out. Ox 45 flows into his hand. That'd be sweet. Dude, Joe says, go ahead. Send me to Juvie. I don't give a fuck, man. But that ain't going to happen because then, just then, we see Hubs in the, back- in the background. Now it's, the, it's the opposite of him diving out the window. He's throwing stuff through the window. Ugh. Dude, he's got a beach umbrella. Spears it through the back window. Came back for his buddy. Came back for his buddy. Clears out all the glass. Joe, dog, go for it, dude. Go for it, dude. Joe gives Dad a gut punch and then runs out and, and they're free. He rescued his buddy. And I, lo- I love the minor insult to injury. The door's been kicked in. The back window's been broken. But as Joe jumps out, what does he do? 
He hurls his Ox 45 kit back into the dude's living room. <laughs> like hey. the perfect missile. <laughs> but, dude, you touched on something much more important, Doctor. He came back for his dude. Came back, man. Came we back saw him. Hubs earlier jump out that window. He is clear sailing. He could get out of there. He came back for Joe. Joe's his boy, man. He's coming back for him. That's why they're friends. Mm-hmm. But I do love that. I do love that Ox Forty Five can toss. Back <laughs> he just in throws there. it back. Fuck you here. Take this. Uh, well, Joe socks dad in the uh, Joe socks dad in the gut, and he's out of there. The dudes, uh, Joe and Hubs, as they're running away, they stop in the front yard to soak in the carnage that is the guzzlers. Oh, dude, just these scared. guys, twenty men, just like Braveheart. They're, like, they're all in the front. It's, like, it's, like, like, the front. Gone, it's like, like the Gone with the Wind scene. They're, they're just <laughs> past, They're like, like beat out, and they're like just laying on hedges. Dude, they're all just fucking laid out in the front lawn. It's like, was it worth it, Tack? Tack offers up one last, <laughs> fuck you, worms, to which Hubs just stomps on his chest. <laughs> It would have been more sweet had they just like grabbed like a case of Ox 45 and just take it. Fuck you, man. Well, guess what? Officer Dean shows up. Some of them were beaten up. Some of them were just passed out. They're just drunk. (laughs) Officer Dean shows up to shut down the shit show. Uh, Before they can bail, Jill appears around the corner and she tells Joe that she'll be back in town at some point and she'd like to hang out. She wants to know why he didn't make a move on her also. To which he says, you know what? I was, I was working at slow. I was working up to it. And to prove his point, he grabs that fucking ass and squeezes it and then starts sucking her face in. Classic. Joe. Classic Joe. Way to go, Joe fag. As Joe and Hubs find safety in the blue torpedo, Officer Dean is giving his last speech of the night. I'll bet you guys think I'm a real butthead. You think I didn't want to sneak into a hot girl's house when I was your age? They used to call me Doggy Door Dean. I was a good second floor man. Second floor man. Second floor man too. Doctor style. <laughs> Real quick, uh, as we leave uh, Doggy Door Dean. Good the second, second floor window, man. man. Uh, I think we're all, with the exception of Todd, drinking rum now with her 151. That's the way to go. I, I think that's the way to go. Huh? Run with our Zima. What did I say? Run with our 151. That was hopeful thinking. That was. I was drifting back to the a happier time when. We could <laughs> For a second there, I thought you said Thorazine, and I was like, "What are you guys talking <laughs> over there?" What I do? What, what, what I say? With our Zima, it turned into Thorazine. Yeah. See, that's what I'm telling you. That Ox 45. Uh, for me, the follow-up cigar did not work as well. Zeman needed the kick-ass balls of the knuckle dragger. Yeah, yeah. Agreed. Agreed. I go along with that. Yeah. How'd that Hoya de Monterey treat you? It's not bad at all. What in the knuckle dragger? A sixty ring gauge Connecticut. Uh, it's it, by its nature, it's it's a big cigar. I thought maybe it could handle. Uh, Roman Zima, it can't. See, you guys would know. You guys would know this better than me. I'm thinking Connecticut with Zima, no good. I think you got to get a potent cigar. Honestly, I didn't know it was Zima. It's such a foreign entity. I yeah, hell, it's been man. so long. It's been so yeah. long. Maybe, maybe a Connecticut would go great with it. I don't know. Yeah. But the fact that Knuckle Dragger went so well with it. Yeah. Uh, the citrus activated the coffee notes. Uh, this thing. Uh, and I think that's something to keep in mind with all your citrus flavored drinks. You know, if you're mixing drinks or whatever, if you go with the tropical stuff, you're down on some freaking gorgeous beach or whatever. True. Definitely get you a, a nice full bodied cigar. Uh, I had the uh, Intemperance followed it. Uh, that held its own against the Zima. You could definitely distinguish the flavors there. Uh, I switched to a Cane F550. Are you in your third cigar? Third. God damn, this guy smokes fast. <laughs> and I, I love the Cane uh, F550. I've always said that pound for pound, it's one of the stronger cigars that you can get at that price point. Uh, and it's still, you can definitely distinguish the flavors of it from the Zima. So you really need a full flavored cigar. You don't necessarily need a full bodied. But full, it sounds to me strong. like it sounds to me like the Zima for you didn't interfere with any of your cigars. Well, that's because I knew well, coming into it, I remembered what Zima tasted like. I wasn't going to bring some lightweight stuff up in here. 
Yeah, Connecticut was the wrong way to go. Um, agreed. Zima needs a dark. Uh, it does a dark black horse to uh, just, dude. Enjoy the cigar. Enjoy the. Basically, the drink becomes the back end. The, the drink becomes kind That's of That's what a, you want, yeah. Yeah, the drink That's becomes kind of an afterthought, a kind of a, a nice kind of citrusy back end. You want to you want a drink that comes Was that what you got, doctor, cigar. with the Hoya? Yeah, it didn't... Uh, it, it, it seems like it might be a decent cigar, but it was just kind of nothing. Well, the Zima and Rum is a potent... Yeah, uh, that'll, that'll do it, too. Yeah, There's a lot of strong flavors coming off of that. Okay. Well, uh, after one more close encounter with the Buffalo Chicks. They uh, dropped one because ratio wasn't working. Correct. <laughs> uh, the guys are on the road. The, the guys jump, jump in the blue torpedo and they're on the road. When a guy driving passing them on a convert- in a convertible uh, flags them down. Excuse me, fellas. Can you tell me where the Frankie Avalon house is? Guess who it is? Frankie Avalon. Frankie himself. You kind of had to know he was going to show up, right? Otherwise, what is all this Frankie Avalon shit? But it, more to the question being, how does Frankie Avalon know, know where his own house is? Well, hey. Former house, yeah. He looks at uh, Hubs and Joe. I hear there's a shitload of fine chicks there. You mean two? I think, well, I think that was their saving. They're like, we're going to get Frankie Avalon to cuss. That'll yeah. be that'll be hilarious when he says shitload. I guess. I liked it. You know he was I did old, dirty right? motherfucker, that bastard. He's seen a net from cello's boobies, and she had some racks back in the day. And he, he's cruising around. Uh, he's cruising around this this L.A. neighborhood at night in a convertible with shades on. Because he is fucking awesome. I thought about starting the show tonight with shades on to see what you guys thought. I would have missed it. Cade fag. You wouldn't even picked up on it? No, Wait, by this time inside. I'm like, Cade fag. By this time, I'm wanting nice. the movie to be over. <laughs> Dude, he would have punched my ass. Nice shades, Cade queer. They go, again, they again, these are all... Like, like tax vest. These, these are, are words These are all the slurs that they use in the movie. We would never use those against each other. Well, uh, Joe gladly tells him where the Frankie Avalon house is. Hey, two blocks back that way. Two blocks that way. And uh, hu- uh, Hubs gives him the, the old uh, tongue through the devil horns. Whatever that means. Kingpin style. Exactly. Kingpin did that? Yeah, the girl. Or she actually did this. The old lady from Kingpin? Well, no. She didn't do the devil horns. Yeah, she did, she did the, the two finger, which is the eat and the snatch. Wait, the old Asian lady? No, 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 Old, his landlord? Oh, oh, I was thinking Marvel. What is it about? I, I was thinking Marvel Kingpin. No, what is it about? Good I thought it was that Japanese that, crime lord lady no. was doing that. Like, oh god, what is it about? Good mama sex Fu? that? Yeah, yeah Mama Fu. Friend. Like, how did I miss that? He really jarred something loose, Tiger. Uh, <laughs> mama Fu doing that was. Uh, I'm actually kind of disoriented now. I, that would have been good TV. Yes, yes, it would. Oh, you're the Iron Fist, huh? <laughs> she does that to me. All of a sudden, Iron Fist takes on a whole new meaning. I can't. I can't. It's do like, this. yes, I am. I can't <laughs> focus my chi. <sighs> well, Joe's beating himself up for not getting Jill's phone number. Uh, he tells Hubs he really liked her, which of course totally pisses Hubs off. You stop thinking like a pussy, man. You didn't even nail her. They're that, from up north. That's the whole point. You never just see her again. Exactly. But that prompts Joe to make contact with his fist to Hub's face. <laughs> Punches his ass out. Yeah. And he's not done there. He grabs Hub's in a chokehold in the blue torpedo as it swerves all over the road. So now it has to be about 4 o'clock in the morning. And he won't let go until Hub's admits that Jill's cool. Okay, okay, man. She's cool. She's cool. It seems the tables have turned in this friendship, my friend. And you see the friendship. It it embraces you. It holds you. I think we saw it at, at least five or six different times. I don't know what Tut's missing here. Tut hates it. He hates everything. I definitely hate this movie. Ah. 
bullshit. Look, you don't hate this movie. You've been having fun all night. I've had, I've been having fun listening to you guys tell the story. I'd rather listen to you guys tell the story than watch this piece of crap. I think here is the underlying factors. A. Taught, washed with his wife. No, B, she. B, yes. He walked yes. sober. Oh wait, she yes. bailed. She bailed. She she was like, "Fuck Dude, this." When did she bail? An hour and an, 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 an hour an hour in, she bailed. Right before the uh, uh, Blue Oyster concert. Uh, that's pretty far. That's into like it. an hour into yeah. it, dude. Yeah. That's, that's well. Past so yeah. as a parallel, the doctor has no wife and is never sober. <laughs> well, I don't watch movies that way. I am sober-ish during the day, light hours. I'm with you. <laughs> You fucked up watching it with your wife and watching it sober. I could have watched this drunk and it would have still been a crap. All movie. right. I think you're wrong. But uh, Hubs finally <laughs> admits that Jill's cool. That's my, that's my tack hit. I'm hitting you like tack. <laughs> Fuck you, worm. Fuck you, worm. To finally, so he releases uh, Hubs from the headlock when he admits Jill's cool. Then, to solidify his new status in the friendship, alpha male. he pops Don't Fear the Reaper into the 8-track. And when Hubs gives him a dirty look, you know I don't like you playing this. Dude, Joe stares him down and Hubs backs down. He's like, you know what? I'm just going to close my eyes and ride out the night. Because he's drunk as shit and he fucking laid Delaney. You know so. Suddenly, the exactly. f- well, that's true too. He, he, you know, I'm really not going to fight you over this anymore. Exactly. He really shot some amazing eight loads. hours. Had, eight I hours had, ago, I was going to fight you over the BOC. Now I really don't give a fuck. I, I, I've, had, I've had a pretty good night. Yeah, I'll I, give you this. I'm spent. <laughs> Player got it. It was an atypical night. They actually did not end up where they were going to do. They had a sweet ride. Yes. And they didn't end up with the Buffalo Chicks. Which they could have. Which they could have. Well, suddenly, the giant floating BOC... I'm not, I'm not saying that you know that couldn't have been a wild ride itself. Suddenly, the giant floating mm, blue oyster cold stuff. eyeball appears in the rearview mirror, letting Joe know that it's been watching him the entire time, and then it vanishes, poof, as a sign that he's on the right path to becoming a man. His own man. Is that what you guys read it as? Sure. I'm just saying, I wake up the next morning, I now know what a submarine is. No one else does. But I do. You still don't know what a submarine is. I want to know. Does anyone, please tell me. Sorry, boys. You don't party with the Buffalo Girls at Bob's Big Night Hot Dog Stand. Well, the blue torpedo drives off into the night. And as soon as we fade to black, a disclaimer pops up on the screen informing us that... No chicks were harmed in the making of this motion picture. I like that touch. The end. But not quite the end. If you stick around till the very end. Before Marvel was doing it. There's a quick scene after the credits are over. Hubs and Joe are walking out of a convenience store when two guys hit him up to buy some authentic BOC Blue Oyster Cult concert shirts for $5. Godzilla shirts, no less. $5. Godzilla shirts. That's when a concert shirt would cost you five dollars. What is it now? Forty. Forty, 40 at least. Fifty dollars. Depends on who you're seeing. Jesus Christ. What? The forty dollars at least. Forty dollars at least. Go to a Period. Rolling Stones concert. They want two hundred bucks and a pint of blood. Yeah. So they can transfuse it's it amazing. into Keith Richards. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> well, hubs, it costs you seven dollars to make, sixty dollars at the stand. Because it's well, BOC, the- BOC, hubs is obviously disinterested, but Joe's tempted. Before determining that the shirts are fakes and these crooks are ripping off the band. When in fact the scalpers are played by actual Blue Oyster cult members. Band. Eric Bloom and Donald Buck Dharma Roaster. I thought that was a good touch. I don't know if they were promised a cameo in the film in exchange for them licensing so much of Blue Oyster Cult for this, but I kind of liked it. I'd never seen it before. They're a late 70s, the, dude, the very end, early 80s band. Yeah, dude. this is way before Marvel popularized well, dude, it. Well, dude, I've watched... I don't... I, I gotta dig out my VHS tape because I don't know if this was always there on the end or if it was a DVD thing or what, but oh, okay. I had never seen this ending. Oh, okay. I had seen it before. More than likely, I was so drunk... Drunk by the end of it? I had never watched the end of the credits, but... Uh, it's on the VHS because I, I had a dubbed copy. Do you remember the scene? Yes. Okay. But it was kind of a cool thing. They brought the BOC guys I thought guys it was in. cool. I thought it was real cool. And that is the end. Thank God. Once again, 
I can't believe he hates this movie. It was a horrible movie, he hates man. Everything. A horrible movie? What? Seriously? What are you talking about? Hey, punch him in the face. You know what? I'm not gonna do that. But it's what Hubs tells Joe to you punch, punch him, him in, the, in face. the face, or I punch you in the gut, <laughs> jock fag. <laughs> man, Cody gets violent on the Zima. And you know what? I'm, I'm okay with that. I, I, you know what? I'm gonna suggest something worse than that. You need another Zima. I need another Zima. I'm starting to think that it took me a while. I was wondering if it was you or Cade. He's been thinking. Because you guys had this battle. But you know what? Tut, I like you a lot. You know, Tut, I love you, brother. But you know what? I think you might be the hipster. Tut is the hipster. You look like you want to punch me right there. Tut, punch him in the face. Who son you are? <laughs> I'm not. Take I'm not. this, dog fag. Look, the dog has had a lot of Zima 45 tonight. I'm not. I'm not going to totally disagree with you there. I do have some hipster qualities. Y- you do. I just think that this movie was marginally act- acted. The screenwriting was base. It just. Oh. It, it, no way, it wasn't. Man. No way. I'm sorry. No way, man. I'm sorry. Everybody no was. Everybody was saying, "Oh, if you love Days and Confused, this is. This is. This will make I, it. I, I this will make you forget." Who's Days everybody? And us? Yes. You, you're the only ones I know who've seen this. Okay. You know what? I take it back. You are not a hipster if you base things on what we say. <laughs> you're fine. Dude. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I just, uh, it just to me, it pales in comparison. To, to me, I never made a comparison between this and Dazed. Well, you had to kind of because they were kind of the same. Uh, yeah, it was like a, a less than a year the, between yeah, the release. Totally, the very, very, very different tone. Very, to me, sim- very similar timelines when they came out. Yeah. Uh, to me, this movie spoke more to me than Dazed. It did. We were fucking sad drunks in the early 90s. <laughs> the relation- we were the guzzlers. <laughs> I couldn't really relate to the angry Affleck guy spanking people. I didn't know that guy. No. We I, didn't didn't, that. I, I didn't know a lot of the, the Days characters, but I knew everybody in this movie. I knew Tack. I had a Tack in high school. I had a... Uh, that fat- was not me. I was not Tack. You were not Tack. But I knew, but but dude, when I watch this movie, I could always like pin guys from high school in this way more than Days of Confusion. Was I Mike Dick or was I and Mike I can, New York? And I can and I can <laughs> understand. I can understand Asian that. Guy? Yes. Right. And hey. I can I can understand that. I can understand the nostalgia hey man, factor for alcohol. it. I can understand the relatability if you ran in those types of crowds. I did. I was more of the cards with tards guy. I was just. I was more of the heady nerd. And it just didn't relate to me. I have to say that while there is a scene at the end when the cars are driving down the street that you can see a blockbuster video, which wouldn't have been around in 1978. <laughs> I have to, oh, there was so many inaccuracies. There, it, to me, it... it, it, it uh, I know they wanted to make it in the late seventies. I saw it that way, and well, but at the same time, I mean, you're talking about a very limited budget, so I really tried to granted. not hold the budget against it because I mean, yeah, you can only do so much with what you have. Uh, and I thought that they did an okay job. I just was this a great movie? No, I don't think it was. But I could see where people might like it, to where people could identify with it. If you ran in that kind of crowd, I, I, just, I thought that when Cade and I first saw this thing, judgmental. Back in the mid nineties, I would have beat the fuck out of. Taint, I thought that tad, we, taint, we uh, was. even though Cade and I did not have a Hubs Joe relationship, where we were competing for chicks. I think we liked the the party at all costs atmosphere or attitude that these two guys had. And like you said, watching it again now, I may not have seen it. In, I may not have seen it since the late nineties. It still made me laugh. Yeah, but but Mincy, there was a there was definitely a dynamic that to our relationship, our friendship that was similar to this, to where it was it was. We would have been cruising around, uh, looking for something to do, hoping to get our hands on some booze, and there were some nights when I called you at home. And you're like, "What the fuck are you calling me for at, at midnight?" And I was like, "I need you to come do something." And you're like, 
But I'd be there. I drove to the theater, and we do that. No, you did. But the uh, for me, the Hubs and Joe friendship was complicated, and it worked. Correct. Absolutely. Okay. Are you sure you're hydrated enough right now? <laughs> it's very warm. <laughs> it is very warm. You need at least ten more Zimas. We have those. We literally <laughs> we, we have them. Yeah. You please drink them. Well, folks, we will be drinking Zimas till the sun comes up. But I think at least until Sonic reopens, I I think it's safe to say we've done this movie justice. Probably more justice than has been done in twenty years, Uh, ever. Which is all I ever asked to do. If we're gonna do a movie, I want to rip into it. I want to explore it. I want to talk about it more than any. I want to sculpt something massive. I I want to sculpt something massive. But no, I want I want to talk about a movie like nobody's ever talked about before, and I think we've done that. I will say that I had definitely more fun listening to you guys recount the movie than I did watching it. Uh, well, which that's is okay. One of, which is one of the things that I love. It's about not our, our podcast. fault you had some tut fag experience in high school. That wasn't a line in the movie. Now you just Doctor hit hit him. Never learn what you taught. <laughs> Knock your puka shell necklace off like tax vest, bam! But you know what? Honestly, it is kind of interesting. It is kind of interesting when when Tut looks at us like we're crazy for what we did in high school, and he lived in this bizarro world that did weird other things, like and not mix Zima and rum. <laughs> oh, we mixed it. <laughs> he has not had any rum in his Zima tonight. No, I knew what I was getting into. Punch him. Never learn what you touch. God damn it. <laughs> punch him. You just punch him. I'm not hitting anyone. Have you reached that point of the night? Are you going gold monkey on everybody yes, he right is. now? Yes, No. Is. No, I'm not going gold monkey on that. We're saving that for the golden sour monkey episode. Yes. Oh, sour monkey. Hey, Tut. Something says, to look forward to. When he says there's a golden so shower episode, something don't show up. To. Drop the microphones. <laughs> <laughs> Meet me. Meet I'll, me at O'Brien's. Just make, drop the equipment. Meet me at O'Brien's. I'll make out a diagram and we'll hang out on the balcony of O'Brien's. It'll be good. Uh, boys, this is fun. Uh, it was a movie that I hadn't seen uh, in a decade. But for me, it, it brought back a, a wash. Uh, just just a, a warm feeling of, God, I, I, I forgot this movie, but I love this movie. And honestly, it wasn't a, it, it it was it was a case of God. It's not my memory and my 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 prejudices. God, this is a great movie. Great, and I never even did sing the song that was being played when it ate Joe's tape in the car, the Yodel song. <laughs> yodel, 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 yodel. Dude, yodel. What, is what is that? What is that song? Dude, what is that song? You know what I'm talking about when, when Joe this tape. Yodel, 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 yodel. <laughs> Dude. There's a heavy metal song. Fucking ate my tape, man. When Joe puts his thing in the A track, it's like yo lo lo lo. It's like a, it's like a bizarre '80s yodeling song. When it eats it, it's like uh, it's got to be Ying Wing Malm Steam or something. Perhaps we've consumed too much Ox Forty Five. Well, if that is the case, Tut needs to give us some links. All right, hit us up on YouTube at Tuesday Night Cigar Club. <laughs> you can join us on Facebook at Tuesday Night Cigar Club as well. Definitely subscribe to YouTube. We like it. Uh, uh, you can also follow us on Instagram, TNCC underscore podcast for all your cigar porn. Uh, Kate just rocks that shit. Cigar porn? Cigar Dude, porn. I want to make, sexy, I wanna make sure. Sexy cigar porn. No, sure. Not virgin killer style. <laughs> it's like Jesus. <laughs> But it's some good, it's some good Cody, looking stuff. Cody, you're like the Virgin Killers album. Like that chick on the cover of that Macanudo Killers album. <laughs> and then it is up at... We don't uh, want that. We don't want that. It is on Twitter at, uh, at TNCCCast. And like I said, uh, if you're buying off of Amazon, man, please just, just hit our link on the website, then go do your shopping. 
Uh, we get a little about like four percent of what you do, and it helps us, you know, keep the lights on. We actually uh, we've been contacted by a chef who wants to do a cooking yeah, I saw that. Sh- a cooking show with us. She wants to bring us various salted meats and like pair them with cigars. We can do this. <laughs> If only I had had maybe nine less Zimas. Dude, you drink so much Zimas now. I'm so proud of you. It's so... It is a refreshing citrus beverage. (laughs) It is a beverage. It is a beverage. Kings of the universe. Dude, I'm looking at our table and it's just just an ungodly... Plethora. Of it is a shining prism of glass. It's <laughs> blinding on the side. It's like it's like uh, where uh, Clark Kent came from. It's like it's like uh, the Fortress of Solitude. The Fortress of, Wait, the Fortress of Solitude. Solitude. Our table is turned into Krypton. The, the Fortress of Solitude. No the the, 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 the what I call my living room. <laughs> <laughs> well, dude, they had they had those cubes in the Fortress of Solitude. I love it. You I like love us. I, I love Krypton. But you love and, us. And, oh. All right, get I us like out you. of here. Yep. But not, not Wrap it up. Fags <laughs> Wrap it up. Wrap it up. Dude, say it again. No. I said, I love no. you, but not these fags on the <laughs> other side. <laughs> ah. Fuck you, queer Mincy. <laughs> I helped you carry that fucking thing in here. I weighed like 300 goddamn pounds. Yeah, we, <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> we honestly <laughs> carry I, I know, three know, tons of Zima in here nine. Oh, it's on me now. All on you, brother. Lead us. Bonsai, motherfuckers. We'll see you next Tuesday. Or! Or! To learn more about the time I got zapped in the face by a laser beam at a Thompson Twins concert, only to regain consciousness several hours later to find I'd been somehow magically transported to a Pet Shop Boys concert. Please, read my ebook entitled My Drunk Adventures at the Pet Shop Boys Concert when the Thompson Twins opened for them, but I got so wasted that I thought it was two different shows held at two entirely different arenas, and it blew my fucking mind. By Keith A. Howell. Next, I think I might try to find the courage to write about that time I ate a really expired hot dog at a Loverboy concert back in 81. Summer night. And uh, in the meantime, to learn more about the cigars and libations enjoyed on tonight's episode, you can visit www.romacrafttobacco.com and www.zima.com. For more on O'Brien's Irish Pub, the live music leader in Central Texas, please visit O'Brien'sTemple.com and download their free smartphone app, where you'll find full beer listings including over 40 on tap, menu information, and a calendar of upcoming live events. To listen and purchase music heard on tonight's program, check out www.fritzbeermusic.com. Thank you for listening to the Tuesday Night Cigar Club Podcast. This is Keith A. Howell saying, until next time, friends, unless we see you sooner at the pub. So keep it smoky, and for God's sake, keep it ballsy as well. <laughs>